pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. How's everyone this evening? I hope everyone is awesome, feeling wonderful, and ready for tonight's broadcast. I have a special guest with me tonight, but before we get started, before I introduce him, I want to begin the evening with prayer. Heavenly Father, come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for our special guest tonight. Thank you very much that this brother elected to join us this evening, and we look forward to what he has to say. And Father, I ask and pray for your Holy Ghost anointing tonight, Father, on all of the members of the panel, and that, Lord, that only you be magnified in things that we discuss this evening. Father, we know that we are in dark times and we are in a difficult hour, but we know that your grace is sufficient for this hour. And Lord, as our faith is tested, as our faith is tried in the various things that we must endure during what I believe is the beginning of sorrows, we know that you are more than able, you're more than worthy, and that you will keep us in every way that is needed for this appointed time. We thank you for all of this, Lord Jesus, and we ask that if anyone be disturbed mentally, physically, in their body, we ask right now, Lord, that you bless them and keep them, heal them, minister to them, for you are the counselor. Lord Jesus, you are all things that we need. And Lord, we pray right now that you send your word and heal them, that you minister to them, that the Holy Spirit bring back to them every scripture, every promise, every guarantee, and every comfort, comfort that your word promises them, Lord. We thank you for that right now in the mighty name of King Jesus. Brother Cripps, do you have anything you would like to add to that prayer? Uh, no, ma'am. You covered it this time. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll bow out for this one. Okay, Brother Ben, do you have anything you would like to add to this prayer? Nope. Just you have my prayers to energize your prayer. It was awesome. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord Jesus. Sister Angel, is there anything you would like to add to that prayer? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a copycat. You 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 got it covered. You sounded very serious too. It was very uh, poignant. So. Okay, praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you. And also, I'd like to ask our guests, without introducing yourself, would you have anything you would like to add to the prayer? Just that we all have the um, <clears throat> unction to give the word of God, and that there are ears ready to receive. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you for that, brother. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special guest tonight, and I have to thank Sister Angel Martin for introducing me to this gentleman. Uh, the gentleman's name is Brother D. Dawes, and he is from the channel. Make sure I get this right. He is the lead field investigator for the BDRP Supernatural YouTube channel. And he is the Bigfoot Dogman Research Project is the name, the BDRP. 
And evidently, brother says he get he gets shadow banned by YouTube all the time, so he had to be creative with his channel name, so he could even come up in the algorithms. You know how they do. And I would like to uh, introduce this brother to you, but I I wanted to also uh, give a special shout out and thanks to Sister Angel because once I spoke to this brother just about a, about a week ago now. It was a week ago, Saturday. Uh, we spoke on the phone and <laughs> we talked for almost three hours. It was just such a blessing. It was it was like talking to a, a old friend that loved Jesus. And it was it was wonderful. I enjoyed it. Because brother, you gotta come on the broadcast. You gotta come on the broadcast. And uh I was just so blessed. Uh he is anointed, most assuredly appointed. I think brother Doss is gonna be um how would I say this? Moving on to some bigger and better things, better things than uh, maybe he even anticipated. Because when the Lord appoints you to something and anoints you for something, it's always bigger than what you even imagined. So uh, I'm excited to see what the Lord ends up developing in his life concerning his appointment and uh, his office when uh, when the Lord reveals that finally to me, he speaks it out uh, for himself because I'm not a prophet. I can't do that. <laughs> so. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you, Brother D. Doss. How are you doing this evening, brother? I'm doing great. Wow. I hope I live up to all that. Uh, <laughs> I still look at myself as just a simple old o Oki, you know, but um, it, it was a fantastic talk. Like I said, that Holy Ghost fire was uh, roaring that day, and two hours and 47 minutes went by like an hour. So it it, did. And once you start having that fellowship in the spirit, and that's one thing that I implore people I know uh, I don't know where everyone is or what the situation is as far as this COVID stuff, but don't we are the church. We are the temple. Um, fellowship doesn't stop just because we're not sitting in a building next to one another. And that's something that's essential, uh, I believe. Amen, brother. That's right. Absolutely. Um, you know, this is a interesting time that we have. I'm, I've never, I've never seen anything like it. And I've lived through the wars and rumors of wars with Russia. I remember the whole desk drills of getting under your desk because you were practicing in case there was a nuclear bomb. How getting under the desk was going to protect you, I don't know. But you know, uh, we we've seen it all. I mean. I lived with, I remember praying when I was a teenager, Lord, Jesus, please, before you come, just let me live a little bit of my life because <laughs> I, I grew up a, a, a Christian. So it just seemed right. like, you know, we were always focused on his imminent return. I really didn't even think if you'd have told me when I was a child that I was going to get to live this long to see all of this craziness, I was thought it was impossible. I mean, people were writing books like in 1988. I mentioned this a lot of times. I love it because I just love the title. 88 Reasons Jesus is Coming Back in 1988. And he had 88 good reasons, but look where we are. There were people who said it's impossible. We'll never, be, we'll never make it into year 2000. And look where we are. We saw Y2K come and go. There was a lot of hype about that. Whole lot of folk went out and bought all, all that storable food. Hopefully you're using it now. <laughs> it's been about 20 years. My, it's getting close to that 25 year date. You might have to start eating it. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, just, just a reminder in case you forgot when you bought it. If you bought it at Y2K, you're on your 20 year mark. So just all these different things, you know, we've seen in, in these last four to five decades that people said, oh, you'll never, you'll, Jesus can't stretch this out any, any further. And I'm telling you right now, even with all this craziness and ugly, we see, ugliness we see right now, if he wants to stretch it out another 50 years, he can do it. He's God. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, that's why I say, hey, take a deep breath, trust God, because you got to trust him before a crisis. You got to trust him during a crisis and you got to trust him after a crisis. Absolutely. So <laughs> don't read your Bible. Don't. Cause he says, you know, no man, no time, no the hour, not even myself. This is our Lord Jesus speaking. Only my That's father right. who is in heaven. He's the one that tells him to mount up that white horse. That's right. And you know, a lot of people point out that that's based on what they call the ancient Jewish wedding, that the son would go back to his father's house and prepare a place for his bride. And then when when he's ready, the father would actually say, you know what? I've looked over everything you've done in prep. Looks like you got it all together. Go get your bride. So uh, that that's where that uh, concept is supposed to have come from and why it's laid out in the Bible the way it is. Now, I've heard them and I'm sure you've, you've heard them too. the theologians, how they'll say that's why 
us who read our archaic book of fables, that's another reason why it's it's not real. But you, as the as the word says, the natural man cannot understand. We were talking about this a little bit. The natural man cannot understand that of the spiritual. Um, so Amen. did God give that to his people or did his people just make it up? Uh, th those are they are as people. So well, I was gonna say real quick, brother. I don't know what kind of scholars you listen to. I wouldn't entertain anybody like that. I'd no, like, hey, I wasn't. Like, you xed no. off the list. You that, xed off the list. I want to listen to somebody that has faith in his word and believes it is inspired. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? That's not a exactly. criticism. I mean, if I heard somebody say that, I'd be like, you got to be. I hope you was telling a joke when you said that because that I can't listen to people that don't. What are you a scholar for or? A preacher for if you don't believe the book i don't i still don't understand that you might as well go fishing might as well because uh they the, the book that they are teaching or, or supposedly teaching they're not really reading too deeply because there's consequences for that you cannot alter the word oh, of god yes. and give it to susceptible people people who want to be fed and it be okay <laughs> that lord's not going to abide by that and um when he comes and says, uh, he talks about the people that would come to him and say, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out devils in your name and do great works? And he said, turn from me, ye that work iniquity. I, I'm pretty sure he was talking to the religious folk. Um, mm -hmm. He was. And, that's and who, that's the worker of yes, iniquity. Ma yes, ma'am. Why is this name? I haven't introduced you yet. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I get, I get, I get so worried when people start bringing that verse up because I'm like, oh god, because you know it's so rare if somebody actually interprets it right. But you know, uh, right. praise God. And, <laughs> amen. Well, and that's in, in that a shame. That's what I'm saying. You know, we we as Christians, and I, I guess I'll I'll take part blame along with my brothers and sisters. We've not held our church leaders up to the standards of being what they are supposed to be. Mm. Uh, a, a lot of these people. Well, I don't want to. I don't know how much of a tangent I can go on here. Go on it. <laughs> oh well, okay. You're, you're, you're good. <laughs> I have an old Oki, and I'd like to thank Angel too, because uh, again, because uh, you both are a blessing to me. Uh, Angel left uh, great, uplifting comments on the channel, and even reading them, you could see who your brother and sisters are and who aren't. Yeah. But we have failed our church by not holding them up to the standards in which they should be held as the leaders of that flock they come mm -hmm. in and they not all but the, a lot of these churches come in and they want to push the preacher's message the preacher's vision instead of wait wait a minute you're, you're supposed to be feeding us you're supposed to be counseling uh, it, it makes no sense to me mm -hmm. and it's written right there in plain black and white i'm a, i'm what you call a bible literalist like you lisa let the bible speak for itself and abide by that we, right. we can't put our our own thoughts and impose what we believe from our modern day understanding onto the word of God and have a full understanding of it in my opinion. That's right. That's right. That's what in that verse in Matthew, you know, when I, I, as, I don't even think I was really saved yet. This was like, in like really like leading up to it. Um, um, but that verse, cause you know, I was kind of into the Christian truth channel. So, so, you know, into the, all the truth channels and it just kept seeming like the ones with a Christian uh, perspective seemed to be the least full of crap. And I kept noticing that pattern, but um, um, a lot of times they would cite that verse. And I, I mean, it, it hit me in the face right away that these people were, were, you know, claiming that they, they basically, they were worthy of heaven because of their many wonderful works, many wonderful works. And I, you know, the Bible is a discerner of hearts. So when people can see that verse, and they think that the problem was they didn't have wonderful enough works. And not that they Amen. were proclaiming their wonderful works before Jesus. Uh, mm. That's That tells you everything you need that's to bold. know about that person. Yes. Yep. Hold on, guys. Before we get any further down this road, I wanted to take a moment and introduce Brother Doss to the rest of the panel. You know who I am. You know who Sister Angel is. But you haven't met the other two members of my panel. Well, you met the producer when he was putting out the fire earlier. But sure. I also want to give you a formal introduction, which is uh, <clears throat> this is Brother Doss. Brother Ben is the producer. He was the one you were speaking to, helping you work out the little glitch we had. And then also we have a gentleman with a very silver, smooth voice. I hope you all not going to get into competition with each other tonight. No, no. Well. And that is Brother Cripps. Now, he does our movie corner where he takes a secular film 
and extrapolate some things that we can see if we look at it with spiritual eyes that may have some significance to us that we can do a takeaway. Uh, and, and Brother Cripps, I'd like to introduce you to Brother DDoS tonight. And I don't know if you could tell us, are, are you familiar with uh, his channel and have you seen any of his material? Or uh, not personally, though, but Angel's talked a lot about him and I haven't uh, I haven't taken the time to, to do that yet. But I've been looking forward to kind of coming into this broadcast with kind of open eyes and and ears and uh and that's where i'm at that's where my heart is at um i i have shared that uh i have listened to uh, another uh broadcast uh sasquatch chronicles and uh jen and i both listen to that uh, quite frequently uh so i i've got an open mind about that as well the possibility of uh these things actually existing and things so i'm excited about the broadcast and it's very nice to meet you i've heard a lot of good things about you and it's it. it's an absolute pleasure. It's good to meet you too. Uh, it sounds like we're cut from the same cloth as far as pointing out the esoteric Gnosticism and uh, occult language that's very very subtle, but it's still there. And a lot of the a lot, if not all of the movies coming out of Hollywood. Oh sure, sure. And you win already because your voice is a lot smoother. And <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Praise God. And also, Brother Ben, if you would like to uh, say hello to Brother Doss without the the added stress of trying to put out a fire here. Yes, it's it's, it's an honor to have you here. Um, to be listen, here. Yeah, uh, Angel uh, kind of turned me on to the whole uh, cryptid thing um, and the uh, Bigfoot thing. As I started to listen to that recent, somewhat recently, and uh, I couldn't stand the other channels, frankly, because of their worldview. It was it just you know yes. how it is. Yeah, um, and exactly. yours, is the, <laughs> yours the only one that stood the test. Um, and well, I, also, I appreciate that, I sincerely do, because there is vast deception from both sides of uh, right. the fence. Our, our physical adversary and our spiritual adversary runs rampant in the field that I'm in, right? And your thing that uh, you said a second ago, just uh, you're a man after my own heart, is that you said that you know, too, too, uh, too many preachers are su very so superficial with their interpretation of scripture. And I think, you know, we as Christians don't dig in and try to pierce deeply enough into exactly what God's saying. Like just for example, the verse you mentioned about Matthew 7, 23, 24, it's, it's, it's as much what Christ, what, what these people didn't say to Christ is what they did say that tells you everything you need to know. So for example, you know, yes, these works they did, the works they did, they did are so over the top. Awesome. I mean, who, who's going to deny that casting out a demon and doing all these great works. Christ's idea is basically trying to say, even the best works of the world are not going to save you. So that, that right there is a hint. Number two is that he says he never knew them. So it's not like, oh, their works were good enough at one point, but then they, they were inequal or in it, you know, they were, they, they were waiting the balance and no, your works were, are your bad works are greater or yeah, your bad works are greater than your good works. They were found never, Absolutely. Yeah. He says he never knew them. So it wasn't like he knew that one point. And then number two, they didn't do the will of the father. The will of the father is clearly in John six forty, where it says my father, my father's will is that everyone who looks to the son believes in him shall have eternal life. And then finally, notice what they didn't say. They didn't say, Lord, you died for all my sins and I rested in your finished work as you commanded as the only work you required in John 6, 27. Instead, these professing, uh, professing Christians like appeal to their works as also being a requirement. And the fact that they practice lawlessness, like you said, it, 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 they're, the, they're workers of iniquity. They tried to be justified by their works. So I loved uh, what you said. And that's kind of what I love to do is really kind of figure out and find, you know, the deeper meanings of scripture and really peel. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Get, get past the superficial meaning because you see the sur su superficial meaning is the exact opposite of what it's, the author intended. Hey man, brother, it's quick and alive. Like I was saying in yes. all our broadcast, the Bible is anything but boring. Like e yeah. even worldly people, if they would stop their cynicism and, and, and their pride, if they would set that to the side and let the book, read them because the bible will read you there's times i open up the bible i gotta put it down for a second and say man I, <laughs> you know god god god's telling me something that i don't want to hear but i know i gotta hear it so i'm gonna pick it back up right you know um, yep. it, it's but that's what it's supposed to do that's our guide through life uh and and, and it baffles me how people would throw a despair. I grew up in Christian school for, for your audience that don't know. I, I grew up in Christian school. My mama, God rest her, she passed away when I was 14. Grew up in a two-parent home. Um, she came from a dirt farm in Arkansas and ended up owning her own uh, business. She was a daycare uh, director. Um, 
And she died of pancreatic cancer when I was 14. Uh, dad was a paratrooper, had that same mindset well after she passed away. And uh, from 15 to 19, he was there three days out of 31. So I raised myself uh, from that age on. I worked with, uh, <laughs> well, I worked with illegals at a livestock auction because it was cash money and they wouldn't check my social security card. Drove, of course, and uh, all that good stuff. So, and, and I'll spin it back around this way. Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, then what are you talking about? G Jesus, mm -hmm. is he, he lays down a strict set of rules that aren't that hard to follow. And, and for us, especially us that have the spirit of God, and we love to, that's, that's my highlight of my life is, is conversations like this with my brothers and sisters. I, I, it baffles me how some man or woman could stand in front of a congregation and interweave their political views and, and their own personal mindset on top of the <laughs> the living word. It, it baffles me and it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. it, I, I, for people that do that. I can tell they don't believe the Bible because mm -hmm. they don't believe yes. the danger of, of what they're doing. Of doing that. Exactly. Yeah. They take it too right. lightly. Before before we go too much further, Sister Angel, if, if I could, I wanted yes. to back up a little bit, uh, a bit, and because uh, Brother Doss started giving a little history about himself, right. and what I'd like you to do, Brother Doss, is just kind of start at the beginning for us, because when Sister Angel first introduced uh, the idea of bringing you on the broadcast, uh, and she gave us a little history about you, and she said he's he's uh, the world's only black Bigfoot hunter. And I said, okay. I said that, that I know of. I said I that know, you know of. of. Right. That you know of. Yes, that's you were, right. You were close. That you, were you close. know of. <laughs> and, I, and, I, okay. and I had to stop her and ask her. Now, sister, what does that mean? Does that mean that he only hunts black Bigfoots? <laughs> or is he actually <laughs> a black Bigfoot <laughs> hunter? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm the, I'm, I'm the only black fella. Uh, well, I somehow am. Um, it's a twofold thing because I'm the only Bigfoot of any color that does a somewhat decent. People like it. I, I don't. I don't know why. But biblical I'm, I'm, approach. I'm, <laughs> I'm the only one that does a show and does active field investigations and, and locations with these monsters. And that's what they are. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, no matter how anybody wants to chalk it up, these things are monsters. I do believe they take people. But yes, ma'am, Miss Lisa, I'll start. Uh, how far do you want me to go back from? Well, uh, you, you started, you told us already about your your childhood and that your mom had passed away. My, my okay. condolences. That must have been very, very hard on you as a young man for your mom to pass away. Uh, so and young. Sorry in, to hear about your, your father, too, Yes, and your father. Yeah, that yeah, uh, dad passed away last year. I appreciate that, Angel. But uh, yeah, I'll go that. on from there because this is stuff I've not really talked about outside my family, and this is my family. So, um, yeah. after yeah. that, I uh, I started having these very vivid dreams, and I'd wake up in different places in my house. I'd wake up upstairs in in the guest bedroom. Or in my parents' room, since you know my mom had passed away at this point, and dad was gone with his uh, lady friend or whatever. But um, the last time I had it, I, I was I was standing on my feet. I guess I was sleepwalking a lot, and I woke up in front of this oil painting of uh, the Lord that my mom had bought in our living room. And um, flash forward past that, I started having the sleep paralysis. I didn't understand what that was until uh, the Lord lit that fire within me. So I go to college. I, I wanted to get far away from Oklahoma because uh, my father and I didn't have a very good relationship. And uh, my mother passed away and, and she was a, a building block for for the community here. Black and white. She she, she was uh, the pillar that I saw what a faithful person could be. Uh, she was very well blessed and she had a sincere love for people. Um so I moved to Philadelphia, got a bachelor's degree in investigative journalism, moved back home and used that to work in warehouses because they pay you more to do uh, hard manual labor than they would, you know, doing an article in some paper somewhere. So uh, get married, have a child and all that. 
divorce, uh, get full custody of my daughter, and I moved down to Texas, North Texas. And this is where the Bigfoot stuff starts. I'm 28. I found myself very not lost, but but how yeah, you call it lost? I, I didn't really have a direction. Uh, I, I didn't. I knew I didn't want to just work and pay bills, so uh, I went back to school. I figured I'd give this career thing another chance. On top of a bachelor's degree in investigative journalism, if I got something in criminal justice, perhaps, you know, I could do criminal investigation somewhere in Texas. So I uh, started NCTC, North Central Texas College, and uh, did phenomenally well there. So flash forward to a Halloween contest my second semester. Uh, and I I don't celebrate Halloween. Don't get, don't get frightened. They were offering five hundred dollars cash prize to the winner of a scary um, uh, movie contest or something. And I figured I'd just go to these woods in Oklahoma. They look creepy and film some stuff and use my deep voice to say some creepy stuff and get five hundred bucks. Uh, so <laughs> I take a borrowed camera. I go down to these woods. <clears throat> of course, the, it's it's an old Native American um well, I just found out new information on that, but it, it was Native American land that was donated to the state. It's now nature reserve. So I'm going through there getting B-roll footage and I hear uh, footsteps, heavy footsteps. I'm six foot tall. Then I was 200 pounds. Uh, I'm a pretty big guy, but whatever this was, was bigger than me. And um, I figured I'm down here in the woods. Only a couple of people know where I'm at and I don't want some, you know, some Joe Blow knocking me over the head for the 18 bucks I got in my wallet. So uh, I start back down this trail. I had bramble bushes on uh, one side of me. And the other side is this washout. It's what you call a floodplain. When the river rises, it'll uh, even out so it won't go up to people's houses and stuff like that. So I'm in this floodplain walking back towards my vehicle, and it's following me. And the strides it was taking were colossal compared to my footsteps. And I stopped, and I don't know why to this day I did it, but I started whistling. Um, it's something I I don't know if it was out of nervousness or what, mm -hmm. but this thing whistled back and, and blew its lips at the same time, which is impossible. Like a little kid does with food in his mouth. Uh, yeah. But it was whistling on top of that. And this overwhelming sense of fear came over me it wasn't afraid so, like i was afraid of what was going to happen it was uh a carnal fear I, I don't know how if i got any uh either one of y'all are country boys in here but I, I used to fish a lot i used to want to be a professional fisherman honestly and uh, so i'd go on to these pieces of property that were abandoned or um not being used and uh you know just ramble around looking for stock ponds and stuff like that. And I got stocked by a cougar one time, mountain lion. Uh, th that's the only thing I can equate it to, the feeling. Um, that whatever it was, was bigger than me and badder than me. And you might have been dinner? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, <laughs> I, I somehow left those woods and got back in my vehicle and went home. But uh I ended up coming back the next weekend. I wanted to know what it was. And then I took my um, my girlfriend at the time, her three sons and my daughter. And that's when I had a visual sighting. It was. It was summertime, I forget what month, but we were pushing through. And again, all these kids are with me, so I don't want to go too far. But. We get in there and we hit a wall of mosquitoes. Like there, there's flies, mosquitoes all over the place. It smells like a barn. Mm -hmm. It smells like animals. And at this point, you know, we we're approaching what they call a nest. You know, I'm taking pictures everywhere. And the picture I took of the nest when I get it back had a an infant monkey looking thing in front of it that we didn't mm -hmm. see at the time, I guess, because we had walked into this pocket of where they were, or I, I don't, I don't understand why we didn't see it. Uh, maybe we weren't, we weren't paying attention, but, but we walk into this wall of mosquitoes. I get that feeling again. I say, you know what? This is stupid. I shouldn't have brought y'all here. Let's go. But I'm completely fascinated by this nest. Mind you, I didn't see this infant thing at the time. Mm -hmm. So I started approaching it. 
And my attention's drawn to my right, to the, the top of the bank of what would be the floodplain that's dry now. It's almost like a miniature valley. Mm -hmm. And on the other side are these bushes. This thing, this animal or beast mm -hmm. comes up over that and it comes underneath the bushes that are on this bank. And it starts popping, popping the, the roots out. It was, it was strange. It didn't go over the bushes, mind you. I'm saying it went underneath them somehow. And it was about five feet away from me when it came uh, out from underneath them. And it was on all fours. It had its elbows turned outwards. And it looked at me and it had big cartoonish looking teeth. And it looked like a strange humanoid monkey. And as fast as that happened, it pushed itself backwards the same way underneath that bush back over that hill. And the, the, my family has gone already gone down the trail to go back to the vehicle. So I'm standing there by myself. And I, and I don't even remember looking at them to see if they look back or anything. Mm -hmm. So I turned around in shock and start walking back towards where they were. And this shining glass, like black glass is what I, the thing that came to my mind was on the other side of that uh, ridge as well, where this thing had come from. Mm. But it looked, it looked like it was inside of a bush. So it, it looks like a portal. No, it wasn't a portal. It, it, it was uh, it was the eyes of a, of one of the of, of a female of one of their kind. Oh, okay, beasts. okay. Well, my eyes focused in on it, and she didn't have any hair on the face. What, what they show you in TV and, and movies and stuff is some sort of deflection. These things aren't us. They're not. Some, they weren't born in the image of God. Uh, I believe they're a beast of some sort. But she had like kind of slanted eyes. I hate to say that, but that's what it, they, she had like these thin uh, eyes, you know, but they were massive. I mean, as big as my fist. That's what drew my attention to mm. it. it. It was something shiny mm -hmm. in, in this bush. But uh, the bush wasn't a bush. Of course, it was her hair. No hair on the face. She had a very thin, petite nose and a kind of a thicker upper lip. Uh, mm. And I actually going through footage, I, I found a. Uh, found her in a bush when I was going through there by myself later on. So I go home and I, and for about a week or two, I was trying to uh, find somebody to commit me to the insane asylum mm -hmm. because <laughs> I, I, I saw all this. And of course they didn't cause I sent them on. Um, now, are you, are you serious? Did you really feel like you were having a breakdown? Or I felt like I was losing. I, I, I studied, um, I forget what it's called. It's what Howard Hughes had. Uh, mm -hmm. Not OCD, even though people say I have that too. But it's called it, a nervous breakdown. It, it, it's a nervous breakdown, or your mind starts to deteriorate at a certain age. It's some sort of uh, psychopathy. But uh, yeah, I honestly thought that's what was taking place with me, even though they both are both. They all felt that same fear. Um, they felt like something was watching them. They didn't see anything that time. Mm -hmm. So until I went back and had another encounter. I, yeah, I was definitely thinking, you know, uh, the rocket had launched from the pad. <laughs> you know, I really thought I was going nuts. Well, let so, me ask you a question here. Yes, ma'am. You you say that it shook you so bad you thought maybe you were having some type of nervous breakdown. And so then you said after this, uh, when I went back. Now, well, I want to know, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Brother, what would make you want to go back? Was it just the fact that you just had to be certain that it wasn't all in your head or that you, did it? Did you feel some kind of either pull or tie to it that you just was almost like driven to go back? Well, that, that's where the picture comes in. All right. That same nest that I said this infant was in front of. I finally looked at the pictures and um, everybody saw it. Like, every, I, but I, in, in that, I still thought I was going crazy. Be, because nobody else saw that thing come under that bush and down that little slope. Uh, nobody else saw the big black bush that was really uh, uh, a female with the head of a, a coffee table, the size of a coffee table. So I guess that is kind of crazy of me. But that and I was uh, I was in a little bit of pride. Like I was a, a big dude. You know, I wrestled for uh, in high school, a big tough guy. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I wasn't going to allow anything like that to scare me. And uh, honestly, before that, I had what they call poltergeist activity. I just mm -hmm. went through that, and that's when the Lord lit the fire within me. And I'll get into that a little bit later if you want, because uh, that's more important than this stuff, believe me. 
But I well, go back, no. and that's when I get like an actual really uh-huh. good photo of one of these things uh, after seeing it. But and then and, and from there, uh, I was found people online because all I knew of Bigfoot is what my mama told me. She came from Ponds Bluff, okay. Arkansas, and you know they they called them something else. They called them catamounts. And our my grandma or her grandmother actually had a farm, hundred acre farm out there, functional farm. We go there every summer because we we're sort of spoiled kids because mama owned businesses and stuff. So she wanted us to know like what real work was and where it came from. I'm the youngest of five kids, about 15 years. And I loved it. You know, I'd walk around the farm like I usually do whistling. And uh, granny came out and told me, don't 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 be out here whistling, boy. Them catamounts snatch you up and take you out in, 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 the, in those woods. I figured it was a mountain lion. Looking mm. back and kind of talking to some family, it, it was one of these things. Wow. Okay. So so now you you saw this thing, you end up capturing it in a photograph, which is what also caused you to go back for what, like the third time at that point? Right. To go see. Okay. And I, then I, mean, I was completely enthralled, sister. I, I'm not okay. Gonna, so there was like an adrenaline rush to go out there and a little bit of danger, a little bit of I've, I'm doing something other people aren't doing and seeing things other people aren't seeing. So there was kind of a rush in that as well. Not not really. I've never been a thrill seeker like that. My whole thing was um, I hate bullies. I don't hate anyone, but I I, I have a strong dislike for bullies. Mm -hmm. And the biggest bully is uh, an intellectual bully, I always say. Somebody who has information, and because they have that information, they're going to um, talk down to people. You know what I mean? Like the scribes. Oh, yeah. No, I get it. Right. So... My mind was, you know, they th- this Bigfoot stuff, there's cartoons, but this stuff's real. And mm-hmm. it's literally 15 minutes away from my home. Oh, okay. So, yeah, and, okay. and I go online, I start talking to other people, and I see how the spirit part of it, the spiritual part of it, is completely off the wall. These people are worshiping this this beast. Oh, wow. Okay, so now... Get into the spirit. That's what I was going to ask you. When did you perceive that this being was more than just a, some type of, of physical thing that was just out there prowling around? When did that come uh, you know, to your mind to say, hey, this is more than just some creature that I can't really identify or don't know what to call? This might even be spiritual or supernatural. Honestly, from day one. Um given the poltergeist experience that was going on and it was demon demonic activity it's called what it is they call the poltergeist a belligerent ghost like there's a good ghost they're all demons i mean there's the holy spirit and the holy or the holy ghost and that's that we remember saul went to go uh to the witch vendor call up uh, Sam, uh, uh samuel and you see how that worked out for him but uh so i i innately knew that there was more to it and i figured the spiritual aspect of it just because of the land that it was on the native america if, if you notice like all this native american land with these native american cemeteries and burial mounds have a plethora of ufo activity ghosts um you name it it's in there now the actual creature itself i think it is some sort of a beast it's a physical bit the stuff that i've encountered have been physical animals of some sort uh, or, or not animals because they're not animals per se i guess they, they look like some form of us um this is the only way i can put it their facial feet some do look like monkeys like the one that ran up on me it looked like a distorted warped monkey but the rest of them um yeah i, I i'd be hard pressed to say that that was the case for them okay so now when you saw this being and then you saw what you thought might be his girlfriend or something, right? Well, actually, I think I think after five years of uh, after the first three years, I figured that was the the uh, what you would call the alpha female. Oh, so like the leader? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you think that these things actually follow a feminine energy or spirit or whatever it is that? I, uh, I think it's like the natives. I think that uh, hmm. in most native tribes especially along the east and the southeast the um the female role was more important than the male role uh they had chiefs 
but mm -hmm. the and I forget the name for them, but the wife of the chief was basically the the the, uh, the organizer. She she would make sure that the whole tribe was running and functioning properly. The chief was a okay. policeman, uh, if, for, for okay. better or worse, um, and that's the way I equated it to these creatures because. Uh, and I looked at it like a missing person investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried to dip into the tools that I had uh, to document how many creatures there were in this particular area and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, th that's the conclusion I came up with. Uh, I really believe that th there was some sort of a fascination with me because uh, later on in doing this research, there were people p wanting to pay me. I'd never charge them. Just like I said, I, I, I will not take money for you to go out into creation. Uh, but mm -hmm. there were people wanting to pay me a thousand dollars just to take them to the woods to see these monsters mm. because they've spent years trying and they couldn't do it. Okay. And I, I, I honestly do believe that the people that go in there, they're hunters or poachers. They're, they, I, it has to do with the spirit of God within us. Um, that they're, they're attracted to? I think so. I, I, I mean, that's the only conclusion okay. I can come up with because there's other stuff out there too. And I've captured that on film. And that's why the natural progression of my channel and, and, and the show that I do and what I tell people, I've never gone to these Bigfoot conferences. Uh, I don't put a disparaging remark or anything like that on the people that do. Mm -hmm. But again, it's worship. They're taking the cast of these footprints and putting them on the wall. There's people who are just so... Yes involved in the, the angel probably told you about this they'll fight so you they'll fight you yes. if you have even dare imply that it, forget bigfoot that uh that the the dog man which for some people who don't know it, it, a werewolf it's it's a werewolf um that people are seeing increasingly in fact close to me uh with it like 10 minutes away from me uh, a guy that uh you know lives in my local area he you know his father had to shoot at one shoot one because um i don't know something how it's like he the, the son his he saw it in his yard as a child and he told his father and somehow uh, it, it was like the thing after he saw it, it must have been angry because it came and tore up the, all of their ducks. And then his father ended up going out the next day and shooting it. Um, so people are seeing this, this thing. And, and I think the more people talk about it, the more people see it. Cause I think that's how these entities work, but people will fight you and go crazy, especially if you're a content creator who covers this stuff. I mean, you know, I know, you know, Wolf, from um, Paranormal uh, Roundtable, who, you know, he's, uh, you know, I, I love Wolf. He, he talks, uh, he has some incredible stories, but he has to be careful. You know, I can hear him trying to, trying to, trying to, you know, straddle the line because some people won't even accept that the, the werewolf thing that people are seeing that is you'd always described as like pure menacing evil, that it's evil. Like they, like people, you know, mainly unbelievers, they like, they, they want to believe it's like, I, I don't know. What, I mean, what, like, like some type of angel, angelic being or something like, like they want to believe it's good even. Like well, they, 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 don't, they don't want to accept the fact that stuff like that is evil because they're yes. enthralled by it. And they would have yep. to face the facts of mm -hmm. what the Lord says to be involved in that kind of stuff. When I, after that poltergeist activity, I hit my knees, myself and uh, my ex-girlfriend at the time who owned, her dad owned two uh, funeral homes. We were unevenly yoked to say the least. And I've always been a Christian, but I put self-imposed blinders onto a lot of things, I believe. And uh, th there's been situations where I knew I had the spirit of God, but th that I, my mind goes back to I, uh, there's one that comes after me that will baptize you in the spirit of God and fire. That fire was lit that night because I prayed to the Lord because these things are manifesting around our home. Uh, these black shadow figures uh, in, just right there, right in front of us, mm -hmm. uh, mist dissipating or, or coming out of nowhere and then dissipating pictures rocking on the walls, crazy movie type stuff. Yep. I've seen the same. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when I prayed to the Lord, I told, and the way I did it again is I think the reason he, he heard me, I confessed the sins as the sinners that did them, the, the cheating, lying, drinking, this, mm -hmm. that. And I said, Lord, I don't know what this is, but show me how to protect my family and save me. And when those yeah. words left my mouth and the period was on the sentence, and I, I know most of you have seen this picture. This is the only thing I equated to. Jesus ripped something off. It's like he was ripping chains off of me. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> and I saw the world for the first time at 28 years old. Growing up in church, mama, a Sunday school teacher, uh, Christian school, 
that's when I knew exactly what those words meant. I was th 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 things were coming back to my mind from the Bible that I've read, and I was quoting them, and I thought it was from a movie. Um, he he really started moving through my life in a big way, and I, I, I threw threw the Xbox away, uh, movies. I've stripped myself and all that worldly garbage down to bare zero, bare none, and wanted what he wanted in my life. Uh, mm. I'm well blessed for that. It's been hard yeah. times, but that poltergeist activity really started making me look at all this like it was all just demons. And I remember going to my prayer closet and asking him, Lord, if this is demons, I don't need an explanation. Take this away from me. The, take right. my fire away, make me hate it. And he, he put me, I started go. I started doing it more. I had a desire to do it more, but I had a desire to talk to, about him more because these people, not all of them, but a lot of them are completely lost and deceived. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, all this stuff oh. out there, these spirits, the, these uh, Native American spirits that, that they would pray to and all that, they're manifesting themselves as these animals, as other things. And just like Egypt, he judged Egypt based on their gods. He didn't interfere until his people were in captivity. I believe it's going to come. I mean, well, we all know where we're at in the world right now as, as far as the return of our Lord and Savior, I believe. We're, we we don't know the time, but we, we'll know the season. And I believe that we're smack dab in the middle of that. Um, I think he's at the door. And that's the only thing that I can think looking back on it now after five years why he didn't, uh, especially you know, with my eyes just now being peeled wide open why he didn't take me out of it because there's been folks that came to the channel just from my profession of faith who who've come to know the Lord and they have that supernatural spiritual experience and that peace. And that's worth more than any, all these monsters. If one person said that it's worth more than all these monsters and all the fun you could have at some convention or, or, or town hall meeting, you know, um, and that's been the gradual shift uh, in, in, in my project and the YouTube channel, because mm. the thing about it is like Angel was saying, these, these people are deceived, but they, they get some sense of pride if they have knowledge about these creatures that no one else has. It goes back yeah. to that. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Half of them up. haven't seen one ever, you know, right. they just like look, listen to YouTube videos and read about it, but they haven't even ever seen one and they want to, well, they want to see one. Part of the attraction to these spirits, remember, the Bible talks about seducing spirits and people forget that there is a seduction and an attraction that the dark side has yes, that can pull people in. Yes, but I want to, before we go any further, I wanted to give the other two members of our panel a chance to chime in and ask them if they had any questions for you, Brother Doss, before we go any further. Absolutely. Brother, Brother Cripps, did you have any questions for uh uh, no questions yet. I do want to hear about the uh, poltergeist story eventually, but he said he was he was going to get to that because he's mentioned a couple times, and uh, I don't know if that would be better to 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 tell that in the front uh, or or later, whatever he decides. But I'm I'm interested in hearing about that as well. Okay, how about you, brother Ben? You're awful quiet back there. Did you have any qu questions for brother Doss at this point? Uh, yes, but and forgive me if if you covered this. I had to step up for a couple seconds, but. Did you smell anything when you saw this creature? Because I, I often hear that, um, that 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 is the case. It's, it's a foul smell, a foul stench, and mm -hmm. that would be keeping that it's not not no, a god. Only only once, and um, that's another indication to me. That I, on top of the hairs, the hair samples and stool and all that kind of stuff that we're dealing with, some, one element of it is the physical creature. Um, but them being a, some sort of a beast, the, I don't think that they fall under the category of anything we need to be worried about. Like the Bible talks about the, uh, Moses gave the laws and he was talking about the punishment for not only a man and a woman that lie with the beast, but the beast itself. God is God. He knows that a beast doesn't have the wherewithal to understand the actions that, it, that it's in. So I really started studying that word beast a lot. But to answer your question, I only smelled it once. And um, growing up in Oklahoma and especially having a friend whose um, uncle is there's been books written about him and songs. His name's Buster Ned. His uncle was what they call Oklahoma's last medicine man. So uh, I grew up with his mama, who I also call mama. She's a great lady. Her name's Brenda. 
telling these stories. He didn't care about it. He was sick to death of it when we were like nine. But she would talk about these stories of these medicine men and uh, what they call a skinwalker. Now, again, this is land that's been uh, donated by the Choctaw tribe to Oklahoma for this reserve. Technically, that's still their land. Uh, they, they hold the spiritual rights, if you want to call it. I've heard people say that before. Now, all this stuff is congregating within the, the bounds of, uh, and when I say all this stuff, the bad aspect, the spiritual, the, the adversary, let's call it spade a spade. The adversary seems to be prominent where this land is. You also get reports in um, national and state parks, but none of this weirdness is around them, the, the stench and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's something else completely, you know, um, isolated to these tribes and their beliefs about these medicine men. And I've, I do believe they're more than just beliefs. Yeah, okay. that I, I, I was so oh, uh, sorry. I, I was talking to Lisa about that last night because I had I had surmised the same that somehow there was some type of uh, like the, the principalities uh, really did you know, if that's the word, I really don't know the word, like, you know, like you said, spiritual rights uh, to, to the land. I really think that there's something to that, um, uh, you know, it's like some sort of legal code. Uh, and when, you know, uh, when you have brought up about, you know, what happened recently with the Supreme Court decision in Oklahoma, uh, I totally agree. I totally agree that if, uh, you know, legally the, the land is given back to like, you know, what else we call it, a pagan, uh, you know, tribe or tri pagan people, if that, that, you know, will have a major impact in the spiritual realm. Uh, I, you know, and I, I think that, uh, you know, I, I even told Lisa, I think that that might have something to do with a lot of the incredible flood of immigration we see into Europe, which is traditionally a Christian, you know, in name only or not, it doesn't matter. I think legally somehow that matters. And now we're having people, particularly like, you know, Muslims come into Europe uh, and it's almost like perhaps to, to, to try eventually change the principality of the land. If, if, if they, you know, if it, uh, you know, if they overtake, because I think it could, I think that could happen. Um, and I think that, you know, that's something that we're seeing all over the place. And the, something really, you, you can always uh, notice a pattern is it's against uh, Christianity. There's all, it, there's an, it's a, it's an attempt to uh, overthrow, even if, even if it was like a Catholic domain, somehow, you know, because I don't consider, you know, Catholicism true Christianity at all, but I think legally it still would be considered um, uh, like a Christian uh, domain somehow. Does that make sense to you, Dee? Uh, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we have Catholic brothers and sisters. I say that all the time. Me too. Oh, I, I, I do. They're, I they're reading their Bible more than they're going to their, their uh, yes. place of worship. They're bad Catholics. That's what I said. They're, they're believers. They're just bad Catholics. But that makes all the sense in the world. And I found new information. I'm actually writing. Uh, uh, I'm going to write special because i don't want to present it live i actually want to highlight a few things the where i'm at in oklahoma southern oklahoma there's a county just a few miles down the road called love county well someone sent me a, a biography from oklahoma's archives of the judge in which this county was named after and, and his family still lives there to this day there is a wild evil going on down in this county of every kind everything you could imagine and it, it's it's gone on without cease since I've, I mean, I'm 35. I remember my parents talking about it and they were older uh, when I came about. So this gentleman was a judge. And at the very end of the article, very sweet article made him out to be a hero. It highlighted how he wasn't a Christian. And this is 1838. This is when this Oklahoma was a territory. And it points out how he wasn't a Christian, but had very spiritual beliefs. And he was also um, a very proud Chickasaw Indian. Where this county is, is where this prim my primary research area is, uh, where I've had these experiences with all, all, uh, <laughs> all sorts of things. Uh -uh. So I really do uh, kind of change my paradigm about it a little bit. And I, I, didn't, I used to implore people to go out and see for themselves because, again, what I experienced was a, a physical beast of some sort. And that's being hidden from us. And that ought not be so, because I, I do believe some of them are taking people. Uh, there's thousands upon thousands of people that go missing in national parks and state parks a year that 
the public doesn't get to know about. It, it's in, they're in sealed records. And I, that that's very, it's not only wrong, but it's very strange. And um, there's an investigator who, who looks into that stuff. But uh, if, if you want, I will go into that poltergeist nonsense. So you're thinking that the parks department, uh, not without, I'm not saying indicting anyone here, just there's some type of hush hush cover up going on as to how many people actually go missing, whether it's the police that aren't saying it or the parks department or whatever other group. Well, the, 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 if there's a police report um, launched, the, you, yes, there is some sort of a criminal investigation probably that comes afterwards. What I'm saying is the accumulated information about people that go missing in state and national parks is kept under lock and key to whereas if it was any other case, people going missing inside of a city or even a small town, you would have uh, figures we could just Google up. Um, Oh, okay. And I do, I do believe that the that it, there is a coinciding um, factor in the fact that Theodore Roosevelt started the national park systems. Mm -hmm. He's the biggest, I guess, what you would call a figurehead or a celebrity or whatever, to come out in the open and say that he's had uh, an experience with one of these creatures. Uh, Daniel Boone it, it actually allegedly shot one in the forest named after him. He called it a Yahoo. And then the inf the information of this actual wild man goes all the way back to like uh, 500 AD or something like that. It, it's it's crazy. They're known as different names, and out of the thousands of Native American tribes, they all had different names for it, but they described the same creature. Uh, so uh, I honestly do believe that these state national parks, because you can't hunt within their bounds, so their resources aren't going to deplenish because of hunting. I think that the uh, Theodore Roosevelt had a run in with one of these things and said, we better do something about it before more people come up missing and implemented the park systems. So they would have a natural boundary and food source. There are state parks that have 12, uh, 12 feet high chain link fences with the barbed wire facing inward. Yep, and I've heard people okay. surmise that it was maybe at some like like deep state thing or like you know, s satanic ritual abuse stuff in the parks. But and that's possible. But it yeah. is interesting though that um, like people say, you know, they're kidnapping them for ritual purposes and everything. But a lot of the ways that they're found, it's like it's really strange. And honestly, uh, I, I just feel like it would be um, you know with the consideration of po you know possible tunnel systems under the under the area. You know, you know, you never know what could really be going on, but it, it does seem like kind of a, a difficult way of procuring people if it were like a trafficking operation would like to go in these sparsely uh, populated national, you know, what I mean, national parks where, you know, you're trying to grab random people. I mean, you can just do that off the street. Like, it seems more like something that wells out there, you know, that, that's, that's, that's kind of my I, thought I, on I it. I think it's a little bit of, of, of both because. Yeah. I've talked, I've talked to researchers who. And these are real researchers, nobody on TV or YouTube who just out of their own interest to, I don't know, find truth, have been in, uh, going back to Daniel Boone, I'll say that's that's where it is. He saw hooded figures around a fire, a, a circular, like a fire that was lit and it was circular around this, you know, they were chanting stuff. And all of a sudden this fire turns green. And uh, this gentleman who I do trust said that it sounded like a shotgun went off. And this guy's an outdoorsman. He, he's actually so much so that he contracted a disease called Alpha Gale that's only found in the Lone Star Tick. And this Lone Star Tick will give you this disease that only affects mammals, upright walking mammals that eat meat. This was in Daniel Boone National Forest. So how can that disease come about naturally in a tick that's very rare uh, to begin with? And it only attacks primates. Anyways, he saw this uh, being after this fire turned green. He said the atmosphere and the air changed. It sounded like a shotgun went off, and he saw a giant wolf man fly out of this hole, out of this fire, and run off into the woods. So I you're not too far off. Story. Yeah. Well, you know, I, and that's one thing I, I tried to tell Wolf, too, is that uh, very clear to me that there's something about this whole, like, wolf man thing. It's, it's, it's very demonic because I know that my best friend – who I've 
talked about quite a bit. Um, I grew up with her and her, she was born into a Luciferian family. Uh, they were, you know, they programmed her and everything. And the way that I really came to the Lord was when I finally realized to put all the dots together, what I've seen my whole life with her and, you know, uh, basically triggered memories in her by just, I mean, you know, I didn't, I didn't suggest things to her. I just asked her some questions about like, like why she never told me her mom's maiden name, stuff she couldn't explain. And basically uh, after that, she uh, uh, came to stay with me and stuff and was kind of trying to break free of what was mind control. Or at least I thought, you know, I thought at the time I was lost. So I thought it was just mind control. Uh, and, you know, I didn't really understand the purpose of the ritualistic aspect, but, you know, now I realize mind control is just like very, um, uh, highly methodical, like layered demonic possession or something like that. That's the best that's way a, I can describe that's it. That's exactly right. Um, and they and they had a, a dog man spirit. Like that's what manifested in my house. Um, that had, I had that was her mother said that it was a generational hellhound spirit that was uh, meant to protect what she called the family jewels. Uh, that's like a term, like one of their code words. But um, wow. that's that. And 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 you know, my my little I saw it as a shadowy thing. Like a shadow, like a blob, shadowy thing. I have seen it before, like years before I even knew about this with her. Uh, it started uh, to actually appear to me when she was around, and she, you know, apparently she had never that never happened before. Like it was something only she could see in her family. Um, but it was like her mom said it was her best friend as a kid. It would keep her company. And then my little girl saw it, and she called it a doggy. And that was when we both said the Lord's Prayer. Unbelievers who didn't even want it to work. But that, once we did that, it never showed up in my house ever again. Um, and that was when I realized I had been wrong about my whole life, uh, denying the Bible and everything. But the thing is, is that I had this sense, even two years before, when it was really just appearing to me as like a shadowy mass that would like change shapes and stuff. Um, I had this sense that it was sort of dog-like. Like, like intelligence wise, like I thought if it's a demon, it's like not the equivalent of like a human, you know, that just a demonic human or whatever. It's like a, I felt like it was a, like a, like an animal, like a, like a dog. And I couldn't see that. <laughs> but then like, all of this got confirmed when her, you know, when finally her mom uh, confirmed that it was the hellhound. That's what she called it. And so I, I think you're absolutely right. I think that those things are conjured. Uh, for sure. And they, they, they you know, they, we've been, uh, they've kept it secret that there's any sort of attachment between like werewolves and, um, and these like satanic ritual things. Like, you know, we, we really don't understand anything about how their world works, but they show it to us in movies, these glimpses of, of their little, uh, you know, I guess you would call them their emissaries or their. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the, the movies are, it's a part of their ritualistic magic as well. That if we sit down and we watch that movie and we leave after eating our popcorn with our husbands or wives or whatever, and we say, gee whiz, that was great. We have then confirmed that we are opening ourselves up to that type of wickedness. Yeah, yeah. And it's dangerous. I talk about this all the time. I, I, I warn believers to be careful not to enter into demonic agreement with things. Because some some kind of way in witchcraft world that's what they keep trying to get us to do. Everything is a contract. Everything. That's exactly right. Whether it's verbal or written, they trick us into entering into agreement. And when we do, it's just like when I was talking to you last week, brother, about Balaam. When he looked out over the, the, uh, the children of Israel or the, the Hebrews and he says, you know, he's, he's asked to curse them. He says, I can't curse what God is blessed. But if you can get them to curse themselves, and this is what they do, they and it's, get. It, it, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Not to cut okay. you off, but I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, I feel that fire growing because I remember, I'll tell people that you know because I've had witches cast spells on me. Um, like I told Sister Lisa the first time because I, I was I was really nervous um, starting off because I wanted people to know the truth and uh, not. Uh, Angel mentioned someone who, who's in, I guess, if you call it a field, my field and uh, not him, but there are people who are afraid to say things. That's not me. Those are people who are more worried about. Um, they're more worried about the monetary uh, part of it in a way, which there's nothing wrong with making money. This is America, but I'm not going to stifle truth because I want to make a few extra bucks. I'm going to tell people like it is. Uh, and, and I've been well blessed for that. But like this sister just said, 
You cannot curse that which he has blessed. The if, if we enter, even even if we give some sort of an acknowledgement, that's why we have to be so careful with what we say, what we watch, because when we watch things, we have a, we run a risk of taking it into our heart. Um, Amen. That's right. It, it's not worth it. You know, uh, the, the spirit world doesn't work on the same thinking that we do. Uh, and I think there's a lot of people who try to apply human knowledge and human understanding, which is finite, to the spirit world, which is eternal. And it just doesn't work that way. Uh, so we, we, it's not that they trick us. We allow them to trick us. If the, I mean, that's, all, that's the way I've always looked at it. I agree. But, I agree. Well, that's, that's true partially, but some of it is absolute fraud because they don't give informed consent on a and, lot of the things that they're doing. And they play games with spelling, which is a form not only of casting spells, but a way to use language against us. And you learn that all you have to do is pick up a Black's Law Dictionary. And you'll you'll see that there's a gentleman you guys have to check out his channel. It's called Justinian Deception. Uh, I'll find it and I'll put a link in the in the chat here. And he I've, talks I've about it. how they play games with words and have literally put humanity into bondage by us not understanding how they use language against us. And get us to enter into these demonic agreements, this form of spell casting, with their words. And, 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 and our agreement, not knowing what these words actually mean. They like have if someone, an entirely different code language. Right. With our own words. We think it means one thing. And to the common, if you will, to the common man, it means one thing. But to them, it means com something else entirely you're absolutely right that's why i'd say I, the discernment of the holy spirit is essential we have to subject us we have to obey the holy spirit we have to there's no if ands and buts about it uh because I, I i and this is just my way of thinking I, I, and there are a lot of our brothers and sisters who maybe not have they don't have the benefit of, of or means to have the Holy Spirit lead them under the same truth that we've come unto. Um, right. They don't have the same predisposition or, or intellectual curiosity. I've noticed some, sometimes, he, like my father's a good example of that. Sure. He's he he he's a he he keeps it simple, but he ha is a total believer. But he he doesn't sit there and and you know go on these uh, journeys like we do. And I think that you know uh, that's God uses people like that for different things, and He uses uh, people like us who are who are intellectually curious. Uh, for these like deep dives into, into things like this. But, uh, but I agree with uh, what you're saying. Like, I, I can't imagine not being this way, but I also know I've always been this way, even as a lost person, you know, I wanted to know every single right. thing about what my opinion, you know, was so. And the Lord yeah. uses us for what we, what our innate traits are, are, are you know, um, what we're good at. And I was an intellectual prideful in my knowledge, uh, pride of life and all that kind of stuff, uh, working a good job and, Money in the bank. I was never, you know, a flashy type person. I'm a simple country boy, but you know, I was worldly. I like movies. I was, I'm a movie buff. Uh, I could quote uh, probably Dick Tracy and The Big Lebowski. Yeah, I could do one man's play on those two movies. But he 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 took all my my academic achievements and all my intellectualism and just like wiped them off the table. <laughs> he said, "See, you don't know nothing. Here, let, let me give you Same real knowledge." Yeah. He actually had to show me that that was a hindrance because I Amen. thought even 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 suspending my disbelief and imagining that there was a God, I thought, how could the ultimate truth of reality be something so simple that all these, you know, because I thought Christians were just, you know, simpleton, basically, uh, because they just believed something that, you know, nobody could ever explain it to me. They couldn't explain to me why Jesus had to die to save us, like why it all had to be done. Like I never met Christians that could answer my questions, even as a little kid. Uh, because they did, they had faith like little children. They just believed it, and and some people really can do that. Uh, that was but me. I didn't, I, I, yeah, I was right. Children, like until he he called me up to service. You know what I mean? Uh, and and I was becoming a Gnostic Christian at that. I was seeking all this esoteric stuff. 
Uh, maybe that's where your pride can dwell because yeah. it, it, it makes you feel like you have secret now he showed me that they actually the he would make the truth so simple that there would be literally no pride in understanding like yeah like like he had to he showed me that um that i had been looking at everything backwards my whole life because obviously if he wants to save you from the fire like i i i've described it recently as um basically a teacher saying okay write your name on a piece of paper uh for your final exam because he wants anyone to just somebody to pass the class, you know, like that's how that, you know, because that's that if this is a life or death, like it's a rescue mission. Yeah. He, so. he did that to you too. Like I, yeah. I, 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 I prayed for that. In my first prayer, when he lit that fire, I asked him, Lord, I'm not as I'm not, don't, don't, don't show me things as smart as I think I am. Just treat me like I'm dumb. Cause I want it to yep. be obvious. I don't want to be found in error. Yep. Yep. That's what, that's the thing. I, I mean, and I also, one of the biggest things was he, I, I told him right away. I said, "Look, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do this thing where I actually believe the Bible, can't even imagine considering it. You know, most of my life, uh, I need you to tell me in a way that I can understand why I should trust it. It's the one thing that this you know uh, world and you know these this shadowy you know cabal hasn't corrupted. And it was right then, like instantaneously. He's like, if I'm God, if I'm God, do you really think I can't? I can't. Uh, I can't cut that. I can't. I can't uh, rise to that occasion. I can't preserve my own word. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like, and and that's what I always tell unbelievers: you're looking at the Bible without suspending your disbelief. If you just suspend your disbelief for a second and it's, uh, ask yourself, well, if he is God, and then everything makes sense. But if you go into it with this attitude that no, this, I mean, you know, why would why yeah, would God do this? Cool. Why, yeah. 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 The other thing too is that you know. Uh, what, what I found recently is, is just stunning is um, how much sin in the world has just uh, twisted our, everyone. Everyone, I think everyone's effect twisted our the, our intellect. Where simple, such simple concepts in the Bible that I look back now and think, how, how is this? What, what, how have people argued about these doctrines for centuries? <laughs> it's so simple, but. Amen. <laughs> Figure it out. It's just like sin is. It's you know how how difficult it is. It's to understand law versus grace. You know, mm. justice was met. Justice was met. Uh, Christ met the law, so grace is available. And and people fuse those two things together. And it it it's again. It's uh, it, sin has warped our thinking. That even even the smartest man. You know, the, some of the most sophisticated, brilliant intellects can't understand the Bible. Um, a couple more things I want to do, brother. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to, to, to piggyback on your point. Seek ye not the knowledge of this world. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You're absolutely right. I agree with every word. The other, other thing, too, I'm just going to have some thoughts here. We, we can, you guys might want to talk about it or not. I just want to uh, put them out there. Is that one thing that I, every, I, I've uh, observed that um, my background is a little bit different than everyone uh, here. And I think, and uh, that is, is that, um, I, I, I was uh, always interested in the Bible, but I just was ignorant of it and didn't pursue it. Didn't even know I really needed to uh, or should. You know, I didn't. I just assumed, uh, okay, yeah, Jesus is God. And if you believe that, you get to go to heaven. And I didn't. But that's that was the extent of it, um, essentially. Um, so for that reason, I knew um, not to kind of go give some of these things attention. Um, some like I, I was always kind of drawn to, to the aliens or or maybe Bigfoot. And or maybe Ouija board stuff, but I always knew like it's like don't know. There's a line you don't cross. You don't go there. It's dangerous. And so I did give these some of these things the attention. Whereas I think some of you, uh, some some of the experience you guys related was that um, you some of that stuff did maybe because for whatever reason. Well, I, actually, I, that's another thing I want to mention is that I grew up in an area that didn't. Uh, I grew up in an area that's kind of like a more of a uh, urban area. It's more. Uh, it just wasn't uh, a lot of, there was a lot of hustle and bustle with people. And there wasn't a lot of, uh, uh, you know, country activity. People, people would, uh, it just wasn't a country environment. And one thing I noticed with, with a lot of the stuff is that it does seem very much related to the area you're in, like Oklahoma, like you mentioned. And, and so I'm, I always grew up in, in Michigan, never traveled at all, really, just in a small town. But when I started traveling about 10 years ago, I started observing that it getting a sense of different, different uh, uh, spiritual senses, if you will, by going to different towns. Like I mentioned Angel, for example, I went to Columbus, Indiana, and I just got a sense that. That's where I live. Yeah, there's something going on here. I don't know what it is, but there's something yep. going on. I went it's to Kentucky. Masonic. I went to Louisville, Kentucky. I, I had a beautiful area. I love that area. 
but certain areas, area. a lot of places, I, yeah, it's there's something going on there. In fact, that I had my first supernatural experience when I was there. Um, also, they call too, it the dark and bloody ground, not to interrupt, but Kentucky, yeah. Kentucky, the dark and bloody ground. It mm -hmm. was a place that Native Americans or Indians, we call them here in Oklahoma, it's a place Indians wouldn't even go through. They wouldn't go hunting. All hunt. of Kentucky? All of Kentucky, they call the dark and bloody ground. This is Why before, they call it that? because there's something going on in there. I call it cryptid Disney World and what I do because 40% of the, uh, out of 100% of, uh, of the cases are coming from Kentucky. Um, yeah, everything you could imagine, especially these creatures. Now, with these creatures, then I'm sorry, brother. Mammoth Dan, cave, ahead. mammoth cave. Yeah, was that Bigfoot or was that one of the sister angels animals there? My cat. Yeah. Oh, okay. My cat. Sorry, but yeah, oh, Vin, I, you should also tell about your little uh, what what you saw in Louisville too, because I thought that was an interesting story. It wasn't too long. Well, uh, D, if you want to finish your thought, that's fine. Uh, I was interested. No, in no, no, no. I was just uh, saying you're right. It's uh, it, it, been doing this for five years and talking to hundreds upon hundreds of people. Yeah, I find it fascinating that my brother and I hate talking about this stuff honestly because it's and I'll get into the deception part and the poltergeist and all that. But it's fascinating that you said your first experience with any of this stuff is in the place where most of it seems to be happening. You know, and yeah. it's that dark and bloody ground. But I apologize. Right. I'm rude. No, not at all. Not at all. Not rude. Rude. Uh, yeah, we're, we're I'm, totally I'm just excited. <laughs> yep. Uh, we're all we're like the little rascals here. We're all we're a bunch of characters. So I love yeah. it. Angel, <laughs> Angel blessed me right with uh brand new brothers and sisters. She absolutely yep. that's that's what I wanted. I really wanted to bring into the fold because I I don't I don't know. I know it can, can be dicey when it's when you're you know relying on uh People interested in the in the cryptid, you know, area. It's kind of like a miracle when they're actually believers. So. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be surprised. I think that's a lot of why God didn't allow me to leave. Right, right. You're just one of the. You're the only person I found that I like that has a show where I could like I could listen to it and not just start just angrily typing like, "Run! How dare you tell people that those ghost those ghosts in their house are are, are oh. their dead loved ones? Maybe how dare." Are you and you claim to be a Christian, yeah. you know? Yeah, know exactly. uh, yeah. but uh, but yeah, Ben uh, uh, Ben gets uh, he, he tends to, to, to be quiet a lot, so I want I want to I want to hear because I don't actually remember exactly what I know what you saw was like a it, it was like a figure, uh, but um, but you know I live an hour for I live an hour from Louisville and I go there all the time and I love it and I've told Ben it's like I love the people in Louisville the people are the nicest people I've ever met in Louisville, yeah. but. Um, you know, but then he said that too. But he had the, the, in the downtown area, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like Kentucky's beautiful, and one thing I I, I did uh, one thing I noticed about Kentucky. There's a lot of abandoned houses that are just in the middle of nowhere, abandoned. Um, I, again, something something spiritual with that. But yes, yeah, so I was walking down Kentucky, and the other thing too, I, I I've observed about all this stuff. And it, D, you mentioned something that kind of confirmed this. I don't remember the exact details now, but there's always an element of deniable plausibility. So, for example, my experience when we went into Louisville. Um, I was just, we're kind of walking down the streets. We want to check the, check, check the town out. I, I had moved there for a job and it was a complete, you know, <laughs> it was a uh, culture shock to me. And so we were walking and I saw this abandoned uh, storefront and there was like a poster on the wall that kind of seemed out of place. And it, I don't remember the exact details, but it was a poster that basically looked like there was some kind of like, you know, uh, abstract looking faces and they were like cages basically. And it was some kind of artistic uh, something or other. But I got the sense right there is that there's something here. And I walked away. Uh, and by the way, I, 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 again, this is many years ago. Uh, I think I was stoned and drunk at the time. Not not drunk, but buzzed. And so I wasn't, yeah. So I, there's that element of deniable plausibility. But as I walked away, I just knew that something's watching me. I turned around and there was a, a lady uh, dressed in black, essentially. Uh, I think it looked like if I had to, I didn't really look to see the details, but it looked like, you know, Victorian type of dress that was just black. And she was like very pale looking. And I, and I looked away and I, and I said, I bet you if I look back again, she's going to be gone. And sure enough, she was, but, and I wasn't the only one who saw her. Um, it freaked us all out. Um, and that, but one other thing I wanted to mention too, is that, uh, you know, I, I, I think about this, you know, we're Bigfoot, for example, why, why are we not finding their bodies? Maybe people are, but, you know, I see where Satan and Michael were disputed over the body of Moses. I wonder if Satan, you know, owns their bodies. And so that's why we don't find some of this physical evidence of their bodies um, 
I, I think that's uh, right. a whole lot more simple um, answer than what they would have you believe. They want these mysteries. They want people yeah. asking questions like that because yeah. just being a form. I used to hunt a little bit, but I, I I have grocery stores. So I don't want to kill an animal. I'm no hippie. Don't get me wrong, but I just didn't. I didn't like it. But uh, in that, I really do take into account of where they are. I mean, how many bare bones do we find? Um, what, when's the last uh, set of uh, monkey bones? The in, an intact set of monkey bones that were found. Uh, the answer to both those questions is never. Uh, there's, as far as I know, and this is information from three years ago, you won't find bare bones or uh, a specific type of monkey because they live in uh, moisture or, or water rich environments. Their bones will decay over time. The, the earth will take it back. And with these creatures who have the wherewithal to use military tactics and strategies to like stalk people, I honestly believe they bury their dead. Some Native American tribes, and that's who I really listen to when it comes to this stuff, because they are all off into their people's history and, and all that. They say that they are buried with their people. And Native burial grounds down here in Oklahoma, at least, are, are it's, it's sacred ground. Like, if you're not related to somebody and you get caught in one of these uh, burial sites, you're going to jail. And if you dig in the ground, that's, I mean, you're probably going to jail and be sitting there for a minute. So th those are two, you know, the, the natural decay of something in a moisture rich environment and them burying their, their dead on top of native, you know, uh, native American caskets and stuff. But yeah, there's another yeah. option that they actually, and I and I know you guys. We're we're cut from the same cloth. We we know the truth of this world. The, it, underground, they use tunnel systems to move around. Right. That's one another another big mammoth thing. cave, Kentucky. Mammoth cave, uh, brother, which it's not completely brother, mapped. Brother Dawes, can I interrupt you briefly? I'm sorry. Please do no. Uh, that I, I love cliffhangers. Whenever I, <laughs> whenever I was a child, I used to love when they would do the cliffhanger. So you interrupt on a really good part. <laughs> keep people listening anyway. <laughs> I know people are going, wait, no, don't interrupt him now. Okay. The reason I'm interrupting is Brother Cripps had to leave us, ladies and gentlemen. He wasn't feeling very well. So, brothers and sisters, I'd just like to ask you to remember him in your prayers. Please uplift him. He said he needed to go lie down. <clears throat> so, uh, the second part of the, the broadcast will have changed. We will not be doing the Crips movie corner tonight because, of course, it's much more important for Brother Crips to uh, see to his health and take care of himself. So shout out to Brother Crips. Uh, Brother Crips, we love you, and we will be praying for you this evening, Brother, for strong and speedy recovery to feel better right away. Praise the Lord. Um, everybody uh, else, please stick around because we are intrigued with Brother Doss. He was just about to tell us about underground, what is this? Is this going to be cities or uh, tunnels? I don't know about cities, or... but tunnel systems for sure. Okay, please continue, Brother Doc. Yes, ma'am. So, and, and I'm going through my first, I actually, like a dummy, um, I, I fell completely headfirst into this thing. And I think this is, uh, I can tell you from experience, the possibility for deception is so great in this subject. It's so great. I quit my job. And I quit going to school for a semester to investigate this stuff uh, every other day, if not a daily basis. And that's really the reason my YouTube channel got a little bit of steam from the onset. And I didn't follow this stuff, really. You know, I, I was looking into the hidden nature of all of it. UFOs, I've always known, were demons of some sort, even as a little kid. That was just something I innately knew. Uh, the 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 lying signs and wonders i suppose but having my very very uh spiritual mother and her family over in arkansas putting two and two together with that them talking about catamounts it, it really did intrigue me and of course why are they lying about it and then there's obvious reasons but the tunneling systems one of the experiences i had it was my it was the one of three where there was nothing impeding me and the creature uh, there's this gentleman who showed up down uh, on the river, Red River, Southern Oklahoma. He left his number plastered over my entire channel on multiple videos. And I was like, man, this guy's going to get prank calls. They're going to say it's me. 
So not thinking about it, I went there um, to see him. He then oh, I could feel it that he wanted to disprove me. He said, oh, I've ran around in here since I was uh, nine years old with no shoes on. I've never seen any Bigfoot, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm not asking anyone to believe me. I'm just putting out the truth. And I showed him around. There's something told me not to take him actually into the area where these things were. Uh, I, I believe it's the Holy Ghost. And I'll tell you why. So I'm showing him things on the peripherals uh, that can be attributed to them. And I could tell in the moment he was making up stuff to to call it into question. And it's the only time I've ever been even slightly angry in this area. I, I told him, look, I, I left my home to come down here because you asked me to. If you don't believe me, then we can come back again. And I guarantee you, you'll see something that you can't deny. I don't know why I said it. I had no intentions of going back down there with that man. Uh, but mm -hmm. then... <laughs> You, I heard four what they call wood knocks, which I don't believe these things are knocking on wood. It's something else going on with that. And right there at the cusp of the, the entranceway, the, the cusp of the trail leading into the area, it was dust. The sun was midway down over the horizon. So it's got that. It was dark, but it wasn't dark. The four knocks happens and the female from my first sighting walks across the trail in front of five people, all five of us. It was him, his uh, friend or brother, his daughter, and the daughter's boyfriend. They're around 15, 16. This female with glowing red eyes looks at me. I don't feel any fear from it for whatever reason. And, I, and mind you, again, I've never been in that situation where one's that big. because She was bigger than the one that ran up on me. She walked across the trail and looked at me briefly and then looked at him and went and stood behind a tree and stared at him. Uh, so where did she come from? We were in that area for all every bit of at least 30 minutes. And as again, the sun had just started to go down over the horizon. She was eight feet tall. And it was as she was obvious she was a female. Um, and it was obvious it was that female, even though it was dark. But that's when I released, I started calling a lot of stuff into question. Why didn't I feel any fear from it? I felt fear the first time. Why not now? Why did it look at me? Um, why did it cross the trail to be seen just to get behind another tree? But the main thing I, how I really focused on is where did it come from? This thing, you could hear it walk. It was that heavy. So I really do believe and I can prove that there's underground tunnels in all these areas where you see these beasts. Uh, if you dig up old, uh, old uh, underneath old, like uh, um, driftwood that's piled up, which looks like it has too much symmetry to it. Mm -hmm. There are openings to tunnels. Yeah. Okay. And you know, they, they've closed a lot of them down like in, in where I live in Southern Indiana. I don't know if you, I feel like Indiana is a weird like desert in terms of like, there's not, we do have sea sightings. I mean, especially in Brown County, but it's strange. Like all around us, there's tons of activity, but in this state, it's like not nearly as much as you think it would be. Um, but um, they had from, from in Southern Indiana, we have caves. And I think uh, at least last year I checked, uh, they had closed the cave systems down in a lot of areas, of course, supposedly because of some bat virus. Yeah, and I was suspicious. I'm just suspicious of that. I don't know how to, I just, I just, like, I, I don't trust it. I just feel like they, That's something they closed that everybody it knows who's done this for those decades about, that we were talking about. Everybody knows that, but I'm mm -hmm. the first one to say it. And, uh, you know, I got the threats and the, and the weird, um, what'd you call it? Like, they, not on like all out threatening me, mm -hmm. but calling while I was doing a show, breathing into the phone, heavy. Um, when you said that about the tunnel systems? Well, uh, the whole time. The, you... when, I, when I first started talking about details of my experience mm -hmm. and um, the area that I was in, I named it by name uh, and what I had seen. That's when I started getting weird phone calls for you look on the phone. There's three numbers. Uh, you can hear like fax machine people typing in the background. I got strange emails that were veiled threats. Uh, the crazy thing is when I went back to school, all this started. I didn't immediately quit. I was going to school and plus doing this. 
not only me, but my uh, ex-girlfriend who was going to, for, to be a nurse, she was followed too. Um, wow. And this is, again, this is in North Texas. So they followed me across the Red River Bridge through uh, on I-35, Interstate 35, through downtown to get to the school. And they parked at the end of the parking lot. They did that twice. The worst, and when I and I kind of went off, I took that one down because I said some swear words that were regretful. But uh, I'll, I'll repost it after I beat him out because people need to hear it. This guy was saying that he was acclimating his dog to gunfire, right? Yeah, and Oklahoma is one of those places like whether you live in the city or not, if you tell me your last name, I'll probably know somebody who's related to you, that type of situation. Mm -hmm. um, this guy was down in, the, in my research area where nobody goes. He had his tent set up right at the opening. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's these thresholds, I call them, that they won't come past. And there's thresholds that, for whatever reason, people don't go past. Mm. And he had his setup right there where people usually don't go. And uh, this is the Holy Spirit that that saved me. There's no doubt in my mind. He said he was getting his dog acclimated to gunfire. It was a pretty little pit bull. It was it was, it was young, but mm -hmm. there was this nagging feeling to not go down that trail next to him. So I went mm -hmm. around. He asked me what I was doing. I said I'm shooting wildlife. You know, I'm an amateur photographer, which wasn't a lie. Um, and he made a little bit of small talk. He, he said he was on in the military on leave. He was uh, going to visit his family. This was Christmas. Actually, this was Thanksgiving. He was going to visit his family. They didn't have a lot of room because a lot of family came in. All sounds reasonable. So I start going down this trail, and Holy Spirit tells me, no, get back in the truck, drive away. Wow. And it was impactful. You know, it wasn't one of those ones where I could argue with him because I'm mm -hmm. dumb. I argue with the Holy Spirit sometimes. Mm -hmm. But uh, I got back in the, my vehicle and took off. Christmas Eve, I go back there in the afternoon, same as uh, Thanksgiving. He's there again with his dog, tenant in the same place. Said he was on leave again. Uh, and by then, I checked out his name because my background, background investigative journalism, which just means that, like, I, I'm good at researching stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't find his name, couldn't find the family there in that county. So then, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm aware uh, something's not up or something's not right, rather. Mm -hmm. So at this point in time, I have the guy from when I, that I saw the alpha female cross the trail with me. It mm -hmm. turns out this guy, he was a big, tough dude who wanted to see if I was legit because he had an experience further down the river when he was a 15 year old runaway in an abandoned cabin. He, mm. he said that he saw one of these creatures while sleeping in the rafters, come in and go through his food. He said it was a female who didn't have any hair on the front part from the face down to the chest. And uh, he could tell it was old because you could see its bones and, you know, real emaciated, skinny. So I took him with, forgave him, of course, took him with me because I didn't like going out there by myself at all, even though I kept doing it. <laughs> uh, and he, he was a good tracker. He, he was a great tracker. But I don't have to look down to track these things because wherever there's spiritual stuff, that's where these things are, mm -hmm. at least in this area. I've been to one where that's not the case. So there is something going on between the two. Anyways, um, where was I? I lost my place. I, I'm <laughs> you said the young man was a, a good tracker. Good tracker. No, and, and oh, you yeah. were talking about the guy, the, okay, the guy the with the gun. gun. Yes. Yep. He was there again on Christmas Eve. I told this, uh, I told this guy who was with me, Steve is his name told Steve what had happened. And he was like, oh, well, no, I wouldn't worry about it. It's probably your imagination. I was like, yeah, okay, imagination. He's there again. And this guy I'm with doesn't have the wherewithal to really, like, put two and two together at that moment. And he's mm -hmm. a talker like I am. So he goes over and starts chatting the guy up. Holy Spirit kicks in again. Go down this trail, not that one by his tent. Um, so I did. And we actually went through the area where they were. And they were extremely active, more so than usual. I don't know if that's a correlation or what, but uh, yes, they, 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 they were in there and they were making weird noises in the bush. Uh, the feeling of dread that I hadn't felt before, even though they were there. Me going in there day in and day out was there. So we stayed for an hour and left. Came back on New Year's Day. 
this time I, I, I was my uh, this research assistant and my ex-girlfriend. He's there again. He says that he had a date that uh, canceled on him, you know, so he figured he'd rather be out there. And this is the, at this point in time, I have a picture. I wish I could send it to you so you can show the folks. This guy had to have been in the know because where he was, there was what they call a nest and it had little young Sasquatch in in it. Plain as day. If you would have walked over to, and it looks like a little teepee with made out of uh, uh, branches with the leaves still on it. I went over and looked, I took a picture. It's no more than 25, 30 yards away from this guy. And uh, wow. yeah, so after, yeah, after that, nursery. I stopped, yes, after mm-hmm. that, I stopped going for a while and focused more on the show aspect of it. But mm-hmm. I wasn't omitting things like Angel was kind of alluding to earlier. Like I told the truth as is. I'm, I was I didn't care about money. Um, and that's when when I stopped going and started talking more is when the actual real harassment started. Uh, crazy screeching noises coming through the phone whenever I'd answer them. Um, went through a couple of computers. I lost a lot of the evidence on my first computer because of that, but it was early on. So I, 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 I think some of the stuff that I was maybe exposing that nobody else was talking about, maybe they got the same thing. So uh, one night it was on my birthday. I just turned 30, I believe, or 31. Um, I was woken up in the middle of the night by one of these strange phone calls. It was a heavy breathing, real creeper, weirdo type stuff. And I I was just enraged. It was like two, three o'clock in the morning and I opened up a stream and I just told everybody what was going on. All of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and not very, <laughs> in a very angry and perturbed way. And after mm-hmm. that, I've never had any problems. Mm-hmm. So uh, as far as the tunnels go, I honestly do believe that there are tunnels. And the reason I believe that besides actually seeing the openings and seeing one of the young ones with 13 people that went on an expedition with me had a flare and it went into this bank. The nest was pushed up against the bank in this floodplain. Uh, they had it. They, it was so clear you could see the heartbeat on it. And it looked like it ducked down and went into the bank there was a guy standing on top of that bank that couldn't see the creature, but it could see that hole. And he said that something black ran into it and it looked like dirt was flying everywhere. It collapsed the hole as it was going into it. I remember you saying mm-hmm. that. Remember that footage in the cemetery? I don't know. Uh, I, yeah. I think that's, is that fake? Or I mean, I don't know the way that thing was digging. I couldn't figure out how they'd fake it. I don't know who could do like that. The footage of it's oh, like it was, yes, it was a yes. viral video. It looked like believe, just like a, I don't believe that was fake at all. I believe that was. I think that was real. Hounds. Yeah, they say that they uh, eat uh, the dead bodies, but that, that's all stuff. I don't. I don't mess with that. Um, I wasn't sure true. if maybe it was digging something like because of the digging ability. Because, but I'll never forget when you said that they it disappeared into the like uh, like into the bank, and I realized that these things because they could dig. Like that, th- they could have access to, to you know, just like we, they, you know, the tunnel system. These cave systems aren't mapped well, or even if they are mapped uh, as best as they can, maybe they don't t- tell us about it. Um, because I live in uh, Bartholomew County, Indiana, which, uh, if you are familiar with Indiana at all, like Brown County is, is, is real beautiful. It's very, there's hills, like really, it's, it lo- you know, to me, it looks like mountains. I'm from Key West originally. So <laughs> to me, the hills are like mountains. But, um, there's a lot of you know sightings uh, over there, but uh, in Bartholomew, it's very very flat. Except right where I live, um, this is very strange. Uh, I live five minutes from a you know a 25 foot waterfall. Uh, it's called Anderson Falls, and it's a geological anomaly in the area because everything's flat except this this area, this very small area where I live called it's like Hartsville. And um, and and if you go to if you go to this this waterfall area, it's not just a waterfall. I mean, it, you can walk behind it. It's very you know it's a very large, wide waterfall, and it looks like nothing else around it. I mean, it was like flat, you know, clear cut farmland, and then suddenly you're in what looks like I don't know, like the Pacific Northwest. And I know there's caves around Anderson Falls. Supposedly, you know, we don't have any caves like right here. We have them in Brown County, but I mean, there's no way because of the the, the if you if you're you know 
the rock formation and everything around this, uh, this, this, this 40, it's like a 40 mile, 40 square mile area, uh, Anderson Falls Park. And like I said, they say they can't explain the geology of it because it, you know, it's just like, a, usually don't have a, an island of, um, you know, rocky waterfall type terrain. I don't really know what to call that. Not flat, you know, not flat country in the, in mm-hmm. the middle of all surrounded by flat land. Um, but, uh, you know, to, that just gets me very curious about, uh, about, you know, how much we really don't understand, uh, about how, where tunnels form and, uh, where they can exist because, uh, Florida, I, I, you know, I wouldn't have thought there were, you know, tunnels and cave systems in Florida growing up. I mean, it seemed like you couldn't, well, at least in Key West, we had all above ground, uh, 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 uh you know, burials. They are all like New Orleans, um, our cemeteries, uh, but Key West is very low lying, but, um, you know, with, uh, I, I've been to Carlsbad Caverns in, uh, in New Mexico. And I mean, we're talking like a cathedral sized, you know, room, like, you know, you walk down, I mean, I could not believe how big the opening into the earth this was i mean you could drive a car into it and it's 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 like nothing you've ever seen being, being in carl said mean, that's fascinating just how huge those tunnels can be um they yeah. have one here or a cave rather they have one here in oklahoma that's sort of like that uh just like you described um completely flat land and then all of a sudden there's this rise in the land and underneath that oh. is all this madness but uh and then that that's why that's why I got into that uh, whole point because of this alpha female. It, it, I'll toss and turn because it didn't make any sense how this this creature was huge. It was it was massive. How did it come upon us so quietly and make no noise? And then we were hearing it walk around. There was that's the only thing I could think of. Um, and it, it, of, it, oh, go, go, go ahead, ahead, brother. Good. Well, well, I'll okay, talk all um, the time, bro. I got my own show. I want. I like hearing y'all talk. <laughs> this is well, a great format, by the way, and a great channel, Lisa. Um, I, I love listening to y'all, and it's pretty cool being a part of a conversation now. So, oh, yeah. thank you, I, uh, praise God, brother Ben. Before you ask your question, yep. hold one thought. Uh, someone asked in the chat, "Was brother who was this talking?" So I want to uh, uh, go ahead and, and answer that, just in case people are just joining us. My guess is brother D Doss. And he is from the channel, the BDRP Supernatural is his YouTube channel. And the BDRP stands for the Bigfoot Dog Man Research Project. And uh, he is a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is telling us about both physical and paranormal activities he has experienced concerning Bigfoot and the Dog Man. Go ahead, brother, with your question. Well, I, I was going to, you guys were talking about tunnels and this is something I wanted to talk about. And Angel actually said, D, that you and I would probably have a lot to say on this in common. Uh, and I, I won't go into all the details now. Uh, I could say so much, but uh, one of the things um, about what well, I bet we'll talk about tunnels and tying it back to what I mentioned before about lack of physical evidence, not to say it's not there. I think it probably is there. But one of the things, for example, is um, so some of these so-called ape man discoveries, uh, one of the more recent ones. Um, you know, it, it, by the way, it still quits is that the, the latest ones are the most spectacular because they knew that evolution was on the ropes. So now they're coming out with these uh, more spectacular uh, tales and uh, providing more more evidence that people you know are demanding, essentially. So they're, they're giving it to them. But one of the things uh, recently was a, a, a discovery in a so-called discovery in Dimanisi, Georgia, and which is Russia. Dimanisi is D-M-A-N-I-S-I. Um, if you were to look at that type of Dimanisi skull, D-M-A-N-I-S-I, you will see the most grotesque looking uh, skulls you have ever seen. And they're, they're just really robust and uh, warped. And it looks like a skull that would be one of these uh, so co- one of these Sasquatch type people. But, you know, one of the things that uh, occurred to me is that a long a, a epiphany I had a, a while ago is that, um, you know, all of Satan's deceptions are in areas where I believe he has power over. So, for example... Um, we get, I, I believe we get uh, a lot of our false cosmology um, about, you know, where we live and where our place is in the universe. You know, that's outer darkness. That's Satan realm. So that's where his deceptions are. Uh, there's so much that area. Everything about space, I think, is right Amen. for deception. Yep. Number two is uh, he's also has power over death in the ground. And that's why you see all these tunnels. Mm. Um, and uh, most of this, these eight man discoveries are in areas that you cannot yourself 
just like space. You can't go out yourself and look at this stuff. And so you have to trust the authority. Jason would say with these eight men, you can't go to these inhospitable places in Africa and these deep caves that no man can get into. Um, and again, they're in caves. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, another example was, um, and again, I could go on forever about this, but I, I'm, I'm going to keep it uh, high level. But uh, one of the another recent discoveries called Homo Naledi. Um, and one, one, if you just look at the artwork, and I mentioned before, I, this is no mystery to any of us, but we, we all agree that the, the, to understand our reality and to, to, to decode deception, the Bible is the Rosetta Stone for that. So you know, once you understand the Bible, you can discover, you, you can unlock so many things, so many deceptions. So, for example, you know, we know about the Nephilim. They were so-called, you know, half man, half beast. Well, these eight man discoveries, if you look at Natural Ge Geographic, they'll say things like almost human. Um, and then if you look at the artwork, they, they are showing these homo naledis throwing this person into the cave, just like uh, it's a picture. I believe it, it, they're mocking Christ where uh, Joseph was thrown into the uh, cistern. Um, and, and again, and, and there are deep caves. Um, I could say so much more, but um, I believe some of these discoveries are these, these uh, eight man discoveries are absolute frauds. And but even maybe some of the physical evidence they have is from these these creatures that 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 exist you hit the nail on the head um and just like the, our, our our adversary the accuser of the brethren you're right in the fact that he will use our intellectualism against us uh the discovery man you got me fired up like <laughs> i do agree with you. the discoveries that these so-called scientists make science falsely so-called of course are a perversion of what's natural i'll look to the word of god to validate everything and and the only conclusion i can come up with about these beasts is they're the beasts of the field you have the lion men of moab that a lot of people believe are the mighty men people and uh, there's a big um emphasis on genesis 6 but genesis 6 talks about the giants and then they say how they they were the mighty men of old men of renown but people get stuck on this giant aspect and that that's the be all end all exactly uh, they, yeah agreed oh. I believe in the pre-flood world, your your Herculeses and your Achilles and uh, all these demigods, these so-called demigods, were the half angel, the gods with a little g, of uh, that mated with human women, and you know they're going to die in the same fire, the fiery uh, uh, death of Satan and his angels that first rebelled, which plots a different rebellion. People get so caught up on the Nephilim part of it. It's almost like romanticizing what it is. They are, they're, it's demonic. Um, but I do believe the reason that believers, most believers, besides the Dan Quill books and all that, which I'm not, I love Dan Quill. I believe he has a heart for this. Um, this field of that I'm in. The, Steve the Quill. Steve Quill. Who did I say? Dan Quill. Steve Dan Quill. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I'll, 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 um, I'll make that big. Uh, I'll Good snap. catch, Sister Good. Angel, because I was like, Thank I you. didn't know Dan Quill was in the big foot. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I should have said. Uh, I should have said Tom Horn. I think more people know him. But either way, I don't think they're trying to deceive anyone. I think they're just going from one avenue of thought, without really taking everything into consideration. When you look at the original Hebrew word for beast that was uh, created right before man. It is the same beast that you find in Revelations when the pale hoarder, pale rider, I'm sorry, it's late here, folks. Um, when the pale rider ride, <laughs> and then right under that, it says, and they are given power to kill with sword and with uh, famine, with fire, and with the beasts of the earth. That beast of the earth that whoever they is, is giving given this power to kill by is um, the same one in, wow. in, in Genesis. And uh, again, you all know. Wow. But for the people who may not, like when you go back to the original Hebrew and look at words, words can have completely different meanings that you have to look in the context in which it's written. And that changes the word completely. So this beast isn't a beast of burden. It's not an ox or a Clydesdale that, you know, the, the, the God's wrath is going to be met out with. I honestly do believe that it's these physical beasts out here. I believe that's why they stay on the peripherals of the forest and not just go in, in deep Wait. inside the peripheral forest. They're, yeah, they're, they're almost like they're waiting and watching because they that's what they do. Most people who run into these things, as terrifying as it is, they're simply being watched. They'll see one, want to look over at them and go on about its business. And because of pride of life and 
uh, greed and all that stuff, they'll take this little two second thing and expand upon it in a wild way. Uh, and that's what where people are getting their information from the stories instead of going out into the field now is like almost uh, passe, like looking for evidence or anything like that. Those people have really small numbers. But again, that's why I think my channel shadow banned because uh, no one can deny from the I think it's 26 people that's gone out with me over the course of five years. There's only been two that didn't have any experience with this physical beast or a sighting or something they can attribute to nature uh only two out of 24 and that that's actually not including the the 13 that came on the expedition there's absolutely some physical monster out there and i don't i don't trust man because especially the worldly man who's inspired by the devil when a bunch of when the world's saying they're nephilim I'm trying to look deeper into the Bible because when is the world right? You know what I mean? Um, that's the romanticizing deception, I believe, going on in this field that I'm in. But in that, and I always use this story to kind of paint a picture, even though it's 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 terrible. It's one that I, I, I want your viewers to know as well as my own. That's why I tell it multiple times. There was this case, this poor little girl, 12 years old, her two best friends separate from one another, mind you, were coordinated by the quote-unquote slender man. And the only reason they know this yeah. is because they both kept little written journals. So for all who don't know, slender man is some sort of a wicked type uh, a game that these kids play that was based off of a, a photo contest. They put this giant, tall, uh, white-faced being, this demonic-looking being in a black-and-white photo. Uh, and it was a real black-and-white photo. It was some sort of a, 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 what do you call it? photo editing type stuff and it won and, and this picture just blew up on the internet well it got turned into games and and memes and stuff like that these two 12 year old girls were coordinated by a fictional character no they were coordinated by what they were putting their attention in and that demon just took shape of that uh that's that's why it's so critical what lisa was saying earlier you you, you must be careful uh, to uh, attention is a form of worship uh, when I walk around and I meditate, I'm not doing yoga poses. I'm meditating on the word of God or a scripture or a passage and praying that the Lord through the Holy Spirit start expanding upon that scripture for me because I just know there's fruit in it. Uh, Lisa and I last week talked about Lazarus and the rich man, or uh, the rich man and Lazarus, rather. And uh, if you read through that in context, it, there's a valuable lesson to be learned. And I think we both agree that Lazarus, th that wasn't a, 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 an analogy for anything. But there's so much deeper truth in there. We got into how he saw Abraham afar off, but recognized it was Father Abraham and called him by name, which implies that he was a religious person. But in hell, he lift up his eyes being in torments. So it's stuff like that. The Slender Man case, it really made me start looking at the adversary and how he's involved in this, this field that I'm in. There are people who... And I think I may have been on that path at one point in time till the Holy Spirit kind of, you know, start ministering some some <laughs> different type of knowledge to me. Let things transpire in my life where I had to kind of snap out of this whole, oh, well, I'm going to be the one to bring this truth. It's not going to be me. It's going to be God. Um, and that's if people have ears that are receptive. And, and unfortunately, a lot of them don't. But the Slender Man thing, this girl was stabbed numerous times uh, only by... <laughs> Only by a miracle from God did she make it. But there's a, if anybody wants to go see it, pray before you watch it because it is very, it's very just unsettling. This girl was sitting in the interrogation room after this. One of the girls that did the murder and they gave their testimony about Slender Man, she stared and did not move a fraction of an inch for an hour. There's a clock above her head. That's demonism. Um, just the, it looked like they had captured an enemy insurgent who was a, war hard yeah. i mean it was just it was sad yeah and, and, and you see cases like that like uh people say these fictional characters told me to do this or the tv told me <laughs> that i think i think the tv did, did and that fictional character yeah. did. but what else is going on in this person's life what else did they open themselves up to that were, was left unrepentant do they know the lord to even repent um so in this field 
it's not like Paul said, it's not the stone or the wood. It's the spirit behind it that they're worshiping. This thing's a beast. Uh, I don't care how human they look. They're no better than a dog to me. And when I start using that type of language, that's another reason I'm on the outs with, with, with that. Oh, you know what I mean? Because they so how dare you? Yeah, how yeah. dare I? No, I'm not you know, that, that's uh, that misplaced sense true. of loneliness. They want something else. They want something else. They feel because they don't believe in God and they, they want to believe there's some other like intelligent life form. And, and you're taking their Bigfoot, you know, friend away from them when you when you suggest maybe it's not a, you know, Harry and the Hendersons type situation, uh, which, you know, but I will you're say to you. You're absolutely right. I mean, when I yeah. start when I yeah. start giving the testimony or something like that, there are more people wanting me to talk about the Lord than Bigfoot. And it was a Bigfoot channel. Mm -hmm. no. Oh, yeah. Well, but let me ask you a question. I, I had Brother Ben put up on the screen for us. Uh, this is a map from 20. 16 that I found on a website called Missing Persons of America. And it's the demographics here for this map for the yellow, the red. Let's see, it's yellow, red. I think they're calling that orange, blue, and green on the map. It looks like balloons. And what it says here is uh, the blue are missing males, the red is missing females, the orange and green are missing Jane and John Doe's. And this is just from 2016. Ben, if you could put that back up for a little while longer. I'd like to get Brother Doss's idea since he's been to these different areas. Do you see any any areas on this map? If you're able to see it, Brother Doss, are you able to see it? I'm trying to pull it up right now. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll... no problem. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, uh, no, no problem. I'll, I'll buy you some time there. here. When I look at this map, this is tragic. This is just from uh, 2016, so only four years ago. And these people are missing. They're just gone. And I'm sure from what I'm looking at on this map, some of this, some of these areas are probably going to be some of the hot spots that you're talking about. But just to look at this and see that, I mean, my goodness, look how many people that is. And this is probably not even a complete list or indication from that year in 2016. It looks like there's a lot of cover up in Florida. You don't see hardly any anything going on in Florida yet. I bet that's a super hotbed. <laughs> Right yeah, down I, there I, with all yeah, of that. Yeah. Yeah. And it is tragic. That's the. It's a sad thing that not only, which, which they have, you know, I think this is just a part of their ritualistic uh, occult magic, the magic with the K. I do believe that they allow certain things like this to take place, while lying to the public, and also confirming it. In Washington State, in 1973, I believe, the Army Corps of Engineers. You know, they'll map out a state every, I think, 10 years or something like that, maybe less. But they listed Sasquatch as a part of the indigenous wildlife of Illinois. Um, that's crazy. I, I'm sorry, could you repeat that again? Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll, as a matter of fact, I'll show you the article. Okay. The Army Corps of Engineers in 1973 listed Sasquatch as a part of the indigenous wildlife. Oh, it gets better okay, than that. Do you know how to put a link in the hangout there yes, with the? Um, it's been a while, put but put that I'll, in there so the producer can grab it and he can bring sure. it up. And while I'm Please, doing that, I can, I can tell you something cooler than that. Mm -hmm. As far as the, this massive hypnosis that people must be under, because all they have to do is like let it out. You know, it's on the internet for everybody to see, and there's people who don't believe. That's another reason I believe it's the beast of the field, and they throw this uh, um, kind of a decoy of this Nephilim stuff and it being a uh, gigantopithecus, which is a giant orangutan, uh, a supposed giant orangutan. It's madness. But here, let's see. I'm surprised that California is so sparse with people missing. I don't believe that for a second. Exactly. Uh, hey, didn't, right. didn't the bo little boy get killed in, in, in Kentucky, just a, like a 13-year-old boy, like just this past year, uh, to, that they can't figure out what did it? Like it was like a, like, you know, I guess some yes. of the channels were talking yes. about it being a werewolf, you know. 
And, and, I didn't know and, if you've heard more. I did, I did hear about that. And um, I'm not suggest, again, uh, it's what I tell my viewers. When you hear of cases of, of some sort of a panther where there is none, uh, yeah. you know, or, or um, some sort of a wolf where there are none, where there have never been indigenous to anywhere in this area, or wild dogs, and, and somehow they don't have the the wherewithal to kill the wild dog, which is, uh, from what I understand, a part of the protocol of things are, like this are, are, are happening. This is when you start getting into these creatures. Um, yeah. It's a very sad thing because it, by the implication of that, and this is another reason why well, I think I'm blacklisted. I speak in absolute terms because all the evidence is pointing one way. I'm not going to sugarcoat it to not hurt people's feelings or I'm afraid to get in trouble. Mama used to tell me, tell the truth and shame the devil. And from every piece of evidence that I've seen, this is what's taking, not all of them, not all of them, because mm -hmm. there's foul play. There's uh, simple accidents. Uh, I, I, right. there was a few years ago, and I got that article I'm sitting in. Now I'm by myself, Tom. A few. Okay, <laughs> a few no, no problem. Ago, uh, this Pokemon game, Pokemon Go, which was used to map out the United States uh, in places that, you know, federal officers couldn't go legally. But there were people running over park police cars playing this game. I mean, it, it, it doesn't get any any more ridiculous than that. So to say that people are paying attention to where they're walking, especially out in the woods, if they're not used to being in this in these type of areas, you know, that's <laughs> that, that would be obvious. But uh, here we go. But, yes, I do believe that a lot of these cases can be attributed to these creatures. And like I said, the telltale signs are wild animals that aren't indigenous to the area. Um, they, they won't go into detail about how, how this person came up missing, yet it's not a criminal investigation. That makes, mm. you know what I mean? That makes no sense. Um, the, and then I'm talking about the families aren't allowed to have this information. So what, wow. what, what um, protocol or what is the reason they're giving these families that they're, they'll never see their loved one again? It yes. just, I mean, it, it, when, I, when I heard all this kind of stuff and it, it just kind of, uh, you know, the, the attitude towards it is, oh, well, this is what happens. Let's talk about the next cool story in Bigfoot. That's when I kind of lost my taste for it mm. um, because it, it's nobody really, uh, and there's a few out there. I can't say no one, mm -hmm. but not enough people are being 100% honest about what, not only what's taking place, but the hows and the whos of it. I liked your friend Bigfoot in Germany. He he had some really interesting yes. uh, observations. Yeah. He's a combat army sniper, highly decorated, and he's also a uh, minister of the word of God. Um, he was a uh, part of the delivery. I know, I, know, I know a lot of people don't necessarily agree with it, but he was in the delivery ministry. He actually went to school for that after he became a minister because that's what he was running into, to which I, I would tell anyone, just read your Bible. It's it's us you know uh, it's it's nothing that you need special schooling for you need faith right. and an understanding of the word of god okay i, 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 can't, I can't find the picture i saved it that's Man. okay hold on to that we we've yeah, come I'll up on our two hour mark here so this is a wonderful time for us to take a break the we're going to come back with brother d dawes with further discussion on the top topic of missing persons here in the United States and the areas that he knows that are around these different Bigfoot sightings. And we'll also have some, some questions about other areas uh, when we come back from the break. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope brothers and sisters, you'll stay with us uh, with our special guest, brother D Doss from the Bigfoot Dogman Research project known as BDRP Supernatural YouTube channel. He's a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about all things Bigfoot, Dogman, and Paranormal tonight. But all glory and praise still goes to the Lord Jesus Christ because uh, he's still greater than all this stuff, whatever it is, whether it's physical, supernatural, or a combination of both. So please do not be afraid. <laughs> Jesus is with you. Call on Jesus. Greater as he is in you than he that is in the world. And we're going to be back to discuss much more on this topic, and we're going to try to wear him out with our questions. And I'm also going to ask you in just a little while when we come back from the break, 
in the chat to uh, field your questions also to uh, Brother D. Dawes. As Sister Lisa, be yes. before we take off, I just mm -hmm. sent you uh, that picture if you want to show the folks because uh, to me. Yes, we'll do that as soon as we come back from the break. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I, yes, ma I want to I I have them come back so they can see some of the things that we're talking about. But let's go stretch our legs, ladies and gentlemen. Get yourself a fresh beverage. Come on back right on the flip side of this break with Brother D. Dawes, Sister Angel. And Brother Ben on Late Night with Lisa and Friends, right after this.
Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Glad that you were able to return after the break here with Late Night with Lisa and Friends. And I have my guest this evening is Brother DDoS from the channel BDRP Supernatural YouTube channel, which stands for the Big dog man research project and we are talking about all things paranormal this evening as well as bigfoot and the dog man and other sightings and things of a supernatural nature and we just prior to the break got on the subject related to that which was the missing persons here in the united states and brother doss had shared some links with brother ben he's in the process of trying to get those up for you guys to see the uh, images that he wanted to share with us concerning this topic. So, Brother Doss, were you able to make it back here to the? Yes, ma'am, I was. Sorry. Okay. All right, just to make sure because we had checked in a little bit earlier and you were still silent. So, I wanted to make sure that we hadn't lost you. Not at all. Uh, now, do you remember where we had left off where we were talking about the missing persons? We had put the map up and we were yes. talking about. Okay. Um, I just sent you the article in which I was referring to about the. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers, and I believe it was 1973. I found the article, not to call myself a liar, but uh, man, that's real small printing. Um, <laughs> 1975, so I was close. 1975, and uh, mm -hmm. and if if you want uh, to show the folks that's in the chat now, I'll figure that part out. But yes, and in, in 1975, uh, and it's in big bold letters: "Elusive Bigfoot gets official recognition by the U.S. Army." So this is uh, some sort of natural beast. And then the, the connotation of it being a spirit, I believe, is absolutely correct mm -hmm. as well, because there are those spirits out there that will latch on to people's interests. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a lot of people don't understand, but our, our overt interest in, in, in something can be, you, like you say, Sister Lisa, they, they can use whatever they want. And fear. Yes. Like and then, the movie It and the book It. And uh, by the way, mm -hmm. Stephen King yes, was uh, par part of the cult that my friend's family was in. Yeah, he was very close personal friends with her high priestess grandmother. And so what he writes about um, is what he knows about because he's all up mm -hmm. into that stuff. And um, that, that, the book It and, you know, the movie, if some people, like I, you know, I watched the original when I was a kid, uh, you know, and I read the book. And as much as uh, you know, it's not a it's not a godly uh, piece of uh, piece of writing at all, especially the way that it ends in the novel. Um, it it reveals what I really do think how they operate. I've even heard some people just, uh, claim uh, this is kind of I have some ver you know verification of this based on my friend's experiences and things she's seen that I don't know maybe the default state of these spirits is a, is a, is a black spider, like what they actually look like. I've heard some people claim that, and it's interesting because that's what he put in the movie. But yeah, they, they shape shift. So I agree. I agree mm -hmm. that that's what it's like. What we call a thought form, a tulpa, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll just have this discussion with a, a brother from Chicago, a very good friend of mine. Um, the ability for them to physically manifest, uh, I honestly, don't believe. And it's just my thoughts, and I, I'll base this on what I've read in the Bible, and. I'll, I'm not one of those guys. Oh, I've read the Bible that you hear those, <laughs> but uh, there's only one instance that I can remember of them taking some sort of a physical form. And that's when the brothers, the uh, exorcists came in and, and tried to cast out the demons from the man. And he, and he said, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who are you? 
it, it, the Bible tells us he ripped those men's clothes off and put pot knots on their head, basically. So mm -hmm. uh, that's also another dangerous thing. And that's really why I, I immediately regret it when I started talking about the delivery ministry, because uh, I, some of them have been found in error. They look at it as if it's like, you know, part of demonology. They, they're not they don't have a foundation in the word of God or our Lord Jesus Christ. Or they, they, or they claim you can be possessed as a believer, like possessed as a believer. That's one thing that they get so off, I think. And I never knew actually, because how can you occupy? Um, exactly. You know what I mean? Like uh, exactly. attachments, so yes. You can't bind the strong man that is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Strongest of them all. Yeah. I, I do believe that a believer can be oppressed, vexed. Oh, yes. Harassed. But all of that is external. It's not internal. So if they're born again, they cannot be possessed, but you can be influenced and you can enter into agreement with these spirits that give them access to your life. So you have to learn, first of all, how to renounce stuff. This, this stuff is real. And if people have entered into demonic agreement, you have to own it. You can't play like you didn't do it. You know, like if you, if you're a believer and you, you went to a, a witch, cause that's what they are a soothsayer to get your palm read or your fortune told or to get some juju put on somebody because you wanted them to fall in love with you and all that mess that people do. Uh, you have to renounce that stuff. You had no business doing it to begin with. And then you have to learn how to close doors and portals that you may have opened. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to show you if you've opened any doors or you've you've entered into some demonic agreements and you begin to renounce it, plead the blood of Jesus over it, ask the Holy Spirit to bring those things back to your remembrance, close those doors. This is real. This is not, you know, this is not a game. Amen. And and th th on that note, if, if I may, I, I can go and start at the poltergeist story. Um, this was before. Of course, I fell to my knees and the Lord showed me the purpose he had for me, uh, no matter how much I wanted to fight it and denied it. But uh, th these children and uh, I was my girlfriend and I got a house. We we're engaged, but we were living together, living in sin, as the old folks say. Um, she was not a Christian. Her, her family uh, grew up in the uh, mortuary business, the funeral home business. And there was, I guess, no room for the Lord in that. Uh, but, but suffice it to say, the kids, uh, hers in particular, started watching this ghost hunter stuff. And even though I, I would be considered a, a, a passenger Christian or, or whatever they call it, uh, I believe I believe the Lord Jesus Christ was the only way and all that stuff. But I had no rooting in the word of God. I could quote it all day long, but I didn't even really know what I was quoting and why. But these kids were watching this spooky stuff, right? And it was a big no-no. They all got grounded, but then they would keep doing it. It was a perpetual thing that would happen no matter what kind of punishment they got. So the last time I caught them uh, watching it, I actually sat down and watched it myself like an idiot. On top of all this, this basically Gnostic stuff I was looking at, trying to figure out the secrets of the world. Um, I watched this episode where this gentleman owned a restaurant. He was a country singer. Uh, I, I forget the name of it or the state, but he owned this restaurant and beneath it, they had, it was an old building. They had a, an old well where the uh, river ran up this man-made uh, slough. We call it down here. And they would draw water up from this well. They called it the portal to hell. They had on there this EVP and, this EVP was so clear. I, I've, I've heard stuff like that before, and I figured it was P.T. Barnum ridiculous tricks, you know. Them messing around with sound and the, the, the EVPs where they flipping through the radio station and the, the announcers just happened to say two words that seemed like they went together and they'd infer the rest. But this was an actual voice saying very, very wicked stuff. And me being me, being an investigator, I wanted to poke a hole in it. And I listened to it so much, but I, I was enthralled by it. It, did, it. it, to me, proved that there was a spirit world, you know, and I knew there was a spirit world. But this, this is proof. And these stupid people on the show, like, put it in this hour long block. 
and there's so many atheists running around, but they're not dealing with that. If, if, if this wicked demon is saying all this stuff, then why aren't you including that in your argument against Christ? How, you have to explain that first. And that's coming from their side of the fence and mopping. But anyways, I open myself up to that. And I started watching this ghost stuff. Now, mind you, this supernatural activity was going on before. But when I gave it my attention, that's when everything just grew exponentially. That's when the manifestations happened. That's when the sleep paralysis happened. I was getting sleep paralysis again for the first time uh, since I was a kid. And I could set my watch to it. It was every night. I was working on overnights at this distribution center while going to school full time during the day. Um or actually part-time at first. And I took a full-time schedule because I thought I was Superman or something, but I would come home early in the mornings, get about four hours of sleep if I was lucky. And uh, the sun would just start to come up as I was going to sleep. I don't know if that's significant or not, but every morning I would fall into sleep paralysis. Uh, so much so that I would, I would tell my, my, fian my ex fiance at the time to just sit in the room with me until I fell asleep. Um, and the horrible things that would happen and that I would see in the sleep paralysis, I wouldn't wish on anyone. Uh, but I started reading into it and I saw that it was a demonic attack. And that's when I began praying. I don't, I don't believe that I, I actually repented of what I've done because again, I'm a dumb Okie, but I started talking to the Lord again. A couple of weeks into that, everything just started. That's when the pictures were rocking on the wall plastic bowls would fall out of cupboards that were closed and rotate on the ground until somebody stopped it. Uh, as I was in the sleep paralysis, one of the boys was home sick and said that he saw two shadows, one as tall as the, as tall as the height of the ceiling. And the other one was uh, as short as a baby run out of the cupboard. He heard the cupboard open, which was something we all heard. And he saw these shadow beings run down the hall and into the bedroom where I was sleeping. And of course I'm in the grips of a terrible sleep paralysis that day. So it all came to this, this, head um it, it came to a point where we had to deal with it when uh she and i were watching tv one night and these things uh, the only word i can use is manifest it manifested itself in such a way that it looked like a solid black mass of a person walking from our bedroom and the kids bedroom into the kitchen adjacent to the living room where we were and uh, the insurmountable fear that I felt, it was incomprehensible. Um, in that moment, like, I, I could have breathed the wrong way and fell into hell, I thought. You know, it was like that. And I stood up and my eyes were drawn to them. And I say drawn, it was like something pulled me to a Bible that sat there that had dust on it. And I grabbed her hand and I fell to my knees and I, I prayed out to a gracious God. And asked him to forgive me for everything that popped in my mind in that moment that I've done from uh, 1984 up until that point. And when I opened my eyes, the world, it was, uh, I experienced a supernatural peace is the only way I can describe it. And uh, I, I belong to him ever since. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's no one who uh, who stands above the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, and I had no fellowship. I didn't even know what true fellowship was. Uh, when, when he peeled the scales back from my eyes, you know, I, I had a thirst for and, and a true want for spiritual things and, and knowledge from the word of God. Uh, the, I started sleeping on the couch because it was wrong that I was sleeping in the bed with a woman I wasn't married to. And, and, and this, if you knew the old man, that was <laughs> that was a John change. He took drinking away from me and he showed his power and in in, in that I didn't realize it. It had to be. I never was a drunkard. I was working, man. You know, I drank whiskey on the weekends and watch fights and all that good stuff. But uh, in his power and in his grace, he, he showed his majesty by taking that away from me and me not even consciously knowing it. Uh, you know, uh, huh. it was just a, it was it was it was a beautiful moment in my life uh, amen but then you go, moving forward from that this poltergeist experience that I, that I really do believe since I was uh he took me from formula to state real real fast but I, I really believe that short amount of time because I was still seeking 
these lies that the world was telling people. Uh, but I was doing it in conjunction with the word of God. I do believe that all that stuff out there, something that there, I think when you when you asked me what was compelling me to go back, it may mm -hmm. have been. That, but when I started praying against any demonic entity or any sort of deceit that may befall me, those creatures were still there. The spiritual stuff, the, the cameras uh, turning off, the battery being completely drained, that stopped happening. Um You'll hear a lot of these Bigfooters say, oh, well, you know, they use the they somehow can propel electromagnetic beams at us and infrasound, they call it. No, it's mm -hmm. spirit. There's some sort of a spiritual nature to this. And it's it's not coming from these beasts, no matter how intriguing they may be. It's this other side of it that may be even using these creatures. If, 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 if a demon can possess a bird or a dog, which there's cases of that, why can't it possess this beast? It's not made in the image of God. It does. I mean, as far as I know, it doesn't have a soul. Um, <laughs> it makes no sense why they're propped up as being this this missing link to. And that's how people look at it, sister. A lot of people, mm -hmm. they look at it like if they can solve the riddle of not only Bigfoot, but like angels that they call it dog man and all the rest of this weird stuff. then somehow they can validate evolution. Uh, which makes no sense. But there's the other side of it where our brothers and sisters are being deceived because they're not acknowledging all this other spiritual stuff. Now, maybe the Lord did this, did it this way. I don't know. But I experienced the poltergeist stuff beforehand. All these people going right. out in the woods are experiencing it after. Every right. single person I talk to, I, and that's why I don't have a lot of guests on my shows anymore because I told them what my questions would be. So I guess that negated the need to even call me, but mm. I'll get someone on the phone and I'll ask him. So when was the last time you saw stuff move around in your home? Oh, it's just like that. Oh, wow. Sorry. That was a train. Um, we live right across a rail, from a rail yard. Apologies. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, well, I, I, me, this would be a good time for I me. I know how that is. Brother. Um, we're having a problem with your link that you put in the hangout for, uh, brother Ben to pull up for the images that's actually for your uh, so just so you probably did a, a copy and paste not realizing it was for your computer so there's no way for him to pull that up it was from your C drive so he's going to need to get the link for the image that you wanted him to display or um, there's a there's, Google Hangouts really is again Google product really confusing there's actually two chats in Google there's a there's the interact the, the current call chat and then there's what they call the backstage which is another window. I'm not sure if you could paste it in there, but if it's too much frustration, don't worry about it. Um, we get another time. Yeah, I'm do silly. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll do. I have myself muted. Um, yeah. I'll silly no apologize for that. I just, I just noticed it. It's okay. It, it was just, a, you know, I, I do that stuff. There it is there, that window. Uh, if you see it, it popped up. It's for the video call. Uh, okay. You just but, um, paste it in there, and yeah. uh, and he'll grab it. So you ask people about the paranormal paranormal disruptions and activity that starts happening as a result of these Absolutely. sightings, and that's yes, always common. That it's like that's always a part of the case. Well, just from like I, like I said, uh, especially my first three years going out there into the woods, I don't see any more knowledge that I can learn from these things. So I started focusing on the people that are, are having these experiences, myself included. And there is a definite MO on their, on the side of the adversary and a criteria on the side of the people who see this stuff. Uh, at least 80%. And I'm just throwing a number out there. The vast majority grew up in a Christian home. Um, they, they were, quote unquote, forced to go to church. They believe in God, but and anything after but negates what came before. Um, these are the people having these experiences or they had just experienced some sort of traumatic event in their life, whether it be the death of a, lung, a loved one, uh, a divorce or some sort of uh, existential crisis of faith. I've noticed but, that, too. Uh, with have you? I mean, if, sister, yep. I'm telling you from the from from the perspective of the guy sitting in the chair doing the interview, there wasn't too long after I started noticing this stuff. And I started asking very pointed questions. And yes, ma'am, I would I would ask that of most people. 
Um, not maybe not that blunt at first, but now if someone calls, uh, I'll definitely start asking them very pointed questions uh, about their spirituality and the uh, so-called ghost activity they have. And without no, I mean, the the Lord showing me stuff. He'll give me a, a, a little bit of insight sometimes, and and. <laughs> Thank the Lord Jesus Christ for the helper that he left behind for us, right? Because there are people who want nothing more than to be a part of something that would lie to us, who mm -hmm. who want to warn folks about potential danger. I mean, I don't know if it's just a, a type of this creature that hurts people or all of them or none of them. And I'm attributing something to them that doesn't belong. But the if there's one percent, if there's one percent of danger or I'm sorry, if there's one 1% uh, chance of danger from these creatures, I think we have to address it as if it's 100%, because these are obviously creatures that aren't being acknowledged, um, not in a public way. They just acknowledge UFOs come from a, um, different, uh, a different galaxy. <laughs> the, the Pentagon acknowledged the, yes, the UFO phenomenon. Yeah. We do understand that they come from a different world, a different world, if you want to call that a different dimension and that dimension being uh, the world we cannot see and those beings being demons, sure. I was wondering if, uh, if any, I was wondering if any, if any, if any of you guys uh, could uh, weigh in on this or have any experience with it. And that is a lot of people that have these experiences, especially with Bigfoot, I, I've noticed they have um, very intense. I think they're artificial. Um, but very intense emotional feelings, like a great sense of love from these these creatures, uh, whether it be aliens or uh, Bigfoot. And I, I just wonder if you guys, and I think it's it, they're doing something, manip they're manip manipulating something in people. Uh, I don't know exactly what, maybe a part of the brain, I don't know. But I was wondering if you guys had any experience with that. I've not had any experience that, with that because even in um, even when I was one of those bad children, I still knew knew who I served. I was just in a rebellion. But I don't think it's a part of the brain they're affecting. It's their spirit. I do have experience with this. I've researched a lot into it and actually have talked to a member of MUFON, if you're familiar with that. They're the ones that have you know offices in every state of the union. And their job is to record UFO or alien uh, activity and phenomenon as it's taking place. They're more, they, they, they have their stuff together more than a lot of these news stations. So some uh, guy, I can't remember his name. God bless him, though. He found after working for MUFON for so long that they were shoving to the side how when people were uh, getting, what do they call it, uh, kidnapped is the only word that comes to mind because that's what it is, but abducted. Uh, when they were being abducted from their homes while they were sleeping, which is important, that they would call on the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and just like that, it would stop. They, he said he didn't know where it would fit into their current database, so he set it to the side as an anomaly until those anomalies started numbering in the thousands. So, again, I, I believe it's those lying signs and wonders. And if you listen to the people, just like you said, Brother Ben, when you listen to these people and they're talking about how loving the experience was, th they'll change their language. And I, I know we all know some of these people who are the proponents of this stuff. They'll start changing their language after years and start saying how they seeded us here. Now, see, they're the gods and we're just, you know, some backwater uh, planet that they come and they're, they're going to come here and save us. They're not going to come save us. Are you kidding me? If, if, if this highly advanced technological race of intergalactic beings was so benevolent, then let's take all the space debris that they say that we have to go through and the Van Allen's radiation belt that they would have to go through out of the way. What purpose would they have to come here and take the same organic tissues and materials from cows for the past hundred years? Not, not only that, but like they have to tra travel trillions of <laughs> uh, trillions of light years to the galaxy, and they just gotta see what's up that butt. You know, they gotta find up. Yeah. Over and over and over again. Never, ne saying. never, never get that cussed out. There's a, it's an eternal mystery. They must. Stop. <laughs> okay. They gotta see it. I mean, there's no other choice. Right? <laughs> it's, it's stuff like that. In the in the debris that they leave inside of people, they get it extracted, and they say it's a quote unquote foreign material. 
Well, they take it to another lab that's not involved with any kind of university or, or, or military installation, and it's always some sort of uh, metal that is indeed uh, uh, from this planet. So, to me, and then this is this is a point. I, <laughs> this is a point that I'm real, real heavy on because I don't want anyone, not even the heathen and pagan, fooled when this stuff comes to comes to fruition. Even though they will be, and I know it, the whole world won't be deceived by these things unless there's a cataclysm first. I believe there has to be some great cataclysm where the earth would be looking for some sort of a savior, right? Um, they're they're going to they're gonna curse God's name because God, the, the, our Lord and Savior is not going to come down from the clouds just yet. And that's when they'll launch this whole our Space brother stuff. They've already started greasing the axle for it. We got this uh, Pope who sits on his throne over there in uh, Italy and he's telling people Oh, well, they're free from original sin, so they would baptize us. We wouldn't have to baptize them. Huh? Like, what are we talking about? There's their observatory on the top of Mount Graham called the Lucifer, until everybody found out about it, they named it something else, called the Lucifer Telescope is the most powerful telescope on the planet. Why does this religious organization, who, who's obviously flourishing money, why would they need something that powerful? Well, it's also the, the symbology too. So it's it's you know you know, sure. you know about the one, we all know about this the one eye symbolism. It's a one the telescope is a one eye peering into the darkness. You know, mm -hmm. it's a <laughs> yeah. You what you what hey, you man. yeah. So and you know, it's a, yeah. Uh, ben doesn't want to say it, but I'll I'll broach it gently. Ben it, Ben has really uh, uh, pointed out a lot of incredible things. Uh, that has some very perverted and uh, 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 consistent symbology, um, especially when you know, look into what they practice in their rituals and what it always seems to come back to. And he has he's shown me, and it blows my mind, so many of these things that they do and the little, like, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge things like the list of the telescope and, and all of the little symbols that we, you know, might point out we see in the repetition and yes, in pop culture it all comes back to sodomy. And you, you couldn't be any more right. The, um, uh, and, and Ben, I, I, I could just tell, I could feel it, that you know everything that I know. So I, I'll leave an invitation for everybody uh, on this panel, uh, individually and together to come and do a show on my channel because oh, that, would be awesome. that would be awesome for, 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 for that. my uh, crowd to hear. But Ben, I know what you mean by the symbology stuff. It's almost like they're arrogant, like you said, Wink, wink, nod, nod. Look at us. We're so cool because we're Luciferians and the Goyim, the dogs, the, 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 uh, what did they call us? The, the, the Goyim, no. Yeah. They, they, they have all these names for us because we're just so dumb and they have all this, uh, knowledge that we, we can't access when they're on a road straight to a fiery hell. But they know that and somehow they know that and think that the demon that they worship is going to somehow, intervene on their behalf and it, it blows my mind but the symbolism is literally everywhere and and I, I believe that the lord has given us gifts and he's given us brothers like you and, and sister lisa to sound the alarm on this kind of stuff and, and people may say oh well it's not real uh that's just mm -hmm. kind of you putting two and two together where it don't belong no it's it's Wrong. happening way too much. All the, the one I'm only a believer because I that's how God reached me. I was a, I was such a nasty, obnoxious old atheist from the time I was seven, and my family were like actually saved believers who believe the true gospel. They didn't, you know, religiously abuse me to make me that way. I was like that myself. I just that was how I was, and I'm sure it was spiritual. I I, I connecting all of these dots. And having to deal with it in my own personal life with my best friend, who's like she's like you know my sister is the only way I can put it. Her family, her parents, that I, you know, I, her dad. I felt like he was like my my other dad. Uh, I, they were like right under my nose. They were they were these people that all these YouTube conspiracy theorists were were talking about. But like they didn't deny it. Once I like they like I mean they, these weren't like random dots I connected. This was like right in my face the whole time. She had a quote unquote uncle Bob from Langley. He was a CIA handler for her family. And they, they admitted, they laughed. They thought, oh, finally you Whoa. figured it out. We knew you would. But let me tell you this. They, uh, I would see the spirit speaking through her. 
and and here's it. I don't know what they the spirits uh, these these demons and the fallen ones tell the puppets or little meat puppets, which is what these people are uh, in terms of how they're going to escape judgment. I don't know, but what I do know is that at times uh, certain like little jokes or puns would uh, would be made like by my friend or her family, where the punchline was ha 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 this per like this person I'm inhabiting your 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 friend or you know whatever. They're gonna rot in hell, and there's nothing you can do about it. And they wouldn't be saying that to me if they knew that that was the end of like like if they knew that what they were doing and what they were involved in, like that that was their ultimate end. It was like this this thing was speaking through them at the moment. The punchline was always mm -hmm. re reveling in the and in, in their in like you know how lost uh, their host was. And um, so I, I you know and I, I don't really know exactly how what they what the what lies they've believed i think it, it varies but i i know that uh that the, the the spirits uh take great pleasure in the fact that uh that these people are lost and they're just used that they can use them to do all of these things and degrade them and make them you know uh the awful things that they participate in um because i think you know, they, and I, I mean i don't think i know they hate us they, yeah. they hate the very fact especially and I, I know everyone on this panel and i know everyone listening knows this but maybe somebody will be lucky enough to s stumble across sister lisa's channel who doesn't know believers and people's filled with the holy spirit are being attacked in my opinion probably like no time in history except for when when the helper first ascended in the, or the helper was brought down to us when jesus ascended into heaven um uh th there's no way around it uh it's a battle. Uh, Lisa and I were talking about that warfare. People, you know, they equate it to uh, uh, sending out prayer chains and, and praying with folks who are sick and all that. That's beautiful. And that's required of us. But there's also mm -hmm. warfare. We have an enemy. We're in, we're in the right. trench against that enemy 24 seven trench warfare is the most horrid, terrible type of warfare. There's ever man's ever done. That's when technology met, you know, horseback riding. We got planes with Gatling guns attached to them fighting men on horses. It was terrible carnage. That's what this is as far as, in my opinion, as far as uh, what I and my fellow soldiers have to endure. People who are Bible literalists who don't play these weird little games with God where they got one foot in and one foot out. And uh, just being down here in southern Oklahoma with all this spiritual nonsense going on, plus being involved in the Bigfoot field where people are not only self-deceived, but they got the, the adversary out there just whispering lies to them and leading them vain to vain imaginations. The yes, vain imagination. And a lot of it is itching ears as well. Um, and the, the, the more and I'll, I'll tell you this and it'll kind of put it mm -hmm. in perspective as far as my involvement in this Bigfoot field. I know a lot of your listeners, uh, a lot of my listeners for that matter, they're going to say, well, why are you in this field if you are a Christian? Here's why. The first time I ever said the words, I am a believer, a born again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ on my show, because I was timid. Uh, I, I, I told Lisa backstage, or not backstage, but earlier, how, uh, how this subscriber, he had just lost his father. And we, we had fellowship again. I had no fellowship then, um, no true fellowship. And I hadn't talked to him for months and I knew something was wrong. And his dad had died. Uh, he, had, he was talking to him while he was in his garden and, and he lived in the country in Kentucky. And he saw ambulances going out there. And that was the only house out there because it was, you know, the house was so far apart. By the time he got back to his dad's house, they were putting a sheet over him. Um, and he just fell mm. apart. He just... And uh, mm. he, told, he, he was telling me how no one, no mortal, only the Lord could lift him out of that. He's a business owner yes. and everything. And he got that spirit of, 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 of sorrow and that spirit of heaviness on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of a conversation where he's explaining this, tears rolling down my face, he stops and he says, the Lord uh, just told me this. I don't know what it means to you, but don't be Gideon. Um, and for anyone who knows <laughs> Gideon and how he started. So the, basically... Don't look at myself like I'm not worthy of, of the platform that I'm on and, and, and saying even his name, which I'm not worthy, but it's not my worthiness. Um, it's his. It's not my righteousness. It's his. Uh, people, especially these days, need to hear the truth of the word of God. 
no matter what platform you're on, no matter what you do for a living, we, that's what we're called to do. We're fishermen of men. So in that, the very first time I said those words, uh, the next morning, that night, that it was just, I could tell the adversary was pushing against me. I didn't necessarily know what I know now, but I knew to plead the blood against it and left me alone. But it came, it came, I remember when it came into my bedroom heavy, I was falling asleep and I felt that that wickedness right before I fall into sleep paralysis. Um, that's one of the, I think that is the first time I rebuked that stuff. But uh, the very next morning, I get a phone call that my daughter was bit by a pit bull. Uh, she got her leg bit down to the bone in a place that she's been since she was in diapers. She was visiting her grandmother at the time, uh, <laughs> my ex-wife's mother. And uh, we grew up out there. It's a, it's a neighborhood within in a rural area. All the families, we looked out for each other. Every every man was on the cleanup crew. We, we took you know pride in our neighborhood. And she went down this little narrow alleyway to a friend's house that I've known since high school. And this dog who, and, uh, and I'm not saying anything in spit bulls, it's, it's the owners or whatever. I don't even think it was the owners. So she went down this narrow alleyway at 11 years old and her got her leg bit by this dog down to the bone. And uh, when I got that phone call, I got the immediate feeling and knowing um, that this was warfare. That any time that I'm going to talk to somebody on a public platform who may be deceived or who may be on the fence that could potentially be deceived and are they're lost and they hear my faith and it somehow uh, uh, compels them to open the Bible and give the Lord a serious chance with no cynicism, criticism, uh, pride or judgment. Uh, they hate that. They, th these things are pure evil. They, they will use a child to uh, hurt its mother. They will use a mother to hurt its child. They have, <laughs> They have no respect nor morals, and I'll fight them with everything that I have and the Lord has given me, but we can't do it on our own. Uh, and that's that's a lot of where it's going now for me. I took the focus off these dumb creatures because, number one, there's not as many of them as what I think people believe there to be. Number two, nobody's going to go where they are anyways because they're in the deep, scary parts of the woods. And even a country boy like me who, who would sleep out on a roll sack or, or a army cot, you know, on a three day fishing thing, the hackles on the back of my neck stand up just going into these areas sometimes. But uh, the other stuff like uh, in the Old Testament. And I'm not too well versed in this, but I, I believe I get the gist of it. in the Old Testament before our Lord and Savior. Uh, sacrificed himself for the remission of our sins those who believe they had the scapegoat and they would send the scapegoat into the wilderness to azazel that was for their sins and then of course the lamb sacrificed to uh god almighty but the lord's been showing me stuff like that the azazel being in the wilderness uh these creatures that are found in isaiah uh, i don't want to get that verse wrong i had it i was reading it not too long ago but how they're sent to this deserted place uh it talks about the satyr and other strange creatures and it also says the screech owl was was there also uh that's where she found her nest and if you go back to the old strong's concordance or old school biblical dictionary before they were warped and, and, and contorted into something different that screech owl translates into the hebrew lilith uh which again I, I, you can take that or leave it but strange creatures nonetheless these areas i can't believe you just said that I, wow go on i'll have to i'll tell you after you're done man that's crazy you just said that um <laughs> okay i'm sorry i don't hopefully i didn't but uh no it's great it's just i was right, just I'm, last I'm, night i was say with lilith and the street gel but go on i mean because you're right on with the wilderness I, you're just like reading my mind right now <laughs> the lord kept taking me back to scriptures and where, where, where was the lord tempted where was our lord and savior jesus christ <laughs> Or uh, at least to us, I guess that was a temptation, but that's a conversation I could have an entire show on. Was Jesus really tempted right there? Because it seemed like he stood more than just strong and he's being taken through space and time on the top of a steeple. I'm sure he didn't follow Satan and Satan said, OK, here's here's where we're going next. Let's climb up this ladder and get on the top of this. Uh, you know what I mean? Let's let's climb this mountain and then I'll tell you the next thing. So. In that these fall, at least Satan at the very least, has the ability not to travel through time, but space and time don't apply to 
the spiritual as it does the physical, obviously. So all this stuff out in the woods with the ability to transform itself. There are people that put these, I've never taken plaster prayers out to the woods and I've never felt the need to map any kind of footprints or bring anything of theirs into my home because that would be a token to a false God. Would it not? They, they leave uh, what they call gifts out for them. They'll leave apples and stuff and they'll come back to the area and the apple looks like it's been bit by something with a mandible jaw um, and they look at it and say, oh, wow, look at th th this creature did this. Well, did it? You didn't see it do it. You know, you, you see what I'm saying? Uh, rocks are thrown at people. They have a, a tendency to throw rocks, um, boulders, even in some cases that weigh 70 pounds. But then again, going back to the poltergeist thing, why does a spirit, a wicked spirit only have the ability to throw plates and stuff? Why can't it throw a rock? So uh, the Lord started kind of showing me the deception from the spiritual end and from the man's end of it as well. And uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I go off on tangents. If you listen to my show. Um, <laughs> get right in. Get right right in. Yeah. That's okay. I, I wanted to, to mention something here. I wanted to back up a little bit. Uh, when you were talking about the telescope that the Vatican has uh, and how it's, you know, staring out into space, there was a, Old Baptist preacher, I used to put some of his sermons up on my channel when I when I first started and I wasn't bold enough to really talk a whole lot myself. Uh, I liked him. I just liked his fiery anointed preaching. And he since went home to be with the Lord. His, his name was uh, Pastor John W. Hill. But he had a sermon he did where he talked about uh, the roar of the lion, the lion that has roared. And he mentioned that there were articles about the roar of the universe the roar in space and he believed that the lion had roared this was about a decade ago where he said that uh there was a roar in the universe ben i'm just going to put it in the chat okay and uh he he had pre preached this fiery sermon about this because he was like, hey, the lion has roared. Y'all better get your stuff together because he has roared. And I personally believe when you were talking about the telescope uh, that they're listening. They have that thing pointed out. And I don't believe spaces at all what we've been told. I believe we live in a closed system. And that there's a firmament, and then above that, the heavens, just as the Bible described. But that hey, man, they know I'm he's he's listen. coming. They know that he's coming, and they're trying to get a jump on when when he's about to step forth from. I always say from eternity into the present. And one of the articles is about ten years old when they first mention it. I'm just going to read a little excerpt here. So you know I'm not making it up. I, I was I was excited to go look this up when I uh, heard him preach on this. But this is on uh, space.com. It says the mystery roar from far away, space detected. Long Beach, California. Space is typically thought of as a very quiet place, but one team of astronomers has found a strange cosmic noise that booms six times louder than expected. The roar, now this is what they're calling it, is from the distant cosmos. Nobody knows what causes it. Of course, sound waves can't travel in a vacuum, <laughs> which is what most of space is. And, you know, that's what they always putting out there. Their, <laughs> their little webs. That they're, they're, nonsense. Little spins. they're nonsense. That contradicts uh, every piece of information contradicts the next. <laughs> It contradicts what they just said. They said they heard they heard the roar, but now sound waves can't travel in space. Well, which is it? Or at so, least so they can't. That's a black hole, too. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> and that yeah. is, uh, it's, uh, it's a roar. It's just, it's a screaming roar that goes on for, uh, it starts and it stops. But, I mean, it sounds like a voice projecting. Man. And then, now that one, that little excerpt was from an article about 10 years ago now, almost 11, really. And then I just found this one on their same website. 
um, space.com. I put both links in the in the chat. Space Roar, NASA detected the loudest sound in the universe, but what is it? And the, like I said, the, that preacher had the theory that it was the lion of the tribe of Judah Amen. and that he was coming. Boy, <laughs> and I think I right. think they got that telescope trying to get a jump so they can get down in them bunkers and them wow. <laughs> things that they have built right. to try. Listen, the Bible says they're going to say, to the mountains fall on us and to the hills cover us and hide us from the face of the lamb, the one who sits on the throne. So that's paraphrased, but I'm sorry, brother, you broke up. Could you repeat that? The face of the one that sitteth upon the throne and the wrath yes. of the lamb. Did you get to see that yes. video? Did you? The one that I, I kind uh, of put together? Yes, like, I, I played I played some of Yes, I did. Uh, that's awesome because, I mean, um, the one from the channel that, that I sent you on your phone, Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Awesome. Cool. I appreciate that. Uh, that's, again, like where I've shifted to. You know what I mean? Um, just watching that video and seeing the comments of people getting hyped and amped for our Lord's return. <laughs> man, that's a different type of excitement. That's not standing in line waiting to go on a roller coaster. That's us going home. Let me say one other quick thing. I had I had preached a sermon about, oh, gosh, what was the topic? I, I don't know. I don't even remember what the topic was, but I mentioned how... You know, I yearn, even though I don't want to see anybody go to hell. That's not what I'm looking for. I just want to see the justice of God. Do you know what I mean, brother? I'm not talking about judgment. I'm talking about the justice of God, the eschatology that that we have been that has been hidden from us by some of these scholars that know they're lying. And the uh, what is it called? The, the eschaton. Of, of his kingdom, right, here Amen. on earth, and the, administ the administrator of absolute justice and righteousness. And I had said, you know, I, I was just yearning for that. And I said, you know, to myself, I just said it out loud one day when I was thinking about this. I said, Lord, where have all the cowboys gone? <laughs> now, the reason I said that was because when I was a child, I had a fascination for cowboys. They had a lot of Western movies. Cowboys and Indians was what we used to play. Everybody wanted to be the cowboys. Nobody wanted to be the Indians. You know, they got abused. <laughs> but we would play that as a child. And one of my favorite characters when I was growing up, when I was a little child, was Calamity Jane. I loved her fringe jacket, and she had two six-shooters that were chrome with pearl handles. And she could use them. And I liked, liked that character. So I, I'll never forget, uh, I was just sitting here, I was going, Lord, where have all the cowboys gone? And I was really actually thinking about the riflemen because I had just got through watching a lot of the, the series again. And I love that rifle. I love how accurate he was with the rifle. But what I really liked about him was he show, was. By the way. Sorry. Oh, okay. that was my no, favorite. that's all right. I grew up like the same thing after church. <laughs> we went home and ate, and I watched. Uh, uh, John Wayne shoot bad guys and all that kind of stuff. So, Yes. I like the rifleman because he wasn't looking for a fight. He just wanted to raise his son, live his life in peace. He built his, built his little uh, ranch and, and he'd come to town and get his supplies. But there was always somebody looking for a fight, want to stir up trouble. You know how the devil is, those mess stirrers, right? And I, I liked that his character was not, you know, a vengeful person. He, it wasn't that kind of thing. And so when I was sitting here thinking about it, I said, Lord, where have all the cowboys gone? Uh, he said, well, don't you ever forget my son is coming back riding on a white horse. Wow, that's phenomenal. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Why had I never put those two things together? You know, with all the technology, and you ain't never going to convince me that heaven, the kingdom, any of that stuff's going to be born. Where do you think the devil got all this technology from? Mm. He ripped it off from heaven when he fell. I don't care what nobody says. And I think I that, that he heartily. thinks, I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry. I believe that wholeheartedly. Uh, there's evidence. Yeah, I think he <laughs> thinks he can beat God because he has mastered all the technology he fell with. But he forgot he's a creator and he can make a hundred thousand things in the next five seconds after he fell. I think he forgot that. But getting back to my premise, and when he said, don't forget that my son is coming back riding on a white horse to exact justice and vengeance. 
And I was like, you know what, Lord? I said, that's right. Why is it that he's coming back on a horse with all? He could come back in a space rocket or all these different things. He's coming back. Yeah. I mean, why a white horse? Brother, do you have any suspicions about that? Uh, uh, Yes, ma'am. And uh, (laughs) I've never shared this outside of my family and very close friends. But the, the night after, I fell to my knees. Or I'm sorry, the morning after. Um, it may not have been directly after the morning after, but it was just as big of a spiritual experience. I had, I guess what some people call a vision. I, I don't I don't know from that. So I call it an extremely realistic, vivid, vivid, vivid dream. Um, I was on, I was on the road horses a lot, being in Okie Bama, working on livestock auctions and stuff like that. I was, uh, I came to on this horse and it was, it, and it was like, it was a whitish type horse. And I looked in front of me and there was like uh, uh, hundreds of millions is how I described it. it. It was people as far as the eye could see. And they had on this shiny armor and the, the, the like white kind of like uh, old school type cut shirts right below the waist. And um, we're all sitting on these horses. I'm like, what's going on? But there's this man. On a, on a white horse, and as far as I could see, there was nothing but people. But when I saw this man, I couldn't take my eyes off him. He's going back and forth on this horse. And he, he's the only one of us that was wearing a different color. He's wearing a, a, a red, like some sort of red vesture or something of some kind. And I'm like, what's going on? And you could feel, I don't know if you've ever rode a horse before, but you can feel under the horse if you're stepping on something solid or if it's mud. And it was like we were in mud. Right. Like, the horse, as it was standing there, I mean, they all got restless as soon as this rider came on. And all of a sudden, this loud, thundering crash, this boom and uh, of thunder that I could feel inside me happened. And he reared back on that horse. And like I said, this was hundreds of millions of people. And that's the only thing I could equate it to because it was more people than I've ever seen in one spot. And it's, it's like this ground that we're on rose up and then fell really quick. And as I'm watching, the, the, the man the man with the red vesture on was the first one to go down. And as this as this wave is coming, I can see that the ground below, below us is kind of giving way. And in my mind, I'm not putting any of this together. I hadn't cracked the Bible open in I don't know how long at this point. But but uh, sure. huh. as it was time for as, as it was coming closer for me to go to the same place everybody else was, there was this calmness and this this assuredness that what was about to happen was right and <laughs> as the sky cracked open i could see and that's all i could see even though, though there was hundreds of millions of people in me in front of me i could see the lord jesus christ leading us and i woke up um wow uh, that, and i've never shared that outside of family but when he comes and, and just the feeling I got looking at him, there's no bomb, there's no tank, there's no amount of bomb, <laughs> nothing, nothing. On that, white, he will, he will, he will rightfully judge this world and its gods. And there's nothing yeah. they can do about it. There's nothing they're yeah. going to be able to do about it. I, I, I understood. And I, I, I forget where it is now. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Revelations mm-hmm. 19. I quoted from Revelations 19. Not even, I, I don't think I've ever read that far at that point through revelations. Mm-hmm. Um, I really do understand th- that we're not supposed to wish for that great and terrible day. But when right. I see our brothers and sisters around the world being killed for their faith and love of our Lord and Je- our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and mm-hmm. children being crucified in the Middle East, um, something mm-hmm. stirs inside me. And yeah. it, it's not it's not it's not a hate. It's It's anger. Because it's not just one group of people. Right. It's right. not one race of people. It's mm-hmm. the world. They criticize yep. and mock him for yes. what he's done for all of us. Yes. You know, uh, one of the puns that uh, my friend's uh, uh, witch mother said to me that I have racked my brain over for a long time, but I think uh, um, just now it started to make more and more sense. Um, she said, uh, I hear you don't need grapes to make kosher wine. And I was like, it was wow. so weird. And now I, <laughs> the wine press, you know, yeah. of, uh, of, that's what, and I, I think that that's, it, I, that's one of those wicked little puns though. 
right? Yeah. That that I was talking about that 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 you know, just as somebody who I'm barely even a believer, but the Holy Spirit was moving in me so much to get me to that point. Uh, he was showing me things. So I was in a pretty serious situation with these people realizing I knew what was up and ended up, turned out they were after my kids, which I've talked about in uh, other videos. Uh, and God protected me immensely through that. And I'm, I, I had never felt anything like it in my life, the difference between have, knowing and having the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, guiding me and telling me what to do with like literally like there's no biblical knowledge, just, you know, an awareness of the different things in scripture, but um, you know, at one time, my friend was moving things through their mind, doing her little parlor tricks. And uh, God told me to start praying under my breath where she couldn't hear me to make it stop, to show her that she, it wasn't her power because she couldn't figure out why she couldn't keep making this thing spin like she normally could. And um, then, you know, I would pray louder and louder. And then she realized that I was praying against it. She'd never seen me pray. Uh, and, and and that was show her, that's not your power. But this is... Um, I, I know exactly what you guys mean because as much as uh, I, you know, I, I look at the, I, I know other times where I'll cry. Uh, one weird example, but uh, you know, trying to go back and listen to some of the worldly music I used to like, like white zombie or something. I started crying for Rob zombie one day because I felt so sorry for him. As far as I know, he's lost as the day is long. And um, I could see the, the, like I can see the things that God intended for these people to be like the, 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 the incredible gifts that he, you know, gave them and right. seeing that they, they turn and they, they decide to use uh, all of the, uh, you know, their, their talents or their, you know, their intelligence, whatever to, 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 to hate God, to, to, to really just, you know, uh, you know, be, be an adversary to God their whole life and, and to revel in it. And I see this, it just how sad it is. Uh, that you know, you know, God knows most most of the people He ever created so lovingly, where He knows every hair on their head. Uh, they're going, you know, they're going to they're going to reject Him, and He He made it so simple, you know. And uh, but when I, you know, but the, the I can't I think about it, and I I always think because you know I, I'm still not sure where I stand on on the rapture timing, but like part of me, you know, uh, wants to. Like I would like to, to, to stay here just so I can see it all unfold and watch as people, like just to see like how as, as everybody is seeing more and more of God's word coming true and they're still you're rejecting still it. That baffles me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, the Bible also tells us that we're, we're, we're mm -hmm. the pagan and the unbeliever, you know, yep. if, when, when we give them the gospel and they turn us away, we're supposed to dust off our clothes and clean off our yep. sandals and keep them moving and God will take care of, of the rest That's of right. them. They've, right. they've, been, they've been offered life, but they choose that. He, he leads everybody to water. Yes. Come yeah. drink freely. Even before yeah. that. And, and I know the Bible says we're not supposed to wish for that great mm -hmm. and terrible day. Right. But man alive. Like I cannot wait, you know, come up hither. <laughs> I can't wait. Well, it's you the know, truth of it. I'm sorry, Sister Angel, I wanted to point out something Michael said in the chat, which is right where I was going. He literally almost typed it the moment I was just about to say it, which is, you can't stay here, Sister. We got an appointment, and that's to attend the wedding, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Yeah, we got to go. We got to go eat some vittles <laughs> with the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, I just said, tell says, me what's going to happen to my cats if I get... Out of nowhere. <laughs> my, my money my money on people surviving through the great tribulation first of all all the believers who are pointed to for sure because many of them i think i think they're gonna be just like the christians everybody's like, oh what are we gonna do i think god's gonna empower those believers to be bold fierce witnesses they're gonna see such amazing things going on and they're gonna have the intestinal fortitude to walk right up and say go ahead take my my head off because i am not gonna worship the damn beast i'm not gonna take the mark i'm not doing none of it so let's just let's i just want to go be with jesus just like they did when the the romans said they, they thought they were crazy like laughing at them. look at these crazy christians they are running to their death and you know what it was a witness to every pagan that was paying attention that wasn't drunk that wasn't Amen. high and they said 
I wouldn't die for that stone god over there. Look at them running to their death. There must be something to this Jesus. Who is this Jesus that they will run to their death and it's going to be a bold witness to the world as to the living God. Who's the real God and who ain't? Amen. Amen, sister. And the thing about it is, it's not happening right now. Yep. I mean, you got this country boy bookworm, you know, who, who the only thing he lauded over anybody was his intellectualism. That, that swiped away. Multiple tragedies throughout life. But I'm singing his praises on the worst day. They don't understand. And we talked about this, Lisa, because you said the second part is the free for all, right? Because you got, I mean, you, you, got, you got the Holy Spirit. Oh, it, it, we just go with the flow. It, 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 it's, it's not okay. my show or broadcast. It's the Holy Spirit. So that you do it yes, as the Lord wills. Yes, ma'am. Sister Lisa and that brother in the chat, I'm not, I'm not in there with you, brother, but God bless you. That is taking place right now, people. It's taking place right now. I believe these prosperity preachers, the name it, claim it, blab it, grab it crew that 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 are, are completely consumed by the spirit of this world who are leading our brothers and sisters and potential brothers and sisters down a road to hell. And, and that's something that nobody talks about. There is a hell. They'll acknowledge heaven, some of them, but they won't talk about hell. They got a judgment for all these people who change the language uh, from from baby into fetus and oh. to abortion they have oh. a judgment well, i say that all the time everyone in this world will be judged thank god almighty i will not be judged for my sins i'm going to the mercy seat of christ thank Amen. god thank unless you your righteousness uh, surpasses that of the scribes and pharisees unless you can name every prophet in that bible you can go from uh, from the beginning to the last amen Mm -hmm. And abide by it, not just not just know it, because there's a lot of intellectual, uh, 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 intellectualist Christians who go to college, never receive the Holy Spirit that I think they believe that they're doing good work while living in yep. sin. And since right. they know the Bible and they can quote it, that they're not going to go to that fire. They'll go to hell. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That, that, that hurts people's feelings these days. Yes. Nobody wants to talk about the book. Right. Let the Bible. Because what are they trusting in? It's what matters. Amen. What they trust it. And 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 that's like why I call it a trust fall. It's like a trust fall. Uh, because I can't think of another way to put it, to some people. Um, mm. but the, the thing is that they, they've even managed to change the to switch around the the, the meaning of imputed. So like I'll hear mm. people who are who are preaching a backloaded works gospel where yeah, works don't save you. But if your, you know, works are some, you know, unquantifiable level of bad or the ratio of good to bad is off, which, you know, the Bible never describes that. And if, I, I bet you, you can know for sure if God is a just God, uh, if there was some ratio of good to bad works you had to maintain to keep your salvation, he would have laid it out to the letter, just like he did in the Old Testament in all of the ritual law. Every, I mean, you, it's a tedious. That's how, how he would have laid it right. out so you could know that you were saved if, if right. it had anything to do with your works, but they've changed impu imputed to, to, to where they can somehow say that it, well, it, what that means is he's now mm -hmm. given me the ability to now be righteous and live righteously. Oh. No, imputed means vicarious. Blasphemy. That's the best way to put it. I no. tell people, no, it's vicarious sister. Yes. It's yes. substitutionary yes. debt. Everybody, excuse yep. me. I'm sorry. I, I have to, uh, every, Preacher worth his salt has mm. known that from Jump Street. Amen. That it, it is the substitutionary death, burial, and resurrection. That's why the Bible says when he was crucified, we were crucified with him. When he was buried, we were buried with him. And when he was raised, we were raised with him. It's a death for all right. men. All men. Right. It's in the book. As soon as people started implying things that, that the Bible's not saying and they'll take it and they'll filter it through their situation in life and their worldview and feed it to other people who are hungry for spiritual things. Because it's funny to me how atheists who don't have a dog in the fight, they won't talk about the devil. They'll talk about God. So uh, you, you know what I'm saying? We yeah. are accuse him. beings. We want supernatural answers because we were made by a supernatural spirit being everything that we know and all this space that they like to talk about, they take 
our attention off of us because we are the apple of his eye. Man is important. Now, the other day on the on the show, this guy, through the course of a conversation, he he said how number one that God didn't love him. Um, number two that how we're all monkeys. And Angel may have listened to that. That's when I kind of I didn't I didn't. <laughs> I'm an old country boy, like I say, and I, I got a natural fighter in me. But I knew, and I'm I, I'm not a good evangelist. I don't guess. I turned my focus on my brothers and sisters, encouraging and, and and lifting up. But when I hear this, I have to address it. I'm like, no, you've been you've been sold a false bill of goods. God is love. He loves you more than anybody ever has. And of course, there was nowhere to go intellectually. So he changed the subject. He went into space and started speaking all these scientific laws and principles as if it was printed in the Bible. Of course, me, the, the old man being an intellectual, the new man tapping into that and staring it right back to the Bible where it belongs, there was nothing he could say. That's when they get emotional. So again, these atheists and these pagans and these heathens who say that they don't care, that there is no uh, Jesus Christ, there never was, even though there's historical evidence all over the place to, to, deny, to deny their nonsense, they right. have a visceral reaction to the, the people who carry the Spirit of God. They have no choice because if you don't have the Spirit of God, you, you are neither hot nor cold, so, and you, so you're lukewarm. Mm -hmm. If you are lukewarm, you're more susceptible to the adversary because you already have a cynicism, especially if people have been presented Christ. Uh, right. I, I really think we're in a place in this era where he that now letteth let until he be taken out of the way. Mm -hmm. He's moving that hand of protection back. And everybody talks about God as love. Jesus ain't coming on that white horse, passing out cokes and hugs. In yeah, righteousness, okay. we doth judge right. and make war. War. Yeah, They'll yeah. never give yeah. him what rightfully he is. He has to take it. He has he's not to take him a choice. He's not going to sit down with some diplomatic uh, 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 presentation for him. What's that going to do? Mm -hmm. so and I'm these hard-hearted people, the, I mean, the, the more time goes on, like for me, I, I, well, seeing how the world is today, even without the, even without losing most of my family in a year, which was a big part of what made me realize that life was so painful and there was so much suffering that, that unless there was some guaranteed meaning and, and, and guarantee of something after this, that, that it was absolute, like it was the cruelest joke ever that we even exist to, to, to have families and, uh, and children and, and, you know, if, if we don't lose them in, in, in while we're here uh, alive, uh, all, we have no reason to think that that our love, which demands an eternity, you know, even has the promise of tomorrow, let alone the eternity that it demands. You know, the way you love your children, you want to be with them for eternity. And we can't even know if we're lost that, that there's going to be that there's that it's going to amount to anything but worm food uh, and our, our brief, puny little lifespans. You know, and that's how I realized that the only Genesis explained the human condition because it, it explained that we weren't originally created to know suffering and death, uh, to, to lose, you know, to, to, to have this, this love uh, for, for, you know, our loved ones um, and then and know what it's like to just, you know, to see them go on the ground and never know if we're going to see them again. Like, like Genesis explained the, the, the paradox of the fact that death is so uh, unbearable for us and lost yet, yet we, we uh, according to evolution all we've ever known is death so why should it be so unbearable still you know what i mean uh and 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 i knew that I, unless there was an answer like what the bible and only the bible provided that if my my child came up to me and asked me why she shouldn't just kill herself god forbid to mm. avoid the inevitable suffering that life promises and i and after what i've gone through losing a everyone that I loved most suddenly an unrelated race in the span of about a year, year and a half, this the same year I became a mother. So I, my child was born into a world devoid of all the people that had ever loved me, except my father and my aunt, like two people left. And I had a big family, a big loving family. And uh, I realized that there was no, like life could be so cruel. And then when you just, you think that it couldn't, it couldn't do the one thing left that would just totally break you. Because what are the odds of that thing happening after how does lightning strike three times in a week? Um, it'll do that too. There's no rules. And I, and I, there, there's no rules about that. And I realized why people even saw you would seek God. Cause I never understood that. I never understood why people even needed to know because I thought, well, you can't know. And what's the point anyway? I didn't get it. 
I didn't get it because I hadn't suffered enough. And I think a lot of people that are indifferent to, to the, the things of God, they just haven't suffered enough. And they don't really know how, mm. how, how bitter life can be, how painful. Now, you losing your mother like you did. I lost my mother, um, and I found that I was pregnant with my first child on, on, at her memorial service. And, um, uh, it, you know, and I know that's that you feel like an orphan for the rest of your life, no matter mm-hmm. what after yeah. you lose your mother and um and even that like how cool would it be that, to know that you exist and you can have a mother who makes you there's nobody that can make you feel loved like your mother and if you're not making your child as a mother feel that way um like you, that that is your purpose is to is to yeah. is to you know give the their child the kind of love that 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 will you know if they lose you they will feel like an orphan forever but if they're believers and 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 you were a believer like praise god my mother was um they have they have joy and a promise to see you again, but otherwise it's just it's abuse. It would be like whatever this meaningless uh, scientific materialist uh, creation or or existence where we just randomly came. It's like it, it would have to be a sadist, whatever force was behind it, because it didn't even tell us how we could know that there was a point to any of it. And 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 you know that I once I was confronted with the realities of satanic ritual abuse and all that stuff and even in my own life like i didn't suffer it but it was going on all around me it wasn't just my best friend who's was like uh, most of the kids i went to school with in the keys were involved in this um and uh you know i was i was uh, the child of believing parents and that's why they could not touch me that is what she told me uh i had they were, i was under their protection it was like a spiritual headship thing until i reached a certain age um, so they, that praise God, like think, cause they, I, you know, they did sp- send spiritual warfare after me, but see, the thing is now it, it to, to still reject was so patently obvious as the world is just careening into, into, you know, just chaos and, and the Bible gets proven true left and right, almost like they want us to know, you know, um, it, you have to be very hard hearted uh, because even me as somebody who had such contempt for, well, I say religion, but it was really just Christianity. Um, uh, I never really got my dander up about Hinduism, uh, you know, uh, I never fought a Hindu. Uh, I mean, so but, you never hear them talk about like Buddha, no, like all these people no. that follow Buddha are so dumb. Oh no, it's it's just that spirit of Antichrist. I've seen it and in front of it. So, but but the thing is, is um I was not willing to willfully lie to myself. I was deceived and self-deceived all my life. But once it was put in my face to such an extent that my only choice would t- to continue not believing would be to just uh, literally start lying to myself consciously. Uh, I wasn't willing to do that. And I, I, I see people that now I just wonder. The ones who are still not seeing it, they're still rejecting it. They're still coming. Oh, the Bible's just a bunch of forgeries, the Mesopotamia, Sumeria, blah blah blah. Like I see that so much now. Like how how uh, they have to be so like knowingly self deluded. Uh, they absolutely to, are, to and, and they're disingenuous as well. And this yeah. is how this is how <laughs> being from that world, you know, uh, priding myself, have, play, beating uh, uh, professors at chess. Like that means something. I know how to engage them in these types of battles. Next time one of these jokers comes up to you, say, okay, uh, what sources do you reference for the information that you just came by or that you just gave me? And um, I made all their arguments already by the time I was eight. Oh, really? I was saying all that stuff at eight. I was a scoffer and a a railer and give me something new. I had to like nullify all of that to get to where I am now. Uh, I was doing it before you were, you were still believing because your parents did. I was actively railing against Christianity in, in elementary school. So, you know, that's what I love. Uh, but that's what I try to do with, like, I try to reach oh, like so that. You came from the enemy's camp too. Cause I, I, I and that's yeah. all I was, my old man was in the enemy's camp. So I kind of know their tactics. And the only way that you will open their minds and their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ is beat them at their own game. That, that, that intellectual, uh, uh the yep. fiery darts that they'll shoot at you. And it, I want, this is something that you've all kind of touched upon and something that I kind of want to just put out there. Uh, it's about the end times and, and our roles, because there's no doubt in my mind, everyone on this panel is uh, my fellow soldier. This is what this is the faith that I try to attain. It's, in, it's Daniel chapter three, verse uh, verses 17 and 18. 
Uh, it, and of, of course, this is when Daniel is about to go through the fiery furnace. He's talking to Nebuchadnezzar. And I could just imagine, you know, him just sitting there stone face. Yeah. Just looking at him with no fear. Uh, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known to thee, unto thee, O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up because you know they're they're a part of the magi right and since daniel's the man you, you know they try their best to get rid of him so they see him and his, and his uh, comrades not worshiping as the king instructed and they go up to him well, you're not going to worship nope not gonna you can't make me do something about it <laughs> you know, that's the faith I want. And he said, even if he doesn't. So there's no doubt in my mind that they're strong. Exactly. Even, if he doesn't. Doesn't. Brother, even if he doesn't. Could I stop you right there? Yes, ma'am. Because you just gave me the perfect segue into something I've been wanting to do here on the channel. <laughs> I mentioned this last night on another broadcast. The Hebrew name for Abednego. Not that I'm into all that Hebrew name stuff. I'm just explaining who this person is that I'm about to talk about is Azariah, okay? Now, in the Apocrypha, there is a book called The Prayer of Azariah. Now, what's interesting is the perspective from this prayer is while he is in the midst of the fiery furnace being delivered by the Lord. <laughs> now, I don't know if, that, if that's not enough to make you run to go grab the Apocrypha to read it. I, I don't know what will, what will be. But I just want to read just a few verses from what he says, because people keep trying to say that this don't. Oh, it's not canon. It's not. I'm sorry. It was in the Geneva Bible, which predated the KJV. And it was in the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. And you are not going to oh, tell wow. me it is insignificant to have his prayer of what transpired while he was in the fiery furnace with those two other men. Now, his, 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 his chapter one, it's only one book, is 68 verses. I'm not going to read them all. I'm just going to read a few here. And they walked in the midst of the fire, praising God and blessing the Lord. Then Azarias stood up and prayed on this manner, and opening his mouth in the midst of the fire, said, Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, Thy name is worthy to be praised and glorified forevermore. For thou art righteous in all things that thou hast done to us. Yea, true are all thy works. Thy ways are right and all thy judgments truth. In all the things that thou hast brought upon us and upon the holy city of our fathers, even Jerusalem, thou hast executed true judgment for according to truth and judgment didst thou bring all these things upon us because of our sins for we have sinned and committed iniquity departing from thee and all these things we have trespassed and not obeyed thy commandments nor kept them neither done as thou hast commanded us that it might go well with us wherefore all that thou hast brought upon us Everything that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. And thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of God, and to an unjust king and the most wicked in all the world. And now we cannot open our mouths. We are become a shame and a reproach to thy servants and to them that worship thee. Yet deliver us not up wholly. For thy name's sake, neither disannul thy covenant, thou thy covenant, and cause not thy mercy to depart from us. For thy beloved Abraham's sake, for thy servant Isaac's sake, and for thy holy Israel's sake, to whom thou hast spoken and promised that thou wouldest multiply their deeds as the stars of heaven. Oh, excuse me, that thou will multiply thy, their seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand that lieth upon the seashore. For we, O Lord, are become less than any nation and be kept under this day in all the world because of our sins. 
neither is there at this time prince or prophet or leader or burnt offering or sacrifice or oblation or incest or place to sacrifice before thee and to find mercy. Nevertheless, in a contrite heart and humble spirit, let us be accepted. Like as in the burnt offerings of rams and bullocks, and like as in ten thousands of fat lambs, so let our sacrifice be in thy sight this day, and grant that we may wholly go after thee, for they shall not be confounded that put their trust in thee. And now we follow thee with all our heart. We fear thee and seek thy face. Put us not to shame, but deal with us after thy loving kindness and according to thy multitude of mercies. Deliver us unto, excuse me, deliver us also according to thy marvelous works and give glory to thy name. O Lord, let all them that do thy servants hurt be ashamed and let them be confounded in all their power and might and let their strength be broken and let them know that thou art God, the only God and glorious over the whole world. Now I'm going to stop right there. That was at verse 22. This is what he prayed in the midst of the fire. In I just want to add this real fast, sister. Uh, the Holy Spirit, our book says, brings us unto all truths. And the truth of the matter is, I've never read that book, but that's truth. And it registered within the Holy Spirit in me. That belongs in the Bible. It, I mean, in just Amen. what you read, Nobody can say that's an esoteric uh, writing out of context in that time. That sounds like someone who was accompanying Daniel while the flames are shooting up around him. The conviction, yeah. the, the uh, just every single word. The made, tone, made. Even probably the iambic pentameter. Uh, you know, you can always tell when it wasn't meant to be in there, like the Gospel of Thomas, right? You know what I mean? Like just right. everything about right. it, the spirit is written in. Well, Even the gospel of Thomas is a bad example. That that's his Gnostic. And no, that's what you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's saying know, you yeah, can tell from the tenor of that that it does not belong in the Bible. Absolutely. But yeah, that, honestly, like Thomas is just. I, I just found so it dumb. Not too long ago, and man, people actually believe that belongs. Yeah. In yeah, but see, this yeah. is my point exactly. You even see where it 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 touches notes of other scriptures and other yes. declarations in scripture, which is what scripture always does. Amen. Right. Yep. It has multiple witnesses. There's multiple witnesses. And that's and some anyone will tell you, like in, in computer technology, for example, uh in data integrity, you always have that data represented multiple times. So a perfect gets lost. It can be reconstructed with what's left. And the Bible is all about that. You see like they're called merisms where you'll see God will say one thing and then right underneath that, he'll say the same thing, but in a different way. And you see that pattern all through scripture, not just within a single sentence, but like, like uh, they're called inclusios in, in scripture where uh, like Paul will say one thing. And then a couple of chapters later, he'll sum it up by restating that same premise. So, you know, that everything right. he said in between is in the context of what he's talking about. And that's where people take things out of context. That's something that for me personally, that's one thing that God really helped me is it helped me to understand his word and, and know how to read it. Um, but I want to touch back on something you guys said before briefly that, and I don't, these aren't good examples, but one thing, uh, and I need, I know you guys know this, but uh, you know, I would pay attention. Uh, one thing I've been doing lately is paying attention more to our, the vernacular and like, like strange things that people say that, that make any sense uh, and try to relate back to what, what they really, I, I believe now they're actually, you know, dark sayings, if you will, like, like, like uh, these aren't good examples. So forgive me, but um, uh, if, Angel, you said like family jewels, for example, everyone's talked about family jewels. Yeah. What does that really mean? Um, another thing like, is like deadline, you know, like deadline, it's like deadline is like time and Satan is the, is the, Master, I think it's basically time, temporality, you know, God is eternal. He's outside of time. Where, so Satan, uh, all things fallen are, are in time. So, you know. You Amen. Know. I've never heard and, anybody with that same concept, but that's why that angel puts one foot on the sea, one foot on the land and announces that time is no more. Amen, brother. I'm sorry. I just. I, <laughs> oh, well, yeah. By the way, everything you're saying is like, whoa, it's like giving me. You're, Man, you're, you're expanding my thoughts. <laughs> um, Amen. It's the spirit within us, brother. It's, it's yep, the spirit yep. within all of us exactly. on here. 
It's like we're completing each other's thoughts. The other thing too is like, why, why would ever, why would anyone in their right mind ever say, "Well, I'll be damned"? You know, it's like, wh- wow. You know, it's like also or too, what the hell, right? Yeah. Or even taking the Lord's name in vain. You know, um, but there's all kinds of things like that. And I and I I, I meant to write this down because I had a bunch well, of examples. But go ahead. Then let me interrupt you real quick on that. When you said taking the name of the Lord in vain, do you know that I said that? And then, and brother, that's what you were just saying earlier, brother Doss. How all this stuff is going to be a witness against them on Judgment Day. Their their blasphemies, just everything, everything they've ever done, everything they've ever said. It's a witness against them. It builds a case, just like building a case. It's going to be a case against them on Judgment Day. But I wanted to say real quick, when they reach for the highest name, to to do the highest swear they can think possible. Across they don't cultures. call on Buddha. They don't call on Muhammad. They say Jesus Christ. Amen. And, I, and how wicked of a thing and how telling of a thing is that? It's getting to the point now. And and, and again, <laughs> I know I come off just because I have this dr- draconian way of speaking sometimes in this deep voice, uh, th- th- this, this modern world and the spirit that runs throughout it. He's going to say, oh, well, DDoS is a bully. He's saying it's this way or no way. Yeah, that's absolutely what I'm saying. It's it's his way or the highway to hell. It's simple. It, 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 the simplicity that's in the finished work of Christ is, is what Paul was talking about. And everyone on here in one way or another is, is touched on that. It is simple. And that's the thing about it. It's too simple. People aren't as complicated as they convince themselves they are. So they climb inside their minds and and these existential crises that everyone has, they think is unique to them. So there's this, this, this victimization mindset that they have to where mm-hmm. they can hearken back to any kind of uh, um, religious, even, even religious experience, if you want to call it that, that they might've had when their mom and dad, quote unquote, made them go to church. They will, even though everything's pointing back to those experiences, they'll be so just so hard of heart, like you say, that they won't, go down the route that's the simplest and that's the road to our lord and savior it, it, it's like that's too easy for them we we, we we live in this country and this world where even no where glory. we're talking right now this 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 post-industrial age where technology is making these leaps and bounds every year to the point where they have a quantum computer which is just a digital oracle um hmm. and, and crispr cas9 because at the very end of it, it's Babylon. They want to aspire to be like God. They want, inspired by the spirit of Satan, they want to make man in man's own image. Oh, or in their image, or the image of the beast. The image of the beast. That's exactly right. And the CRISPR-Cas9 system, for, for, for those who don't know, and I, I, I feel like a fool if I try to explain it in the scientific detail, but here's the gist of it. They can take genetic materials and from this genetic material can make arms, legs. Uh, they can, through uh, the Cas9 system, they can actually control whether your child has blue eyes and blonde hair or dark skin or light skin. There is a CRISPR Cas9. And I, again, I don't know if you folks are familiar with the CERN Large Hydrogen Collider. It's in Geneva, Switzerland. It's underground. It's like seven miles underground. It's on the border between Switzerland and France, I believe. Every country on planet Earth has a representative that goes to CERN and they, that pay CERN to do this experiment. And what this experiment is, is down beneath seven, seven miles below this facility is a particle accelerator. They accelerate particles to the speed of, uh, it used to be just under the speed of light. Now it is the speed of light. They slam them together to try to recreate the Big Bang to see how this all started. And it's simple. God said, let there be. But it's, that's too simple for them. They're trying to see how all of this came about. So they're creating miniature black holes, supposedly, inside this machine. Well, in all actuality, the place where this uh, uh, large hydrogen collider facility was built is a temple of Apollo. In this temple of Apollo, there was an oracle. Uh, they get some 14-year-old girl, this poor girl, drunk and stoned on something and call spirits into her. Now, I know folks would say, oh, well, that's just happenstance, or maybe this was a prime location to put this facility. Yeah, let's go with that. But why did the Indian government, India, why did they donate a, a statue of Shiva to this place? Shiva that does the dance of the destruction within a big wheel 
And that's the God of destruction. Yeah. Shiva, Brahma, and Vishnu. Uh, I think uh, Brahma creates, uh, Vish Vishnu maintains, and uh, the other one, the other demon, the fallen angel, comes through and destroys again. So it's this uh, this whole process starts all over. These people are so deceived that even with that, they still believe this is a scientific experiment. That's all well and fine. Let's let's let them have that. This is what I'm getting to. They have a CRISPR-Cas9 system and a quantum computer at the facility in CERN. They were the first to get these things. A quantum computer reaches into what they call alternate realities to read zero. Ben, you probably know about this one. They read zeros and ones at the same time, to whereas a regular computer system, to give information, it's reading zeros and ones uh, one after the other, extremely fast, but not simultaneously. They're bending space and time to read these zeros and ones together. So say Ben sent me the entire Encyclopedia Britannica from the very first issue to the very last digitally. That, that would take a very long time. With this, a fraction of a second. Yet when you talk to one of their technicians or one of the, the engineers behind it, they can't explain anything about how the system is getting, how it's achieving this. They'll tell you that it, they're reaching into another dimension outside of our space-time continuum and extracting this information. So, no, wait a minute. Hold up. Stop. Yes, ma'am. Are <laughs> you saying that they're putting information into this computer or whatever it is, and the system, whatever you want to call it, these ones and zeros, the way that it feeds back information is extrapolating it or compiling it in moments, but they don't know how it's doing it because it's not programmed to do that. It, it, the, the way it's programmed, they have a microchip. This microchip is cooled down to right below the temperature of space, right below freezing. And somehow that is allowing them to do more than what they've done with the practical computer. That sounds like a simple explanation, but when you get into the action, they say it's outside of time, or like it's yeah. like it goes out, jumps in and out of our dimension. That's what they yeah. say. Yep. Uh, can I can I just real quick while you're while you're talking about some real quick Psalm two? Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, "Let us break their bands asunder." and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. But let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Uh, and when they say they're looking for it, CERN, the God particle. They're trying to figure out, uh, from what I understand, they were, yes. they were trying, to, yes. trying to break it, trying to, 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 to smash the God particle. Okay. And, and, yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, sister. The Higgs boson particle, they call it, uh, they called it the God particle. This this particle is the wait, smallest wait. particle ever discovered. And this, they say, is the key to all atoms, which is the key to all life. That's garbage. It glues they, they, the whole they, existence they, together. All of, that's yes, exactly. I mean, and it goes back to the esoteric Gnosticism that was, um, what's that, whatever that jabroni's name was, uh, the evolution guy, who is as racist as racist comes. Evolution is a... Is Darwin. A uh, evolution is a racist doctrine. It, it's called natural oh, selection yeah. of, of uh, the natural Origin selection of species. Uh, yeah, yes, and they take this off of. Uh, oh yeah, people. and the whole long and title is like super racist. It ends with like, and racist. all Irish people are monkeys. It's like <laughs> might as well say that because he hated the Irish. <laughs> the natural evolution of blah 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 and favored races. So, what does this favored races have to do with any kind of scientific principle? It doesn't. It's all about, and I was talking to a sister about this the other day. What better way for Satan to mock God, knowing that we, he knows intimately well that we are made in God's image. What better way to kind of shake his fist at God to say, hey, look at what I'm inspiring your precious man to do. They hate each other based off of something that you gave them that makes them unique and special to you and should make them unique and special to each other. They hate each other for it. Exactly. How science has become a, a reli the religion of the beast for sure. Absolutely. Their scientific principle, which is uh, uh, simply man's understanding of the natural world, man's understanding of creation. That's all well and fine. And I tell my brothers and sisters, don't be, there's nothing to be afraid of with science. Now, where you get into it is theoretical science. 
That's Kabbalistic right. magic and Gnosticism right. to the gills. And, and, right. and if you just listen to these people talk, it's so wicked. Like, and they'll tell you because they're arrogant. They'll say, oh, the Kabbalah has so much hidden truths. They predicted this and this from way back then. And they uh, they understand science in a way that we don't even They understand. predicted all this stuff that we still don't have any actual proof <laughs> yeah, of. All this you, theoretical crap. Imagine, you imagine that. that. You betcha. <laughs> yeah, they, they, have, they have way good intimate knowledge about it because they know where it came from. Because the people that inspired them are the creatures that inspired them. Are those, those angels that left their first estate and the ones that God said over the nations that did not judge fairly or rightly by the poor and received uh, worship under themselves, that God said mm -hmm. that they, they would die like men. So the Bible doesn't tell us that, uh, as, as a matter of fact, all throughout the Bible, it talks about the gods of these other nations. The Bible's not going to say that if it weren't so. So when it talks right. about how the, the, the Prince of Persia fought Michael across a desert for 21 days, as, as soon as our forefather of the faith prayed for God to deliver him from the hands of the enemies and took off across the desert, it reached God's ears. God sent to, he was like, Mike, go make it happen. But Michael was hindered for 21 days. Mm -hmm. So it, that tells me three things. Number one, the power of the adversary to hinder the chief captain, the mm -hmm. archangel, he who was like God. Mm -hmm. Number two, don't ever doubt that your prayers aren't reaching God's ears. They reach them the moment that you open your heart and get on your face in that prayer closet. No doubt whatsoever. And I've been through that before to where uh, I've cast a doubt. I've, uh, I'd like to say I've never doubted God, but I'd be a liar. There's been times that I was praying to get out of some real crisis that was that, that was dire for me to be out of, that I had no hand in putting myself in, but he allowed it to happen. And it's only after the fact. Do you see God's hand in allowance? And do you see God's hand move to move you? the direction that he would have you go. And that may not be something that we can understand with our finite minds, but we are finite. We have to trust him. He's eternal. He is eternity. And I want to spend an eternity with him drinking from the fountains of the waters of life that flow from his throne. Amen. Not an eternity in hell because I, I, I want to trump up myself on this weirdo knowledge that these Gnostics and stuff, do. It, it, it blows my mind. And the, the third, the third one before I go off on a rant. Mm -hmm. The, th the third one just from that is <sighs> my brothers and my sisters who do fall. And I know I've been harping on them, but they need to be harped on my brothers and my sisters who know the word of God, who know truth, who felt the Holy Spirit move within them and through their lives, who go and sit down in a pew where the name Jesus Christ isn't uttered where they don't talk about hell from week to week, Bible study to Bible study. They just talk about how good you should feel, how God wants you rich, how the, the stuff you're going through now would just be a, a little bit better if you would seed a little bit more money so you could reap the harvest from that. You know in your heart that you're doing wrong and you're involved in wrong. If you, if you have that spirit of truth, and even if you don't, you read your Bible. The, the Bible's not closed until you get to the church house. That preacher doesn't have anything to do with your eternal soul. That's you and Jesus and the relationship there between. Uh, it, 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 it bothers me how many people are willingly and willfully lost because they go to and sit in these churches where the leader of that church. And, they, and I'm like you, Lisa, they have to know whether they're fooling themselves or not. They have to know that what they're doing is wrong. Give the truth of the word of God, not your interpretation of it. Not because you had a bad day or an argument with your wife or husband that day and you want to take it out on the congregation. Uh, it, it's critical in this time that we're in now. That's why I go back to it so much that we be obedient to the Holy Spirit and seek the knowledge from heaven, the word of God, what it says as it says it. And yeah, I don't know how that was my third point. Mm, I, I, amen. But, amen. Uh, Yes, brother. I wanted to circle back around to brother Ben because I feel like I, I stepped on him when he was talking about how even how they uh, with the curses and how they will curse the name of the Lord and they blaspheme him and all that. I wanted to make sure that he got a chance to finish his thought because we only have a few more minutes left in the broadcast. Well, I, I yeah. So I, I mean, I always have things. I'll never run out of, out of things. I don't think any of us will run out of things to say. And I knew I'd talk fast, so forgive me. Um, and it, this may seem a little on, out of context, but this is something um, that we were talking about at one point. 
and about just about the world and and uh, deception and people who we talked about you know how bewildering it was to us that people would would follow evil and, and you know accept it and uh, you know like, like for example in Revelation where these people are um, hiding from God saying let us hide our faces from the wrath of the Lamb well it's like well, why 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 would you call out the Lamb and and and, and seek His face and, and uh, you know call out to Him for His mercy and, and believe on the Lamb and be saved. But but I, I we had mentioned that earlier that the sin just warps the mind um, and the intellect and it came to me that you know God the heart sees what it wants to see so one thing for example like my early um, you know I've been a Christian forever that really just in the last ten years really and one of the first things that really one of the first chapters of the Bible that came alive and I don't think there's any coincidence is Genesis t- chapter twenty four and that's where uh, El- Eliezer uh, Abraham's servant w- sought a wife for uh, his son um, Isaac, the son of promise. And what if I read in that in that uh, chapter? It's I, I just I re- as I was reading it, I just I saw Eliezer's humble heart. I mean, a- absolute humil- hum- humility and su- subject to God's will or to his master's will. And I read that and said, I, it, it was like the first time I realized. Oh God, there's something very wrong with me. I know this is how I want to be, but there's something very wrong with me. And I realized I had, I was sick, spiritually sick, as we all are with sin. And it really, uh, it came alive and it, it it hit me hard. And um, and I later came to uh, discover, and I don't think again any coincidence, Genesis chapter 24 is the longest chapter in Genesis. And I believe again it's the picture of the Holy Spirit, Eleazar's, the Holy Spirit seeking a wife for his bride. Uh, Christ, and it's the longest period. It's the longest chapter in Genesis, and we're in the longest period of of biblical prophetic uh, on, on the calendar. With the last two thousand years, the Holy Spirit's been going around seeking a wife, uh, in uh, for who you know who for whoever uh, will uh, respond to that call, um, you may become a, a bride of the of the of the King. Um, but I, I mentioned that is that again, people see what their heart wants to see and god allows that i and then you know for a long time i was really struggling with like oh i really need to help people in false doctrine and i believe that it's true we do need to help people trapped in false doctrine but again i think a lot of these people see what they want to see like um i remember i don't remember if you guys remember i think it was like early in the i think it was like early 2008 maybe um there was that uh film that kind of uh, viral video called zeitgeist and it basically refused it well first of all it started off with talk about new world order stuff but then and that you know that was the kind of the, the lure to get you to bite but then once you got in, into it later it started to talk about the denial of christ and how he was a uh, right he was a yeah he was a Pure garbage copy yeah copycat god and when i read that you know i said no way i i, ref- I, I stopped right there I go, no way i refuse to believe this and i just felt like a deep sinking feeling and i go no way i i, I gotta do something about that i was troubled about it and i found um uh, again i was a baby christian at this point I, I found uh, Lee Strobel's book. It's called "The Case for the Real Jesus." This is not. He has a case for Christ, but the case for the real Jesus really uh, talks specifically about refuting all the arguments in that film. Um, and so that really helped me. And again, I refuse to to believe that. And a lot of people, when they see something like that, they say, "Oh, good. That's an excuse." They'll latch onto the, "Oh, good. I don't. I don't have to worry about yep. going to hell." Oh, you know, they don't love God. They don't love good. And so they see what they want to see, and they latch onto that, and they never go back. So people see what they want. And also, too, I mentioned yesterday during Matthew 12, when Christ was witnessing to the, to the Pharisees and, and the nation who was rejecting him, and it was really the culmination of his witness. In, in fact, that's where he uh, cast out the the, uh, the demon out of the man. And what, what, what Christ was saying, if you read that chapter carefully, is that he's basically saying something greater is here. And they were blind to it. All they could see is God's justice. So they kept on accusing Christ, accusing him of breaking the law. And he was saying, no, something greater is here. Um, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. Uh, you uh, don't, don't, uh, you, you, you know, you accuse my disciples of eating on the Sabbath. Well, that's an act of mercy eating. They were, they were hungry. They had no food. So it was an act of mercy, just like David ate the showbread, even though it wasn't lawful. It was an act of mercy. And he talks about, you know, the queen of Sheba, you know, a Gentile seeking him, uh, going to Jerusalem. Uh, in seeking God, um, and, and yet God, Christ Himself, grace, mercy personified, was in in right there talking to to them. They didn't have to travel anywhere. In fact, Christ was going to them, uh, and He rejected that. 
Uh, and it, 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 again, it, it goes later on to like a, a, a strong man has to, a, only a, the God, only a, a stronger man can cast out a strong man. Like the, the Holy Spirit, only the Holy Spirit, the rule of God could cast out a, a lesser, the, the lesser thing. Only good can displace evil. And you see that all over the place in Matthew. And, but the, but the Pharisees were blind to it. They could not see God's mercy. All they saw was justice. And, I, and again, I think Satan also was blind to God's mercy that he didn't anticipate the cross. He, he thought, oh, I'm going to kill him. And then uh, and that, 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 that'll be the end of his kingdom. But he, could, he didn't foresee, he didn't see, see the mercy. And I think that's what unbelievers, even, you know, even Christians that, that uh, hold to a lordship, lordship theology, they see what they want to see. And you could try to argue with them that just won't see it. Um, so, so that's wisdom. You, you, you laid some wisdom on me. And you don't sound like you don't sound like an old timer. So you you're <laughs> young. You you I'm I'm gonna say I, I'll, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I'm 47. You're 47. Well, <laughs> you're, you're, you're a young man, younger man, and you have more wisdom than a lot of older preachers that I've talked to about yep. saying. Well, mm-hmm. no one has wisdom unless it's God's wisdom, and that that's where. Amen. 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 You know what you're saying. saying oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead, sister, go ahead. Oh, I, what, when people will get, I know for me, I was uh, one of the things that would really just get me haughty as an as a unbeliever was just the notion of God standing in judgment of me when his standard was like perfect. And I didn't understand just how perfect, but like, why do you have to be such a perfectionist taskmaster when if you know that we're sinful, why would, you know, and, and people will get all in the flesh and make that argument because they don't know the true gospel. Because uh, when you find out that he doesn't expect you to actually meet that standard in your flesh at all, and it's literally that he did it for you because he knows you can't do it, you have nothing left to charge him. Because what does it matter what a perfectionist he is when he did it for you? It doesn't even matter. What, well, why are you so worried about what a perfectionist he is when he, he didn't actually he didn't actually demand that you in your fallen state actually live up to that standard and never fall short once. That's the standard you have to meet if you want to save yourself, but he did it for you. But that's what people always want to, you know, uh, because it's so important that the true gospel is shared, you know, for this reason, even just the fact that it's so sad because most people don't actually like, you'll think you're hearing the true gospel, but they don't spell that part out. They don't spell out, you know, the, the, they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, but then they talk about, oh, you know, be a good person, do your best, all that stuff. And people think that there's something that they have to, to um, uh, like, like a standard they have to live up to in their own actions. And they get uh, defensive. And because, in, you know, a lot of times it's because they know they can't. And uh, that's where the, the anger comes from God being... Um, you know, basically acting like he's, you know, excuse my language, but a hard ass. That's how they, you know, people uh, portray him. Like he's unfair. What a big meanie. And that's how, you know, Satan loves to, to, to conceal the true gospel because it dispels all of that. It takes all of their ammo, you know, away because it doesn't even matter because what, you know, it would be, what does it matter what the standard would be uh, when he doesn't expect you to actually have to earn it yourself? That's the whole point. And, um, uh, I, you know, and that's why I like to try to explain to people like sin, think of sin just for a second. Now sin is actually, you know, wickedness. It is all those things. But one of the things that I, I like to do is look, just t- look at it in terms of dysfunction and entropy because without sin, we would not have the tendency toward decay, dysfunction and entropy, chaos. That's that, you know, and even suffering, even people think imperfection is normal, but what they don't understand is that without perfection without um uh, like if there's going to be imperfection which so many of them act like well why should well, what's god's problem with with imperfection was i don't want to live in a perfect world they don't understand that there that there will always be suffering if there's any imperfection whatsoever that's how it works it's it's like an infection you know once a little bit of it, like decay or entropy gets into to creation it runs rampant which is also why he can't allow the least little sin to exist into eternity One because thing. it would sn- snowball, right? It would snowball into basically what Satan is, you know, even if it was like a white lie. So Again, it has to be that we had to have God come and manifest himself in the flesh yep. because even, the, and, and you know, I'll, I'll say this uh, a lot <laughs> to some people, you know, probably perturb them, but I understand why those prophets went off by themselves um, because even your thoughts, and, and this is another wicked fiery dart from the adversary 
there's so much being pumped into us subliminal subliminally. <laughs> that's a hard word. Subliminally, subliminally pumped into us that it's influencing our thoughts and our subconscious without us being consciously aware that that's taking place. Um, I believe that is one of the tools of, I don't believe Jesus had an impure thought. I don't believe he had any, he was a perfect man from his thoughts to his actions, to his words. Uh, he, he lived and died the life that Adam would have lived and died. Uh, and he had to do that uh, for us. He had to be the legal president. Lamb. He had to be the lamb to be the, the, so we his righteousness then would be our righteousness. And goes to Paul and how Paul says, pray without cease. I, and I think about that a lot, like because the Bible speaks for itself, and I'm a Bible literalist, but pray without cease, you know, that's it's kind of tough. You gotta eat sometimes. He's pointing out the need for prayer because we as man cannot live a sinless, perfect life. We have to repent regularly we have to not only watch our actions and obey the holy spirit but be intentional about that uh we, we can't you know be the kid on dad's lap while dad's working the pedals we're steering the car and we think we're doing something special you know we we have to allow him to take control and and he and you have to give him allowance that's how awesome the god we serve is he will let you do whatever you want to do even if you have the holy ghost that's Amen. I mean, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He does. Like, uh, there's, oh, yeah. there's, there's been times that, and and I'll, <laughs> I'll talk to him because he's dad. You know, I'll talk. Yeah. He, he, he's exactly. our dad. I'll talk to him like dad sometimes. We're like, dad, yeah, I know you want to Even be better because nothing freaks him out. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Every, about everything, every little uh, crisis or victory or thought. That, that I have that is important, I'll go somewhere and I'll, I'll, I'll pray to him and then I'll start talking mm -hmm. to him. And yep. the Holy Spirit, for whatever reason, um, I'm I, again, because I'm a dumb country boy and I know I'm too dumb to lead myself. So he's been really, really good to me in that aspect to make it loud and clear through the Holy Spirit that, hey, son, you can drive down this road. Now, I've never been down this road. And I think there's danger down there. But if you go down this one, it's a road I know, and it's it won't it won't be rocky. There won't be crazy curves. And sometimes I'm like, ah, Dad, let's try this way. And when I blow the tires out on the vehicle, you know, I have to apologize. So, yeah, and it, I, I I talk to a lot of young kids. I was telling Sister Lisa about this one, uh, this one girl friend of my daughter's that came by, who's a part of the LGBTQ community, and uh, she's six foot one, I think, big, tough looking gal. And uh, I, she looks and she, I could see how people would be intimidated by her. Um, her and her her group went down to the first church built here in this town, the biggest one here. And it's where all the lawyers and doctors and all that go. Uh, and they just came in with Congress and Seth there, went kicking up a ruckus, according to her. And before the organ played, before the preacher said anything, he stood up and got to the microphone and said, uh, y'all can leave right now. You have no business being here because you're going to hell regardless. Now, when I was told, wow. that, yeah, I wouldn't want to be him. I, I, I wanted to go beat him with the Bible. Like, if you're not going to uh, meet everyone with the grace and humility and love and respect that Christ would, you might as well. I don't care how old this church is or how fancy your facility is. Go ahead and put a close for business sign on that door, because that's all you I wonder for. if he'd say the same to an adulterer. I wonder no. if he'd say, you know, they always want to rail on the on the LGBT thing because they are they're not prone to it. But I, I want to see them do that to people who destroy their families and their marriage first before I want to see them. You know what I mean? Because it, it just reveals I'm their heart. Amen. Hey man, look who the Lord, look, look who he ran about with. Peter was a hard case. Uh, uh, you know, um, it, I really do believe, and I know there's a lot of people who think different, but when he followed Christ, uh, they admit, the Bible mentions he had his sword on him for a reason. He had just lopped a guy's ear off. He argued with Christ when he, Christ told him he was going to the cross. He said, it's not happening. I love you. I believe you. I know who you are, but I'm not letting them do that to you. And, and of course, we know what Jesus told him after that, and it came to fruition. But that he, all he could see was the captain of his salvation, his human mind, even though it was in the right spot. That's why I say our good intentions if, without the Holy Spirit can still lead to catastrophe. He still followed. And with that sword, I really think he was going to pull a Metal Gear Solid type uh, uh, jump on the covered wagon for Jesus. 
because he stood by the fire and was watching what was going to happen, looking for his place to, to go in and save him. But when the, that crowd pointed to him and said, hey, that's one of his disciples, that's one of his students, what did he do? He did exactly what Christ said he was going to do because he was operating not in the spirit. And we know he had it. He was operating for, on his own accord based on his emotions. So when these preachers go, they, they're right in what they're saying, you know, yeah. what the word of God says about homosexuality. But yeah. they're going based on their emotion, because I can guarantee you, if those kids came in there and sat down and wanted to be fed, each and every last one of them's lost. Do the same thing you do every other Sunday. Open up the book, prayer back and preach. Let God sort it out. Let his word go forth. They won't return to him, Boyd. We're the judge of no man. So, of course, I open up the Bible. I don't go to any of that stuff. I go to the love that Christ has for us. Um, right. And she right. opened up. And, and she, she, uh, she told me a lot of things about the, the, the male figures in her life, every last one that she was supposed to be able to trust. Um, broke that trust in the most gruesome and terrible of ways. And by the by the end of a 45 minute hour long conversation, she was in tears. I was uh, wiping back one myself and I asked her, do you think you can trust me? And she said, yes. Uh, and and she, she I mean, the Holy Spirit was moving in the room. And I said, you said that even though all this stuff happened to you, because I know and trust him. You don't need a church. Yeah. You don't need a preacher to have a relationship with him. He is our life. He's the only life that we can have. Yeah, I mean, I, and that's why, you know, people, when people make pet sins where they, they're going to harp on that and they, they well, I, I overcame this and I stopped drinking. So you, you're, you certainly aren't going to be able to keep having your fun if I had to stop what I'm doing to, to I guess what they think is because they got saved that way by stopping whatever they thought they were doing. But it, they just don't understand. Like God will, I, I believe, you know, he'll keep people humble in some, you know, I think in some cases by uh, allowing them to continue struggling with certain sins because otherwise imagine how puffed up they would get, you know? Uh, uh, well, I, I was this way and now I'm this way and look what I look at the change in my life. And that's not, and that puts the focus on what they're doing. And so even as a witness to other people, people think, Oh, well, that's a really good witness to Christ. Look how they turn their life around. I don't know. I don't know, man, because, uh, even though, yeah, in theory it might be, the problem is what, what are you communicating? Cause what are they, what are they, it's hard enough because people are so double-minded, it's hard enough for them to really even understand grace and mercy. Uh, but but when you um, when you think the best part of your witness is that is the, is your changed life, uh, mm. even if you're you know what I mean, like it, it's going I, to. I what you're saying, and it is a slippery slope, you yeah. know, to, to try to try to give that testimony and what the Lord's done for us and work the old man versus the new man. It's hard to do that without focusing on yourself. Because right. and that's another thing. It goes back to what you were saying earlier about the perfection thing. How I, and there's a I've heard this, and I know you all have too. Oh well, so you think you're better than me? So you think you're perfect? <laughs> who, who are you to judge me? And that's what? just because you profess your faith. They yeah. infer all this information just because we are bold in saying that we obey the Holy Spirit and we believe and are saved by the Lord, the, the finished work, the sacrifice. Yeah. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They infer all this information from that. But see, that's again this emotional response. And that's the world, the worldly type, natural man emotional response to well, it's also, yeah. It's also Satan's false teaching. I think most that's people what was, yeah, that's what I was just about yeah. to say Satan's beguilement of, yeah. of of people and his way of painting us. I'm so tired of that, the, the way that we're painted out like we're just this uppity just mean spirited uh, God hates gays and all that type of stuff. My brothers and sisters, I've never even hear them talk about that junk. They talk about the, 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 the getting these people saved and, and how the God, God's mercy and grace. And hopefully on that day, cause I think we're going to see it if it's there, but we're not going and picketing gay clubs or anything. Where did this junk come from? And you're right, man. Yeah. La ladies and uh, let, let me stop you guys here. I just want to let you know we've uh, exceeded our, our four hour point and I don't want to uh, <laughs> wear out Brother Dawes nor my producer nor my other 
uh, panelists here tonight. So it's totally your election. Um, do you want to continue for roughly another hour or would you like to go ahead and let's end the broadcast here? I'm going to make it you guys call. What, what would you like to do here? <laughs> As I would love to, and uh, I don't see myself saying no. I, I must decline. It is two thirty in the morning. Here. Um, okay. I'm looking over All my right. a couple of times. She's telling yeah. me. Yeah. It's three thirty. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. I didn't want to quench the spirit. I wanted to ask you guys where where you were on that. I wanted to ask you. I think it was a good note for us to leave on. Uh, one last quick thing. Uh, Someone had mentioned in the chat, let me see, it was Rachel Menifee. When we were talking about um, evolution and Darwinism, uh, she said that we did not cover uh, Francis Galton, who was the cousin of Darwin That's exactly and right. his whole eugenicist thing. And I know Sister Angel knows who that is. I already know she knows it. Right, Sister Angel? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His the, first cousin started eugenics <laughs> and talk about a racist. You see how it always comes back to race? Mm -hmm. And you well, know you who know, the original racists were, right? Go ahead. Oh, and those who crucified Christ. I mean, I always feel that way that it's well, I mean, because it can persist in the religion today. It's in uh, uh, Judaism is a religion entirely focused around racial superiority to the, to the most extreme degree possible, where, um, forget uh slavery in the past they think they're going to have uh each one of them two thousand of us as slaves each one of them in the uh, messianic age they they're thinking but i i feel real, you know that uh racial pride had a lot to do with why they were so uh irate with jesus you know i mean all kinds of pride but that was part of it that sense of racial superiority um so yeah i always i always just think of that when i when i think of uh uh you know this whole idea of of, of racism and, and racial priority and it's you know just not a coincidence to me and i uh i, I it's, wanted it's to mention not, that. It's, it's that it's that same spirit and yep. I've, never, I've never heard it put in that way before but I, I could see that but that no matter how it's quantified if man hates man god is no yep. respecter of man which means yep. god doesn't care where you're from what kind of hate it is he's god so if the eternal creator god's not worried about it it's pretty dumb that we are, you know, like, uh, <laughs> and of course there's tribes and cultures and all that kind of stuff. I do understand right. that. I respect that. But uh, when you're born again, and, and I just, have, there's only two tribes, uh, yeah. you know, saved and lost after that. And, and there's this guy who's on the channel and this, is, I'll, I'll, I'll say this because I'll go that extra hour. If you let me, um, this guy's been on the channel for a while. He, he said he was a Christian, but he's made a lot of like rude comments to other, uh, um, um, subscribers and stuff in the chat he, he's come on a live chat and was like talking all sorts of madness that he was he, he apologized said he was drunk now i'm no judge of him no man i accept his sorry the train i accepted his apology and um just went from there he came down and he came down the chat one or no i'm sorry the uh comment section not too long ago and started talking about how white folks build this country and uh, the, these other races didn't do anything and blah, blah, blah. And, and I was like, you know, this is the victim bait. He took the yeah. white victim bait. That's this, what he this, did. This, That's what happened. I, I told him this isn't good. You know, you, you, if you're a born again believer, you profess yeah. the love and, and, and of our savior. I mean, we're not supposed to be acting like this. And he started in on me. Like I'm a PC culture. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm black lives matter and, and Tifa and all this yeah. stuff. And it's like, what? You've been listening to me for this long, and you're really saying all this? Like, okay. But it just goes to show that even it, it, if you are sitting inside of a church and you look at somebody based on their 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 social class or, or social standing, rather, or their race, ethnicity, any of that stuff, again, like Sister Angel said, there's two races to me. There's the heavenly race and the hellish race. And if you want to throw, throw a third in there, uh, the world, but that falls into the second category. I want to be around my brothers and sisters. Sister Lisa said this earlier. I don't want to surround myself with people who are going to throw disparaging remarks against my Savior because I'm a dumb country boy. I get mad. Um, right. you, you, if we talked about any other deity from any other religion, we'd be on the news right now. But 
anyone in the world can talk about the Lord Jesus Christ, Christians, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and that's somehow okay. And a nation that used to say in God we trust, it, it really, that in and of itself, if it was only that, tells me the time that we're in. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, you know, I mean, that's that's one thing we talk about a lot on the show is uh, they're doing everything they can now to men like like the guy that you in your comments. I, I mean, I feel for him in a way because every headline that's coming out right now is designed to make him feel that way because they have these paid protesters going around being outrageous, out just uh, unbelievable. And they're totally racist and just, uh, uh, you know, and they're showing all these video clips. Uh, and they're, but they're, they're poisoning the minds of people. And he's kind of reminds me of the people that come into my comments getting mad when I, when I say that racial pride is, is still a sin in God's eyes. Because they think, no, 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 it's okay to be proud of your race, though. No, it's not. It's not okay to be proud of anything. Let him the glory, glory in God. You know, that's, that's, you're supposed to, that's who you get to glory in. And they get really frustrated because they want to still be able to hold on to that. Or even just hatred to all American pride, whatever. Like, there, there's a, you know, there's a, a spirit that comes with that. And, yes. um, and, you know, but the, the thing is, is what, what they did, they have making men like him bitter now because they feel victimized. And what does that do when, when, uh, you know, you feel victimized, it makes you bitter and makes you think that you are in the right to, um, to, to just speak any kind of way. And, you know, it's, it, they're just, it, that's what, and I see it as an attack on Christendom. That's what I see because I think our country Absolutely. is, that I, I feel that our, yeah our country that is a real testament to how no matter how different people are in their racial background or, or you know, ancestry, we came together under the banner of a largely Christian concert in this country, and that's why we yeah. were able to actually you know. I'll let so, you I think that's beautiful. I'll let you. Once you get into the founding fathers, they put that. <laughs> well, up. that doesn't matter though, because what I'll, the I'll people what believe. No, exactly. Yeah, because you know what I mean. Like I know that too, and I get cynical, sure. but then I realize. There were so much less of them than there were just regular people who. And that's how you know it's up there. We got sisters and we got more brothers and sisters in China than we have in this country. And talk about turning back the clock. They have to go into abandoned buildings in the basements to worship our Lord and Savior. But guess what? They're going into abandoned bu buildings to worship our Lord and Savior. You can barely get somebody to darken the door of a church here in Oklahoma. So mm. and we're the third loop in the Bible Belt. So how mm -hmm. sad indeed. Uh, yes. First, I sincerely appreciate. Yes. I mean, I don't know if yes. you have like a lot of return uh, vis guests or visitors or whatever, uh, but oh, I would love yeah. to come back. Um, oh, absolutely. Each and every. Oh, yeah. Every, everyone know. that comes on that manages to hang in to the end always gets an invite back. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother D. Doss, for coming on here tonight and talking Thanks. about all things paranormal. Uh, we touched on a few things. Uh, but you weren't. You know, what I mean is, you weren't unwilling to go anywhere that the uh, conversation led concerning paranormal activity, which we know a lot of this stuff is definitely satanic, supernatural. You know, there may be some other stuff going on um, that is built into it to lead people to pursue these things. You know, whether or not how much of this stuff is real and actual, with the exception of things you know you experienced that were supernatural. Uh, a lot of people have speculation as to whether some of these sightings are manufactured by people. And there may be some of that thrown in here, but, it, you know, in the mix in, into some reportings, sure. but no doubt that uh, a, a great deal of it is actual, factual and real. It's just been too many people who have seen it. And as you said, then begin to experience supernatural activity after they witness these different beings or slash entities. So thank you again for coming on the broadcast. You had a lot of wonderful and insightful things to say. Sister thank Angel, uh, oh, well, I'll tell you what, brother, if you'd like to go ahead and address the audience in any last remarks before we close out the broadcast. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Sister Angel, Brother Ben. Um, get my email or number from one of the sisters. I'd really love to talk to you. Um, Sister Angel, or, uh, I'll put it in there because uh, I figured everybody's going to pass out except Angel and me. We're, we're live wired. But uh, <laughs> one of you guys are fantastic. Um, thank your audience for the, being so gracious and kind to me. Um, and the, the, again, it's the BDRP Supernatural. Don't be thrown off by that. It's, it's something to get put in the algorithms. 
Uh, it's not that great of a show, so if you don't subscribe, it's okay. Uh, but uh, I, really, <laughs> I really do believe um, that we are now at the precipice, or we're, we're in the birth pains at the very least. We're rolling mm -hmm. into the end, so it's it's time to, uh, and just talking to Sister Lisa on the phone, I could tell most of our listeners, if not all, are my brothers and sisters as well. We really need to buckle down and double up in our faith and our prayer life. The adversary is coming against each and every last one of us like I've never seen before. Um, and that's for a reason. The, the, the devil's among us and he's in great wrath. Uh, he knows where he's going. He knows what, what his deeds have bought him. So we, we just have to watch out for one another, keep each other in our uh, in our prayers. Yes, we do. And that's so important. That's our power is our power to communicate with the creator God through the finished work of our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ by the Holy spirit. It, it's crucial. So thank you all again. Oh, thank you. you're, you're most welcome, brother. Thank you again for coming on the broadcast. Just a simple request. And he's like, I'm there. Went, just named the, the day and the time. It was just so wonderful. And uh, we talked for a couple of days twice from or one time almost two hours and, and the first time almost three hours just natural conversation uh just talking about the goodness of god the things we've experienced sharing different uh testimonies and uh some of the things that we were observing i'd like to have you back on to discuss current events and get your perspective on that because we didn't get a oh, chance yeah. to really touch on that tonight and i'm mm -hmm. sure you have some fascinating uh yeah. insights so mm -hmm. uh I will be scheduling. I'll call you this week to schedule another time for you to come back on the broadcast and we'll discuss that, brother, if it's all right. Absolutely. And, and again, I, I'd like, and I know it, my, and Angel will tell you my channel's kind of spun into something different. Um, so you yeah. don't have, we don't have to talk about Bigfoot. We can talk about, as a matter of fact, tomorrow night I've started, uh, it's called Fellow Soldiers. And it's not a Bible yes. study per se, but we, I tell people the books that uh, contain the material that we'll be talking about. Um, so it's a little bit more casual, but, uh, I, I jump in there and I have a little panel on and we kind of discuss the topics such as, um, I forget what last week's was already. It's getting late here in Oklahoma, but, uh, That's okay. oh, angels, uh, angels and us, our relationship yeah. and how oh, they, they okay. call us, uh, they refer to us as fellow servants. A lot of our, our, our forefathers mm. of the faith of the prophets, would fall down and worship them. And uh, they would always say, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> you know, we've we've mm -hmm. been in front of the one you're worshiping. We don't we, know. Our brother did, a, and it didn't turn out well for him. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's one of my favorite passages when John goes to fall down to look at a revelation of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and he says, the angel says, see thou do it not, yeah, worship not. God. <laughs> <laughs> so please, so, you don't want some type of problem. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I can't wait to see. I really like to see what angels are like, though. I'm just like, it, it, they it, have their own personalities. Uh, the angel that got, uh, uh, who was it, Peter? And um, ah, they were in jail. And the woman saw him, and, and uh, Thomas said, You didn't see Peter, but you saw his angel, inferring that our, our angel, because he said Peter's angel, the guardian angel, whatever anybody calls it, sort of looks like us. I've always found that fascinating, but the, that angel, is the angel that came in and kicked him, you remember that? He's like, <laughs> I just get the image of my, in my head of this angel <laughs> walking through the wall. All right, get up. Let's go. Like Chris Rock in uh, Dogma. <laughs> like, like, just like, it's like I, I, that's what I'm fascinated by. Not to worship that. I just, I can't, it would be interesting to find out the the one, the other thing God created, what they're, what they're, what they're like. Yeah, I will I'll get a hold of you too, D, to see about coming on sometime. Because I would love, I'd love to have each and every last one of you. The brother that, uh, I'm, in, I'm sorry, what was his name brother again? Ben. Brother, brother Ben. ben. I'll, I'll be praying for Brother Ben. Oh, brother Jason. Jason oh no, no, left Jason out. left. Brother Jason Cripps. His <laughs> his channel is True Story Live. I'll put a link in the in the uh, chat in just a second. We have a request also for everyone to please put their channel links in the chat for everyone who's still with us tonight. I put in BDRP Supernatural. Actually, I misspelled that there. Let me correct that. Uh, BDRP Supernatural for you guys. But let me let me correct it. I'll re put it in there. I typed it wrong. And then uh, Brother Ben doesn't have, have any content just yet. I've been on his case to come up with that. Sister Angel, are you able to put yours in there, or do, would you like me to? Yes, do it for I, you? Uh, I'm. I'm on my phone, so I'm. I'll have to. I'm afraid if I go in there, it'll play and no problem. I'll take care of it. So for I'm you gonna. I, 
Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm about to get internet guys. I'm about to be a real boy. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I, love you guys. I really do. This is, this, I can't tell you uh, how much this means to me that I got to come on here and, and uh, this is what I've been trying to do with eight, almost 18,000 subscribers. It's ridiculously hard, but it's getting better. More I'm, uh, God is separating the wheat from the shaft as far as the, the su subscribers. And, um, this has been a real blessing to me to have fellowship, and that's what this was. Okay. Now, those you guys, am I still here? Okay. That's yeah. what I wanted it to be the beginning uh, of is, is is more uh because I mean you you I wanted you to know you have like um a, a lot of family out here in uh in our our side because we're part of the Church of the Eternally Secure Fellowship uh too and um you, they, you I don't know if you've ever heard of us but I think you'll uh I think you'll you'll uh, find that. that you'll really like that the shows that we do there when we do the panel with uh, brother Luke and everything, but you have, uh, you have family you didn't even know about. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to introduce you to everybody. The beautiful so. thing about our faith. I got brothers and sisters I've not met and they <laughs> were all different colors around the world. And that exactly. spirit within us that, that res when that started resonating with me and Lisa, I was like, yep, that's my sister. Exactly. And that's Praise what I Lord. love that harmony and that racial unity and unity across the board. We get to have that in Christ. And it's sincere. That's what we get to Amen. Do. And right, it's, I'll it's, let you, I'm going to jump off here for our blabber on for another uh, hour. All right. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother, Thank you, brother Doss. Thank you so much. God bless you, brother. Bless that you was too. wonderful. Love you too. Yes. See, you, see you next time. See you soon. Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right, Sister Angel, any closing remarks for the audience as we wind this up before everybody falls asleep in their coffee or their tea? <laughs> no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I feel like a, a proud uh proud mama right now because I, I i didn't know i when i didn't even know if you're into cryptids or anything but for some reason uh i swear it's not because he's black it was just because i knew <laughs> that you would li like i had to bring him into the fold because we are always talking about this kind of stuff you know you me and ben and i just it, it, i couldn't even explain why because it seems like different subject matter but i knew you know what he is a true brother in the lord and we've got to get him uh involved in this and i just knew that it would be something but i think god just uh i think it was god gave me the idea because it wasn't something i normally do go ask somebody to come be on the show i've never done that before so um i it's just been such a blessing and i love uh i you know, I know we could have gone on forever, but uh, I definitely hope that uh, we will uh, also return the favor by going on his show. Um, and uh, that could be something really, really great, especially for your channel, because uh, I, you know, I would like to see you get a lot more uh, subscribers. I don't really make videos uh, very much, but uh, you have been turning out content for how long? Ten years now, Lisa, or something like that. It's been a, a long oh. time to have a website. Well, it's about almost, I think, around 13 now, tw just wow. under 13, if not quite 13. And, yeah, I came on and tentatively would say things and run off the channel because, uh, you know, I was kind of just getting my feet wet. I mean, I was still coming out of a lot of the stuff where they was, te uh, you know, this whole concept that women shouldn't be teaching and right. women shouldn't be preaching. And so I had to deal with a lot of that mess in my head. And then at the same time, um I uh, decided to kind of get my feet wet by putting up some content from uh, that Baptist preacher I mentioned earlier, uh, the late Pastor John W. Hill. So uh, I, I put a lot of his content up here. So the channel kind of went through a transformation because when I attempted to put up some other content, um, the mostly Southern white Christian Baptist people who had started to follow the channel because of him got offended at it and it it wasn't it, you know it wasn't meant to be an inflammatory but it was serious it was a serious topic it was dealing with pornography and sexual sins uh, and they could they just went but crazy on it they called him it was you know and i told myself okay, brother, I'll, I'll adjust it i took that content down and uh, then I started saying, you know, what is wrong with people that we can't talk about such things when people are suffering and hurting yeah. and and going through these things and they need real deliverance and they need to be set free from this stuff. And then the church won't talk about it. And Probably so because I they like, made them feel convicted. They're, you know, they, they you know I think that was a lot of it, too. It got too close to home. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, because a lot of people try to pretend like, oh, that's not the church's problem. We don't have anything to do with it. And it, they'd be the very ones participating. Are you the church or not? <laughs> you know, right? so, yeah. 
so anyway, so the, the channel has changed a little bit through the years. I pulled a lot of that content down because I just didn't want the issues from people that sort of had that mindset. And uh, and then I started putting up much more of my own content, just sharing things that the Lord had put on my heart uh, yes. through, through, throughout the time. And, and it's grown into what it's become today. Well, Sister Angel, why don't you give a shout out about your channel? I'm finding it right now to put uh, your channel link in the description. Tell us a little bit about your channel. Then I'm going to go to Brother Ben and we're going to say good morning. Well, I, you know, I just so far, uh, I have I haven't been making a lot of uh, new like co content, you know, in terms of like actually recording new stuff myself. I might change when I get internet, but because I, I kind of drain myself when I when I do the panel, it's not really drain. I I don't I, I kind of like don't. I used to be all pitted up talking of oh I, ha I really want to get this off my chest, but I usually do it now on the panel shows. But I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing it again because I think it is important to have some stuff like that, uh, you know, to to actually put things in a singular video for people who aren't gonna listen to live streams. But um, yeah, I I don't want to drag it on too long. My my channel is just uh, Bob, my name here. Uh, what is the name on uh, Angel Angel Martin? Right? Isn't that isn't that what <laughs> yes. my name is? <laughs> okay, Angel so Martin. Uh, yeah, and so uh, hopefully uh, I'll put the link in before the the sh uh, chat closes out, or somebody else will do it before I get to. Um, but uh, I'm just uh, so blessed and so uh, so uh, excited that uh, that we've you know kind of uh, brought D into the fold, and uh, I think uh, I think it was really God's timing uh, that it happened this way. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I I know there's a whole lot more we guys we have to discuss. Uh, we could probably go on forever, so. Praise the Lord. Now, I also put True Story Live. That's brother yes. uh, Jason Cripps. He had to check out a little bit early because uh, he wasn't feeling well. We're, we're keeping brother Cripps in our prayer this evening. We're going to pray for him so yeah, that he, uh, he that. yes, he never does that. So a little bit concerned about brother Cripps. Uh, let's remember him in our prayers this morning, everyone, uh, for speedy recovery from whatever is uh, troubling him right now. And we Bind the forces of darkness against him in Jesus' name. The devil is a liar. Sickness, leave his body right now in Jesus' name. Jesus is still the healer. Amen, amen, amen. And then also, Brother Ben, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm uh, just making sure because you know, Brother Ben, I, I got to call you out. I do. I, got to call you <laughs> I know. I deserve you it. You have fallen asleep at the switch before. So have you. Oh, listen to you. We went to go check out one broadcast. Where I'm like, Brother Ben, where are you? Brother Ben? <laughs> now, in fairness, he had the presence yeah. of mind to have his mic muted, but he had, he had sailed off to La La Land. It was a little too <laughs> late for Brother Ben. <laughs> so, now that I've given you the proper ribbing, Brother Ben, <laughs> uh, your channel does not yet have any content. Is that correct? Correct. Um, that is something I uh, am definitely working on. Um, again, I'm, uh, I, I'm gonna, you know, again, I, I don't want to put stuff up, create content for the sake of creating content. I want to actually have something that I can uh, feel good about. And so, and I think one of the things I can help out with, or some things I can, what, what I think one of the gifts that God's given me is to see things in scripture uh, just I, I take a lot of time uh, and take a real uh, I try to try to gain as many piercing insights as I can from scripture and I find just looking staring at a paragraph and thinking about a single paragraph I could do that for an hour and I'll just like get more and more out of it and then I once I have that I see much, so many other insights in, within that chapter it's it just it's mind-blowing I love it um but anyways so I, I want to do content related to that um but I also want to say, Angel. I, I mean, I've said this before, but as time gone, has gone on, you have you have a, a, a read on people that I, it's impeccable. It's, it's supernatural, and you definitely did, didn't disappoint tonight, D. I hope I wish you didn't leave so early. I wanted to uh, say a couple things to you. Hope you're hearing now. Um, it was awesome to have you. You had a lot of mind blowing, fresh insights, and um, I think we we definitely have a lot in common. And uh, yes, you, you know, guys yeah. do. You guys could. Yeah. You guys just the two of you. Should really do, uh, you know, do something, uh, maybe on his yeah. channel sometime soon. Right. Oh, yeah. I, I knew the Lord would. Uh, I do. I felt forced if I did something sooner than that, but I feel like now it, it's kind of okay. It's kind of organic. Um, and uh, some of that's truth. I think is ready to. Cut. I'm ready to uh, share some of the things I, I've been shown to me. Um, and so, yes, it was awesome uh, fellowship, but that's exactly what I think it was. I have no question that God brought us all together. People in chat as well. Um, Awesome conversations in the chat. 
Um, and then finally, the couple of things I thought was kind of interesting is that, um, you know, when John uh, fell down in front of the angel and worshipped, and he knew it was an angel, he knew it wasn't God, so that's a form of idolatry. And I, I believe oh. one of the, and and, and and one of the, in the last, I, I think this might be the last thing that John wrote. Uh, and it was in First John. Well, I mean, it's not the last thing. One of the last things John wrote in First John. His one of the last things he warned his congregation is keep yourself from idols. <laughs> and then he found himself. Uh, and then another another thing too. We talked earlier about. Um, uh, uh, but, but we were talking about Peter in the garden of Gethsemane with the sword. Uh, you know, right before that episode, Christ under the uh, under the law again, the, the Jews didn't see Christ coming the first time, and, and, and his his coming was well. First of all, obviously, it was obvious witness, his miracles and everything else, his words, uh, but also his pre precise timing was uh, was prophesied. The, the precise timing they should have expected him. In fact, that's why the, the, the Magi uh, traveled to see him. However. They will not see him coming the second time. They'll have no idea at all. And so um, he'll, he'll come as a thief in the night, as we know. And and so I think basically one of the Christ's uh, goodbyes to Israel under the law, you know, in, in that sense, he was a stranger. He's picking to them as a stranger, essentially, uh, the God they, that they didn't know, uh, that they claimed to know. He was saying to them, keep, you know, he was saying things like, keep your lamps burning, watch, you know, you don't not know when the son of man coming, et cetera. And then right in the next chapter, Christ rebukes Peter three times for sleeping. You know, it's it's a picture of mm -hmm. grace versus law. You know, uh, or law versus mm -hmm. grace. Um, and so I thought that was interesting. I wanted to add that before I forgot it. But other than that, uh, awesome, uh, awesome, edifying uh, program once again tonight. Thank you, brother Ben. I appreciate that. Now, thank you for your insights. You don't often say a lot, but when you do, boy, you bring it. Let me tell you. I appreciate that. Thank you. It really does. It really I does. also. Wanted to give a shout out. I'm trying to get this gentleman on the broadcast, and that is Brother Fitz Houston. Uh, Brother Fitz is the one whose music I play, not for the intro, but for the intermission and also the outro of the broadcast. And and uh, that's the little jazzy sound tunes. That's Brother Fitz Houston. I always have his picture up in a link uh, for the channel uh, in the description at the end of the broadcast. But uh, I wanted to give a shout out to him because I've talked to him. He's agreed to come on the broadcast. We've been having a little trouble connecting with each other. But once I get that worked out, this brother's been involved in music for a long time. And I really would like to get him on here and just talk to him about uh, how he came to faith in Christ and and his music and what he's doing and projects and things like that. If you haven't been to his channel, I put a link in the description. It is an absolute joy. I mean, he does these broadcasts both, I believe, in the morning. I'm not so sure about the afternoon. I know he does some, but I know he does a morning, very early morning broadcast. And then he does the evening broadcast with like just the sunset or the sunrise. And they just sit there and praise the Lord and and worship and pray. And, and I'm telling you, one time I tuned in, I wasn't feeling that great. I'm by the end of that broadcast, I was on fire, boy, I was ready to preach because he just was just praising the Lord, magnifying the Lord. And if you haven't experienced a good praise and worship service in quite some time, you need to click on that brother's channel because uh, that that's something that uh, is needed. You know, the, the Bible, remember Jesus said that the Father seeketh us to worship him, to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's what that brother does over there on on that channel. So go check it out. Shout out to brother Fitz Houston. We'll get, we'll get it together, brother. We'll get hooked up here in just a short period of time. Thank you so much. Everyone that paid us a visit. I know brother Luke had to go earlier, brother Luke from uh sin city Pre preacher. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, I appreciate all of you tonight. Joyce crystal. Thank you for hanging with us so far. I know I saw sister Celine earlier. I think she might have had to go. Alex, Rachel, Mike, all of you, thank you so very much for coming uh, this evening and hang with us till the morning. Excuse me, one second. Apologies while I was saying my uh, uh, good morning and good nights here. I didn't want to clear my throat into the microphone. That wouldn't have been a good look. <laughs> so thank you, Brooke and Butters. Appreciate you for staying with us. I don't know how y'all do it because I, I know that I like to hang up and stay, but I, I think there's more people than a little bit that like staying up into the wee hours. Normally, uh, this is the time I do like to engage in uh, prayer because, uh, you know, all the witches and the freaks come out between uh, midnight 
and uh, 4 a.m. And I always want to admonish you guys, if you get up, whether it's to use the restroom or to get a snack or whatever it is, in those midnight hours, pray. Take It won't kill you to take 10, 15 minutes for those of you who are filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And yes, it is still for today. Uh, take that time, 20, 30 minutes in some spiritual warfare prayer against the enemy uh, and, and help our brothers and sisters out in prayer around the world. Please take that time and do that. Uh, thank you. If I missed anyone in the chat, uh, please forgive me. It was just an oversight scrolling through real quick. It is getting late, and I want to let all my, my panel go and let you guys go. And I just want to thank you so much. I think, let's see, uh, Stacy Cook and third, the third King Nine, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for everyone. I love you. God bless you all. And uh, I hope to have either Brother Fitz on next week for a segment. I will not try to keep him for the whole broadcast. We'll probably just do an hour segment with him and talk to him if I can get him on here. First thing, if not, we will be back. Brother Cripps will be here with his movie corner. Sister Angel will have a wonderful topic for us next week. I'm going to try to tr twist Brother Ben's arm and to talk about all things Q. And uh, we'll be ready, as always, to enter into more wonderful fellowship with one another right here on Late Night with Lisa and Friends. Thank you all. I hope you have a very wonderful weekend. God bless. And until we meet again, good night and good morning.